बोलो तो यू वॉन्ट विच एयर्स बोलो एयर्स नाइन तो रेड ऑन एयर्स नाइन रेवेन्यू रिकॉग्निशन रेवेन्यू रिकॉग्निशन ना एवरी वन वेन आई से एसओपीएल वी हैव अंडरस्टूड एसओपीएल एज पर ए एस पाई प्रेजेंटेशन ना इन दिस फर्स्ट आइटम इज वॉट रेवेन्यू ऑनली first point is revenue means now our concentration is first item can you say this is one of the important important item for any entity revenue we are doing business for revenue correct now so can you say the recognition of revenue may affect sopl may affect sopl so the question is that when to recognize revenue at what point of time it should be recognized that we need to understand Correct. Can you say this revenue can be from sale of goods? Sale of goods, or this can be from what? Rendering of, rendering of services. Are you getting what I am saying? Or it can be what from, from what? Bolo. Construction contract, construction contract. It can be from what? Can you see? It can be interest. It can be dividend. Can you see? It can be rent. Then it can be what? Royalty. I hope you are understanding. Can you see this interest dividend? Interest dividend will be revenue for those entity whose ordinary activities are what giving loan advance. Means can you see it become revenue for what financing company for financial entity na means of course it can be revenue but not for every entity for example if i am generating interest income so that interest income is not my revenue that interest income is what other income means can you say one thing is clear that after revenue we write down other income so it means one thing is clear that all incomes are not revenue all incomes are not revenue correct so revenue is a part of total income so can is revenue is from which activities can is always from ordinary activities always from ordinary activities it cannot be from any other activities it cannot be from any other activities are you able to understand what i am saying correct now when i am saying sale of goods so it is covered in the as9 when i am saying rendering of services it is covered in the as9 when i am saying construction contract covered in the as7 when i am saying interest income covered in the as9 when i am saying dividend income covered in the as9 when i am saying royalty covered in the as9 but when i am saying rental income it is covered in the what AS nineteen means lease, lease income. Understood? Have you understood this point? So I hope you have understood the scope of AS nine. Scope of AS nine is what sale of goods, rendering of services, interest dividend and royalty. Sale of goods, rendering of services, interest dividend and royalty.
these are the scope of AS9. Correct. Now, what is the use? Means just try to understand. We are discussing that when to recognize revenue. When to rec recognize revenue. But can the revenue will be recognized as per the invoice date? Bole yes or no? Means whatever date is given in invoice, that become what? The date of transaction in which will pass the entry? Correct now. Now one point there, right? Just let me explain. Suppose this is what year end. 31st March. Now on 29th March, you have raised invoice. You have raised invoice. But it is quite possible that on 2nd April, the goods are delivered to whom? Delivered to customer, quite possible. Understand what I am saying? Correct. Now, this was in transit period. This was in transit now. In transit. The question is that when to recognize revenue? On 29th March or on 2nd April? We raise invoice on 29th March. On 29th March or on 2nd April? What do you think? 29th March or 2nd April? I mean, right now, you will say 29th March? Correct. Suppose the invoice amount is 1000 crore. Quite possible for a, small, for a big company, 1000 crore can be what? Can be one amount of transaction. Nah? So, this is 1000 crore. Now, just try to understand. You said 29th March. Now, I will change the last information. In transit, the goods were under the control of what? Under the control of entity only. Understood? Quite possible. Means if goods are damaged, whose risk? Means sub seller risk. Correct now. So if goods are destroyed in accident, whose risk? Seller risk. Can they recognize the revenue? Whether they can recognize the revenue? No only. So you said 29th March as per your previous knowledge. But now it will become what? 2nd April. It means we need to understand when to recognize revenue. It can be 29th March. It can be 2nd April depending upon the facts and circumstances. Means if I say in transit the entire risk, entire reward belong to customer. Then we recognize revenue on which date? 29th March. But if I say in this way, in transit, entire risk entire reward belong to whom? Seller. It means they cannot recognize revenue till it is delivered to whom? Customer. Are you getting what I am saying? Have you understood this point? Now you do online shopping. Correct. And can I say you will do payment, invoice will be received. But goods will come after? After 5 working days? 5 working days came, damage. What will you do? Now you return it. An automatic refund will come. So whether they can recognize the revenue? Be, mother, on contract date? No. Are you able to understand? Means goods may be found defective. Nah. Goods may be found defective, but already invoice was raised. You receive invoice also, amount also deducted. Amount also deducted. Correct now. Nah? So it means it is quite possible that even the amount has been received. Even the amount has been deducted, or even though invoice has been raised, but risk and reward is not transferred. So the key term is what risk and reward. Correct. So let me give you an idea as per AS9, what need to be done. Right now. First, we need to understand what is the meaning of revenue as per AS9. Start writing. Point number one. Return scope of AS9. AS9 is not applicable for AS9 is not applicable for point number A.
revenue arising from construction contract understood then what point number b revenue arising from higher purchase and lease agreement however higher purchase is nothing but one type of lease higher purchase is nothing but one type of lease but i have written separately because you have done one separate chapter higher purchase correct na but higher purchase is one example of lease contract accounting treatment of higher purchase whatever you have done in your accounting is as per as 19 only correct na so it means it is as per as 19 it is as per as 7 point number c revenue arising from government grant you have done government grant which is you understood that chapter ha huh? government grant promoter contribution government grant for depreciable asset government grant for non depreciable asset remember i will not ask don't worry then revenue revenue of insurance company <coughs> arising from insurance contract arising from insurance contract that is also not covered under as 9 and there is no accounting standard for this till now no as thank you very much no as will not read correct so this i have just given one scope now come to what meaning meaning of what meaning of revenue so what is the meaning of revenue batao revenue is what revenue is gross inflow is gross inflow of what either cash or receivable or any other consideration any other consideration so it is a gross gross inflow gross inflow of cash or receivable or any other consideration so cash means it can be cash transaction receivable means it can be credit transaction other consideration means it can be exchange transaction also non monetary consideration it can be non monetary consideration also correct yes sir arising from which activity arising from ordinary activities arising from ordinary activities correct understood of an entities of an entity from from point number a sale of goods sale of goods point number b will what rendering of rendering of services then point number c is what batao use of enterprise use of enterprise resources by whom 
by others means entity resource will be used by others yielding what yielding either interest or what dividend or what royalty are you getting what i am saying use of enterprise resources by other means our resource will be used by other means my cash used by other so i will receive interest correct na or dividend either interest or dividend or my intellectual property intellectual property you know intellectual property there are two type of property one is known as what tangible property <coughs> one is known as intellectual property means intangible correct na so if i say my intellectual property if you are using so i receive royalty income what is different rent and royalty income rent is for tangible asset royalty is for intangible asset for example i have a patent copyright so i may give my patent to you for production of goods you can use it for production of goods so i have given my patent to you to produce to manufacture so i will receive what royalty from you correct but if i give my investment land and building to you then i will receive what rental income this is the difference between royalty and rent correct understood so i hope my property used by you my property you are using intellectual property i will receive what royalty income so use of enterprise resources by other and so why there is no rent your rent is covered where in lease as 90 so intensely it is not mentioned yahan par we are already covered under as 19 understood the definition is very clear so can you repeat revenue is what gross inflow of cash arising from ordinary activities of an entity from sale of goods rendering of services use of enterprise resources by other yielding interest dividend or royalty now there is something so what is the meaning of gross gross we have not understood sir inflow to we have understood can okay, i say this also we have understood 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 this also only what we have not understood gross am i right or not are bol de all other terms you have understood only why they have given gross that we have not understood why not net for example for example suppose 1 lakh is the invoice price and there is a trade discount of 10000 to 90000 ho gaya na ito sorry ha uh, 90000 90000 hua to here what is the gross inflow ये ग्रॉस इंप्लॉय इज वन लैक हाँ ग्रॉस इंप्लॉय इज वॉट वन लैक और नाइन्टी थाउजेंड हाँ वन लैक अरे बाबा यू हैव डन वन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दैट एज पर द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट यू रिसीव ट्रेड डिस्काउंट ऑफ टेन परसेंट तो एज पर द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वट इज द ग्रॉस इंप्लो नाइन्टी थाउजेंड ऑनली तो इन दिस केस दिस इज द ग्रॉस इंप्लो This one lakh is not gross inflow as per the contract. Correct. Second example. One lakh plus GST eighteen percent eighteen thousand. So it become one lakh eighteen thousand. But what is the gross inflow? Huh? One lakh or one lakh eighteen thousand? No, you are correct. Hundred percent correct. This you have understood. Now suppose. As per the contract, invoice price is ten lakh. But as per the contract, ten percent retained, and that will be released on the satisfactory completion of the contract. We suppose our contract was ten thousand. You said sir, one thousand will give only once you teach entire syllabus. You have not confidence on me. You retain ten percent, na? Suppose you retain one lakh. Correct. 
So how much I have received right now? But what is the gross amount? Gross inflow is what? 10 lakh or 9 lakh? Bolo. Bolo. Everyone is not responding. 10 lakh. 10 lakh is correct. 10 lakh na. This is the amount retained which you released after satisfactory completion of contract. Correct now. So right now what is the gross inflow? 10 lakh only. As per the contract, what is the inflow? Whether received or receivable? Whether received in cash or receivable? It can be in cash. It can be what? Receivable also. Point number two is there now. Gross inflow of cash or receivable? Correct. One more example. Correct. Suppose, suppose, uh, 1 lakh is the total price and TDS deducted. You know TDS? TDS 10,000 deducted. Normally in our case TDS deduct hota. When I teach somewhere else na. If I go to some academy. So one one. Um, some as my income tax act. I forgot that section. <laughs> Correct na. You know section TDS on professional. J. J. Something J. 194 J na. 194 J. J to yaad hai. Correct. So as per professional 10% will be deducted. Correct. So my 10,000 is deducted, right? So I receive how much? 90,000. But what is my income? Means gross inflow. Huh? 90. Huh? Gross inflow is what? 1 lakh. This is tedious deductive which I claim from what? Income tax department. So my gross inflow is what? 1 lakh. So I hope you have understood. We need to understand what is gross inflow. Gross inflow, I hope you have understood. So just write down clarification. Some clarification has been given in AS only. Clarification. Point number A. Clarification for trade discount. Trade discount. Or rebate. It will be deducted in determining what? Determining revenue. Understood? Revenue is gross inflow. Correct. So this clarification has been given in AS9 only. Correct. However, cash discount if any will not be deducted understood will not be deducted in determining a revenue and is what i am saying is bachpan mein we used to do na this type of journal entry ki invoice price 1 lakh Trade discount 10% 10,000 Then become 90,000 Then cash discount suppose 5% 4,500 It become what? 85,500 But what entry? One compound journal entry can you give me? Bach per me we should na? See foundation how much cash? 85,000 to revenue how much? 90. And what? Discount allowed or received? How much? This journal entry used to do where? SCA foundation level. 
बट कहें दिस इज एज पर विच स्टैंडर्ड एज पर एस नाइन एज पर एस नाइन ऑलरेडी वी एव सी ए फाउंडेशन विच टू टीच दिस करेक्ट पर दे वी डोंट से ना एज पर एस नाइन दे विल नॉट कम अगेन यू विल से एज पर एस नाइन दे विल नॉट कम ऑनली बट सेम थिंग वी हैव डन ना तो रेवेन्यू मीन्स वाट ग्रॉस इंप्लॉय ग्रॉस इंप्लॉय वाट नाइंटी थाउजेंड ईयर Understood, correct? Yes, sir. The first point you have understood, A. Correct. But when we are trade discount will not be recorded. समझ में नहीं आता था. Trade discount will never be recorded. Cash discount will be recorded because of this only, na? अरे बोल ना रे. Correct. Yes. बचपन में तो मतलब C A founders is student, na? Now I have deducted na yaha par. I have deducted it. So what C A foundation student will ask? So you deducted now. You are recording to. What to explain now? Means I will just do this what? Working note. So we have deducted it. We are deducting this and we are deducting both now. So I said this will not be recorded. This will be recorded. Sir, deducted na, recorded na. Ab kya bolu? Samjhe na. Recorded means which will not open any account for what trade discount. Recorded means we are not opening any account for trade discount. It means that understanding. Then second clarification. Point number A I have given. Point number one I have given. A. Point number B. Look amount collected. On behalf of government, amount collected on behalf of government. Best example is what GST. Correct. Look. An entity should exclude. Entities should exclude from revenue all amount collected. On behalf of government or any other third party, on behalf of government or third party, correct, na? Correct. This also we have understood. Then point number C, right on. Agency relationship. Now you all know about agency relationship because you have done consignment, correct? So in case of agency, there will be one principal, there will be one agent, and there will be one customer, correct? They have transferred the goods, cost price of rupees ten thousand. At a sale price of rupees what, twelve thousand, to them, and they will what? They will sell at twelve thousand only. Are you able to understand? Correct. And they will receive twelve thousand. Correct. But they will remit how much? After deducting. Commission. Let us assume commission is ten percent, twelve hundred. Understood. Correct. So, what is the revenue of principal? Revenue of principal is what? Revenue of principal what? Ten thousand. Ten thousand was the cost. That is not revenue. Bolo. Revenue of principal be what? Ten thousand why? 
ten thousand. No, no, revenue is twelve thousand. This is gross inflow. This twelve hundred is commission expense. This twelve thousand is gross inflow. Understood. This is the commission expense, na? Are you getting? The gross inflow is twelve thousand only. Correct. And for agent, what is the revenue? The net amount that is what? Twelve hundred. So twelve hundred means in case of agency relation for agent, the revenue become net amount. Net amount means commission. Net amount means commission. Right now. In case of <coughs> everything you have done where in foundation, correct? Foundation was more tougher, na? In case of agency relationship, an agent. Agent will include only the amount of commission as what A revenue. Correct. Correct. Means even though can you say they are receiving the gross inflow, even though even agent is receiving inflow, na, who is receiving twelve thousand, then also it is not gross inflow of agent. It become gross inflow of principal. So who is receiving gross inflow? Agent. But a clarification has been given that is on behalf of our principal. So that gross inflow whatever received by the Agent is the revenue of principal. Right? Huh? Gross inflow received by agent is the revenue of of principal. A clarification has been given. And so, why clarification was required? If this clarification was not given, then definition will be wrong, na? For agent gross inflow is twelve thousand only. The clarification given that is that is on behalf of third party. On behalf of third party. For them, the revenue is only commission. The amount of commission. Understood? I think definition you have understood. Any doubt? No doubt. Now we need to only understand how to means when to recognize revenue for sale of goods, when to recognize revenue for rendering of services, when to recognize revenue for interest, dividend, and royalty. Correct. One break. Correct. We will take break. After break, we will discuss the other point. Sure. Very good morning, everyone. Good morning, how are you all? Last class, we started AS nine. We have not completed it. Do you remember what was AS nine? AS nine was revenue recognition. Before AS nine, which AS we have done? AS seven. Any doubt in AS seven? Have you done the questions from material? You have done. Any doubt? No doubt. Means okay. Okay, means first thing you need to do all the questions also. So, have you done other AS questions? All other previous AS, whatever we have done, AS four, AS twenty nine. Then we have done what? AS five. Then AS seven we have done. Chalo. Once you do any doubt, we'll discuss. Now I think when I was doing AS nine, let us revise what we have done. So I said SOPL. In SOP, the first item is revenue. Okay, revenue is one of the important item, and we need to understand when to recognize such revenue. So this AS nine deals with 
the recognition of revenue ki when we should pass jana entry for recognition of revenue at which point of time at which point of time so you can see revenue so it can be revenue from sale of goods it can be from rendering of services it can be from construction contract it can be interest income it can be dividend income it can be royalty income it can be rent income however revenue from construction contract already be covered under as 7 and rental income will be covered under as 19 so apart from this all are covered where in as 9 you can see written 99999 so it means you need to first understand you need to first understand what is the meaning of revenue correct scope i hope it is understood what is not covered it is given so what is not covered revenue arising from construction contract is not covered revenue arising from hire purchase or lease agreement as 19 you need to go to as 19 revenue arising from government grant that is already covered in your group 1 correct and revenue from insurance contract means that is not there is no accounting standard on that so that of course we, we are not supposed to discuss then meaning of revenue we have discussed revenue is the gross inflow gross inflow of cash receivable or any other consideration arising from ordinary activities of an entity from sale of goods or rendering of services or use of enterprise resources by other yielding interest dividend and royalty correct use of enterprise resources means our resources used by other so that other person will give us some income that income can be interest income royalty income or or dividend income understood correct it means will concentrate on this will concentrate on this correct now we have discussed about gross gross inflow if you remember that we have discussed about gross inflow correct then it can be cash sales it can be credit sales or it can be any other exchange sales also means can you say it can be that we sold our goods in exchange of any other consideration in exchange of non monetary consideration also it can be either cash receivable or any other consideration correct arising from ordinary activities so now you know what is the meaning of ordinary activities as per as5 so as5 as5 says ordinary activities are those activities which are undertaken for business and which are which are incidental to business which are incidental to business forgotten you will forgot what will happen something will happen correct now don't forget okay revision is required on a continuous basis correct continuous basis means i already said that if you give 5 minute to 1 hours it can be revised so 5 minute if you think it is not up to the mark so you can give 50 minute so 50 minute one hours you will give night can be revised the content can be revised and contents will be in your mind if you know the content you can write down if you don't know the content you can't write down so continuous revision required for as correct i have in other chapters you don't know the content but you know how to do it you can do it for example consolidation you can do it because you have done lot of practice question but here we are doing what so we are reading some accounting standard so you need to memorize the content for that continuous revision is required correct yes then we discuss about gross inflow so we have seen that gross inflow will be after trade discount means suppose the invoice price is 1 lakh minus trade discount so gross inflow is 90000 in this case however if suppose if suppose gst is recoverable from customer so this gst is payable to government so here gross inflow is 1 lakh not 1 lakh 18000 correct so we need to find out what is the gross inflow and therefore i have given some point for clarification the trade discount rebate it will be deducted in determining revenue it will deducted in determining revenue so after deducting trade discount or rebate will get gross inflow correct however cash discount will not be deducted cash discount if any will not be deducted so cash discount will be considered as a separate income whenever it is whenever the amount is collected whenever the amount is collected understood so i have just given this point to in this case what is your revenue revenue will be 1,90,000 the revenue will be 90,000 correct understood very good it means what jana entry we have done cash how much we have received revenue is how much and your discount is how much means we don't record trade discount can say but once we know this point we don't record trade discount because of as9 only because of as9 
then we have done one more clarification that amount collected on behalf of government or any third party is not revenue is not revenue should be excluded i hope this point you have understood then we have done one agency relationship agency relationship means in case of agent gross inflow is the net amount that is commission and for principal the gross inflow will be the gross amount will be the gross amount it is same as simple as consign and consignee in consignee always in foundation level we have recognized commission income and in consignor we have recognized the sale proceeds correct now understood so that clarification has been given that in case of agency relationship an agent will include only the amount of commission as revenue the gross inflow received by agent is revenue of principal understood this three clarification given any doubt now we'll come to what objective let on point number 3 Item point number three. Objective. So, what is the objective of AS nine? Item. AS nine deals with timing of. a recognition of a revenue in sopl means it deals with the timing when to recognize when to recognize when to recognize this is the objective of as 9 correct let me take one example let me take one practical example and let us find out as per common sense ki what will be the date when revenue should be recognized correct let me take one example suppose correct suppose xyz limited is manufacturer of what let us assume customized chocolates chocolates customized chocolate means what as per the requirement of customer means whatever they want in the chocolate will include they can want whatever will include whatever they will say will include Correct. Whatever shape they require, we will make that shape only. That is, you know, customized cake. Be hota hai. Correct. Customized chocolate. Understood. So can I say we need to understand at which point of time we need to recognize revenue? So I need to give you some information. Right on. On twenty second March two thousand twenty one. Correct. Meeting. There was a meeting with. customer so a customer mr a correct then 23rd march 2021 correct agreed to manufacture ten thousand pieces of chocolates at rupees and the sale don't write at rupees and the sale price agreed sale price agreed was 25 per piece understood correct Then twenty fourth March two thousand twenty one, some advance was received from advance received from Mr A. 
let us assume rupees fifty thousand, correct? Then twenty five March. Two thousand twenty one. They purchase raw material. Raw material is required. So they will purchase raw material. I don't know what are the raw material for chocolates, but milk to hoga hi. Choco hoga, sugar hoga. Correct? Then I don't know. Fix. A dry fruit will be based on what? Customization. Till now, we are not into that. We are into accounting. Okay. Then 27 March something happened. Production started. Production started. And can I say the work will be in progress? 28 March 2021. Still the work is in progress. Twenty ninth March two thousand twenty one. One date I missed, na? Chal tige. Twenty six was Sunday. Twenty six was Sunday. Correct. Twenty ninth March what happened? Invoice a uh, work in progress. And then a production completed. Then invoice raised. Understood. Correct. <clears throat> Then chocolates were. Chocolates were given to transporter. Understood? For transportation. It is in transit. Chocolates were in transit. Delivered to. Delivered to what? Are you getting what I am saying? Delivered to customer. And third March two thousand twenty one. Balance amount. Whatever balance amount collected. Understood. Balance amount collected from customer. This is the entire story. Story you understood. Now you will say, at which point of time revenue will be recognized? I mean, right now we have not done what AS nine. So based on your common sense, you will give me at which point of time you recognize sale. Means at which date you recognize sale? Tell me. At which date? How many? How many are saying third ma third April 2021? Third April. So someone said third April. How many are saying second April? No one is saying second April. One four 2021. No one is saying thirty first March 2021. No one is saying thirty first Ma thirty eight March 20. Thirty March two thousand twenty one. Someone is saying. Then twenty nine March two thousand twenty one. No one is saying. Twenty eight March. Twenty seven March. Twenty fifth March. Twenty fourth March. Someone is saying twenty fourth March. And then twenty second March. Twen twent. Twenty third March, twenty third March. Someone is saying twenty third March. Correct. Everyone raise hand. 
Huh? Everyone raised hand. Huh? Now, one date is correct. One date is correct. But have you understood the doubt regarding this? First, I need to raise doubt. Now, what is the importance of this AS? You have understood that after becoming CA, you can't say now this date maja ara karle. I will do some mahorat. Ki pandit has said this date is very good. Let us pass your entry this date. Correct now. One thing I hope you have understood that I have taken example of March, April. So this become two financial year. If you record here, it become income of. If you record here, it become income of current year. So it means, can you say it may affect SOPL? It may affect SOPL. So it may affect profit. It may affect profit. It means we should understand as a chartered accountant ki at which point of time a revenue should be recognized. I hope with this AS you are able to understand the importance of chartered account in India. Bole yes or no? Correct? Can you say being a chartered accountant, the name may accountant, you should be expert in accounting. However, after becoming chartered accountant, you can go to any other profession also. But can you say because you are a chartered accountant, at least you should become expert in accounting. Correct? Understood? And this is the only one profession. Miss CA is one profession where you should become expert either in accounting and in auditing. For other subject, you have some other expert also. For other subject, we have other expert also. But for accounting and audit, we have only CA in India. Only CA in India. Chalo. Now, I will not give answer. Let us do AS9 and then one second we will come back to this question. And at that point of time, it is my firm belief that everyone will give one date. Everyone will give one date. So you will understand the importance of AS9. So let us come to point number 4. Point number 4. So we will start with sale of goods. There are three topics. Revenue from sale of goods. Revenue from rendering of services. And revenue from use of enterprise resources. So write down. Revenue from... Sale of goods. So what AS9 says, write down. Revenue from sale of goods is recognized when all the following condition all the following conditions are satisfied all the following conditions are satisfied so it means we need to find out how much condition how many conditions so there are three conditions and all these three conditions need to be satisfied at that point of time at that point of time so point number one correct Adam. The seller has transferred has transferred the ownership ownership of goods correct now ownership of goods to buyer for a consideration for a consideration the seller has transferred what the ownership of goods to a buyer for a consideration correct or I don't or or all significant significant risk and reward risk and reward of ownership of ownership has been transferred to whom 
has been transferred to buyer has been transferred to buyer all the risk and reward has been transferred all the risk and reward has been transferred or all the risk and reward of ownership has been transferred correct normally can you say ownership is transferred when the ownership is transferred once the invoice is prepared normally normally what happen once the invoice is prepared so at that point of time delivery will be given so normally i am saying normally not all circumstances suppose you went to purchase a mobile so invoice will be prepared and immediately you will take the delivery so on that date only what happen ownership transfer and with transfer of ownership can it be delivery made and risk and reward is also transferred but sometime what happen invoice is prepared but it might happen that delivery is delayed now one doubt will come if the delivery is delayed now one doubt will come whether risk and reward has been transferred or not correct now risk and reward has been transferred or not are you able to understand for example you went to purchase one ac so invoice prepared but can i say that ac will be delivered to whom to customer after some days because it will not come immediately they will say after two days and after delivery also it will be installed by the vendor only means you will wait for the installation till then you will not use are you getting means can i say delivery also received but you are waiting for installation but just try to understand ac is in your premises whether risk and reward transferred just try to understand ac is in your premises whether risk and reward transferred correct can i say you opened it and it is damaged who's the risk that is because you will not open it na you will not open it they will only open it so can i say it means it is subject to what installation so can i say in this case even though invoice prepared but risk and reward is not transferred risk and reward will be transferred only upon installation only upon installation so can risk and reward is more i will say will more are reliable to understand whether the goods has been transferred or not means we should focus on risk and reward however with ownership risk and reward is also transferred when i am saying ownership transferred but in that case normally what happen with ownership transferred risk and reward is also transferred but sometime it might happen ownership transferred but risk and reward may not be transferred risk and reward may not be transferred are you able to understand what i am saying So you need to understand with ownership whether risk and reward has been transferred or not. Can I say? I can say in this way. We just find out whether the control of goods has been transferred or not. If the control of the goods has been transferred, it means risk and reward has been transferred. We need to find out at which point of time we are transferring the control to whom. We are transferring the control to whom. Customer. So can I say? We can understand the risk and reward is transferred. when control is transfer to whom when control is transfer to whom customer when the control is transfer to customer when i say ac purchase installation not done can is the control not transfer control not transfer because even though ac is delivered who cannot use it customer cannot use it but suppose i purchase ac and i said i am only engineer i will do only installation correct now i take the delivery i am doing transportation something happened who's the risk our risk means can i say in this example immediately risk and reward is transferred immediately risk and reward is transferred to can i say risk and reward transferred or not transferred depend upon each facts and circumstances it will depend case to case it is not say that this point this will happen this point this will happen can i say circumstances change the timing of recognition may change timing of recognition may change so what i want to say risk and reward transferred we just identify whether the control of goods whether the control of goods has been transferred or not understand what i am saying whether the control of goods
has been transferred or not if transferred means what risk and reward is transferred understood have you understood this point so when i am saying control is transferred means can i say who is deriving benefit from such goods customer is deriving and if customer is not able to derive the benefit it means what risk and reward is not transferred control is not transferred control is not transferred first condition you understood second condition there is no significant there is no significant uncertainty there is no significant uncertainty exist regarding the amount of consideration correct and point number 3 write down it is not unreasonable to expect ultimate ultimate collection it is not unreasonable to expect ultimate collection understood can you say the point number 2 and point number 3 deals with consideration point number 2 and point number 3 deals with a consideration first is regarding the amount of consideration and second is for what the collection of consideration collection of consideration are we doing means what they are saying there should not be any there should not be any uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration means consideration should be known the amount of consideration should be known what happened one student came to me with the reference of my father because related person correct now and is what happened correct now no related person will i discuss fees i will not discuss fees reference of my father na just i said reference of my father just try to related person reference of my father my father said pada are you getting what i am saying i am expecting some amount but negotiation not done because related person na suppose immediate relationship chalo not my father my wife father not to pakka now can i discuss no i can't discuss i will sit and we st i started teaching can i say in this case amount of consideration is not known so even though risk and reward is transferred can i recognize revenue i can't recognize revenue understood so there is what there is what significant uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration so what they are saying there should not be any there should not be any uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration there is no significant there is no significant uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration are you able to understand these are key word you can't change in your exam therefore i am repeating bar bar there is no significant uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration correct understood now what happens second example suppose suppose one person came and he started discussing about fees so i said okay the fees is 10000 okay my son will come tomorrow teach i said okay then i said who are you he said income tax department officer bolo acha lo and this what happened correct now whether i will any time demand any fees i will not ask na no it become what i am not sure about collection of amount we decided but even though he is not paying i will not ask na income tax department who will ask 
just try to understand i will to ask because i don't do anything but just try to understand suppose i have lot of black money are you getting red pad jata na are you able to understand what i mean what my one one of my brother is what in ed ed means what income tax department so i know his position wherever he will go acha uid come na is na like this so can you say if he is coming and his son is studying with me so can you say even though fees is not will i demand can you say i will always have a doubt about collection so if you have a doubt about collection should you recognize you should not recognize so what they are saying it is not unreasonable to expect ultimate collection means if it is reasonable to expect alt means if there is any doubt about collection of amount then do not recognize revenue then do not recognize revenue understood if all these three conditions are satisfied then only at that point of time recognize revenue otherwise what do not recognize ever right now postpone revenue recognition means they are not saying don't recognize ever means recognize at that point of time when all these condition are satisfied for example initially i have not recognized because i am not sure about collection but he was a good person after 7 days he came and paid the amount then i will recognize the amount so when all these condition are satisfied at that point of time recognize revenue means if any one condition is not satisfied if any one condition is not satisfied postpone what recognition of revenue i am not saying that do not recognize never recognize not like this at that point of time when all these three condition are satisfied then recognize revenue have you understood this point correct have you understood so can you repeat with me all these three condition because once you have understood all you need to memorize all these three condition batao revenue from sale of goods will be recognized when all the following condition are satisfied point a the seller has transferred the ownership of goods to buyer for a consideration or all significant risk and reward of ownership has been transferred to buyer point number 2 there is no significant uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration point number 3 it is not unreasonable to expect ultimate collection now one doubt will come say why you are writing negative sentence you can write on one positive sentence only this is negative sentence english is a funny language correct now means if i say not un kada kada don't you don't delete huh? so it become it is it must be reasonable to expect collection when it is same when i am saying it is reasonable to expect ultimate collection and when i am saying it is not unreasonable to expect ultimate collection where this both sentence are same or different i said na english is a same or different how many are saying different so can you explain why different we have one english english kya bol literatures bol bol you said a different you only said a different what happened there bolo why it is different so 100% kare they are different only english english just try to understand when i am saying just just try to understand you have done one credit sales you have done one credit sales credit sales is done to what an unknown customer known customer known customer 100% correct now if you have done one credit sales i am doing your audit so i ask you two question i will ask you whether there is any certainty of collection what do you say acha yes means there is no chance of the bad debt just try to understand even though you have done to non customer it does not means amount whether there is 100% certainty 
what i am asking whether there is any 100% certainty of collection you will say no it might happen in future they may become what bad are bolna re so you say it might happen it might not be collected so if i will ask you whether there is any certainty of collection you will say might be no if i will ask you whether there is any uncertainty of collection what do you say bol if i will ask you whether there is any uncertainty regarding the collection of amount so i will say if you are saying yes then why you have done the sale just try in that also the answer will be no only in both case answer is coming no and therefore both are different just try to understand if i say whether there is any significant certainty you will say no no significant not whether there is any certainty of collection you will say no if i will say whether there is any uncertainty of collection then also you will say no only because if you say yes then i will ask you why you have done said bolna yes or no it means just try to understand if i will if i will write down it is reasonable to expect ultimate collection it might give some wrong meaning and therefore as minus said it is not reasonable it is not unreasonable to expect ultimate collection it is not unreasonable to expect ultimate collection understood if this is the case then we recognize revenue because if they will say there is a certainty of collection so there might not be any certainty are you getting what i am saying so that will be that may give some wrong meaning therefore in exam we write down the negative sentence negative sentence means there is no significant uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration it is not unreasonable to expect ultimate collection can you repeat with me point number 2 there is no significant uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration it is not unreasonable to expect ultimate collection one second point number 2 there is no significant uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration point number 3 it is not unreasonable to expect ultimate collection one second point number 2 One second, point number two. Point number three. It is not unreasonable to expect ultimate collection. Baki memorize in your home. Just try to understand why I have said this. Point number two and point number three is chipku point. Chipku point means for every revenue recognition, these two point will always be there. only what will change point number 1 will change means in any revenue recognition point number 2 and point number 3 will be there only what will change point number 1 will change have you understood this point write on some note chal now write down some notes note number 1 write down A risk and reward is normally transferred with the transfer of ownership. or possessions of goods normally transferred with the transfer of ownership or possession of goods but not always but not always however it will depend upon facts and circumstances of each case facts and circumstances of each case correct 
point number two write down. Write down. If delivery of goods is delayed due to fault of seller understood now the delivery of goods is delayed due to fault of seller means invoice prepared means invoice prepared and it is delayed the delivery is delayed due to some fault of seller means seller is not delivering it the question is that invoice to prepared so whether ownership transfer to ownership may be transferred but delay there is a delivery delay so whether risk and reward is transferred risk and reward is not transferred because it is the mistake of seller the so risk and reward is with whom seller only and therefore will not recognize revenue even though invoice is prepared even though invoice is prepared understood it means whatever the invoice date is written we don't pass jana entry based on that date we will find out whether risk and reward transfer depending upon each facts and circumstances so after passing ca inter exam we'll go for article sheet article sheet may you'll do audit so when you do audit so you need to see when the jana entry has been done normally accountant will pass jana entry based on the invoice date but you'll do audit you'll ask one question to the accountant whether risk and reward transfer so they will have some question mark what is this correct now so you need to explain he even the invoice is prepared the goods is under whose risk that question you need to ask and they will give answer based on that you need to pass jana entry understood correct so if the delivery of goods is delayed due to fault of seller then you know, then risk and reward will not be transferred will be not will not be transferred to buyer and therefore revenue recognition will be postponed will be postponed understood this point point number 3 right on if the delivery of goods is delayed at the request of art at the request of buyer then what means it might have been buyer came negotiation done invoice prepared the buyer is saying i will take delivery after 5 days now the question is that whether risk and reward is transferred so normally if this is the case in the normal situation the risk and reward will transfer because it is at the request of buyer but at that point of time three more condition need to be satisfied correct so what are that three more condition that we need to understand so normally it will be transferred if all these following conditions are satisfied so just write down in this revenue should be recognized revenue should be recognized at the time of what at the time of bolo transfer of a risk and reward to buyer however 
रिस्क एंड रिवार्ड is deemed to be transferred only if only if all the following conditions are satisfied point number 1 items item is goods what do you think i said item so what are you are thinking about which item so i said item must be in hand but what you think i don't understand it is said by as9 i am not saying item must be in hand item must be in hand whose hand no 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 seller seller who is selling that item correct <laughs> so item you to understand which item good son liya yeah. so any imagination is coming in your mind deleted now when i say item in hand it does not means hand it means under possession before transferring it to buyer so till now delivery is not given so before delivery item must be on hand means it is already manufactured it should be manufactured correct na so item must be in hand means in stock means in stock correct na understood na correct second item must be identified you should be able to identify which item you want maza aa raha hai na aapko which item you are thinking i am not think i am not saying about your items okay na like so item must be identified identified means it must be identified ki this item has been transfer to customer even the hold by whom seller in the position of seller but it has been identified that it has been sold it has been sold so there must be some identification there must be some identification so item must be in hand item must be identified point number 3 item must be this is all the job ready item must be ready ready for what maza aa raha hai na aapko item must be ready for what for delivery of delivery to whom to customer item must be ready for delivery means can i say just try to understand i'm just giving one situation what will happen suppose you came to me you said i want 5000 chocolates 5000 pieces of chocolate i said okay invoice prepared and you said sir i will take delivery after one month okay now the question is that should we recognize revenue so if in a normal situa situation risk and reward is transferred if it is delayed at the request of customer but pre condition must be satisfied 
so if suppose chocolate is under manufacturing so but the whether item is in stock item is not in stock correct suppose it is manufactured but it is not ready for delivery means it might have a packaging still left it is ready for it is not ready for delivery can you recognize revenue you can't recognize revenue suppose ready for delivery but you have not identified it means it can be sold to any other customer so it means control is not transferred if you are saying you can sell it to any other customer means control is not transferred risk and reward is not transferred so it must be identified that it is already sold i hope if you have done for shopping etc in any shop so sometime you will find the item is written like this it is sold already sold it means control has been transferred now even though you like it can you purchase it you can't purchase it they will say again the stock will come then we'll say it but this has been already sold it means control has been transferred risk and reward has been transferred understood what i'm saying so all these three conditions satisfied it means risk and reward has been transferred to whom even the hold by even the hold by seller so but in this case it will be inventory of seller it will be a sale of seller sale means we'll de recognize inventory and we recognize sale even the hold by seller understood this is very good question important question then down point number 3 point number 4 na point number 4 next main point dekho if an entity means seller retain only a only an insignificant risk of ownership revenue should be recognized have you understood this point the entity has written only an insignificant risk insignificant risk of ownership understood insignificant so what is the condition ki entity has transferred significant risk and reward if significant risk and reward has been transferred only an insignificant risk and reward has been retained then also revenue will be recognized sometime what happen to protect the seller for default of payment suppose i have done sale of goods but i may have a doubt that you will not pay so i will retain the ownership till you pay this is only a protective clause are you getting it means i have retained only an insignificant risk means the goods has been transferred risk and reward has been transferred you are using it only to protect myself for default of payment i will retain the ownership criteria that if you default i will come back and i will retain the goods correct now this is only a protective clause to protect the seller from default of payment understood it does not means that revenue will not be recognized revenue will be recognized because in this case seller has retained only a insignificant risk and reward of ownership understood madam for example a seller seller may retain the legal title of goods to protect from what from non recovery of payment correct in this case revenue will be recognized even if legal ownership is not
not transferred understood have you understood correct i hope all these will give you some idea how to write down the answer correct done now come to point number 5 na sale of goods was point number 4 then i don't point number 5 the revenue from rendering of services correct in this right now it will be recognized when what all the following conditions are satisfied so can is only point number 1 will change point number 2 and 3 remain same as what we have done for sale of goods bol yes or no because can is in case of service there is no concept there is no risk and reward means i am providing services so i am not transferring risk and reward here because i am giving knowledge but my knowledge is not transferring na i retain my knowledge bol yes or no i will transfer i am increasing my knowledge only even though i am teaching you every day i am my knowledge is also increasing so it is not a case of transfer of risk and reward of goods correct in this case only first condition will change second condition third third condition for all revenue recognition will remain same madam it is revenue from services revenue from services is recognized as and when services are performed are performed understood simple as and when services are performed perform means completed perform means completed now just try to understand there can be different type of services any one services might have one act so it means when that act is completed service is recognized so can is when the service is entirely completed then we need to recognize revenue for example if i say doctor operation so there is only one act kata 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 correct one act and that service is completed is it recognized revenue means even though there may be different parts you suppose accident ho gaya this is the and what happened wa and now it become like this quite possible na सर्जरी हो ना तो ना सर्जरी तो फर्स्ट हैंड ज्वाइंट तो विल से नो विल रिकॉग्नाइज रेवेन्यू देन विल डू एन अदर ऑपरेशन तो कहीं इट इज वन एक्ट ओनली ना तो एंड वंस द एंटायर ऑपरेशन विल बी कंप्लीटेड देन रेवेन्यू विल बी रिकॉग्नाइज द सम सर्विसेज कंसिस्ट ऑफ वन एक्ट वंस द एंटायर सर्विसेज कंप्लीटेड रेवेन्यू विल बी रिकॉग्नाइज बट सम सर्विसेज मे कंसिस्ट ऑफ मल्टीपल एक्ट and can i say once one one act is completed we recognize proportionate revenue correct so either we recognize revenue on completion of contract completion of services or can i say we can recognize revenue on proportionate basis as we have done in as7 as we have done in as7 as7 also we have done proportionately only as and when work performed it depends upon the type of type of services depends upon type of services can you say in our case can you say we are also giving services correct na but can you say our also have different act one day completed to we can recognize revenue as one day is concerned because we have completed some portion of act 
So suppose the total number of hours during your class is 1000 hours. In one day we completed 10 hours. So 10 hours revenue should be recognized. Are we able to understand? So we'll use proportionate completion method or we can use what completed service contract method. So they have given option. Either use completed service contract method or proportionate completion method. Understood, Radom? Right After this, after this, right on in point number A only. In point number A, revenue should be recognized either by using point number A what completed. Service contract method or by using what? Proposed net completion method. So when I say single act so whenever there is a single act normally we use which method completed services contract method if there is a multiple act so multiple act so we normally normally i am saying normally we use proportionate net completion method but they have given option as9 has given option either completed service contract method means wait for the entire completion then recognize revenue or you can use a proportionate completion method also. Correct? Have you understood this too? Correct? Then can you say point number two and point number three remain same? So write down point number two and point number three by your own. Point number two is what? There is no significant. Achha, this was point number A. Write right down point number one. That is. So point number two write down. There is no significant uncertainty. Regarding the amount of consideration, point number three also write down by your own. Done. Have you understood this point number two and point number three? What is it? what you are in point number three? It is not unreasonable to expect ultimate collection. Can I? I think you can retain this point. Okay. Now let me give you an example. Suppose I'm just giving an example. Suppose we started one batch. We started one batch. Your batch was started when? No, Suppose your batch started on 1st Feb 2020 and suppose it will be completed on 30th June 2020. Correct. How many months? Month. 5 or 6? 5 months. Nah? 5 months. So batch is of 5 months? And in between, what will come? 31st March will come. So this is one financial year. This become 1920. And this become 20... 21. Are we able to understand? Now this is the commencement date. This is completion date. Correct. The batch will start. 
at this point of time and it will end at this point of time now normally we receive advance suppose from one student we receive advance of how much 10000 10000 we receive correct now the question is that we receive this amount before the start of the batch so when to recognize the revenue that we need to understand so can is when we receive we'll pass what general entry cash account debit to what cash account debit to advance means this is not our revenue right now this is not our revenue are bolna re now this need to be recognized as revenue either we'll use what completed service contract method or we'll use what proportionate completion method so suppose first we are using completed service contract method so at a time of start no jana entry on 31st march also no jana entry only once it end entire amount received become what revenue and then we'll pass one jana entry advance account debit to advance account debit to what a revenue have you understood this point have you understood this point are bolna re this is which concept accrual concept na so of course we'll follow accrual concept as deals with accrual concept but even though you are following accrual concept when to recognize revenue that we need to understand so we'll not recognize revenue at the start of batch we'll not recognize revenue during the batch we recognize revenue only on completion of batch when we are using completed service contract method bole ya sunu if i am using which method completed service contract method completed service contract method can is we can also use proportionate completion method because they have given one choice so if i am using proportionate completion method then how to recognize revenue are you able to understand so first advance we have received cash account debit to advance are you able to understand yes sir correct then on start will not pass an entry but can i say on 31st march we need to find out how much hours we have completed suppose the entire batch is of 1000 hours let us assume suppose entire batch is of how many hours 1000 hours this is 1000 hours and suppose we have completed 300 hours so suppose we completed how many hours from this date to this date we completed how many hours 300 hours so we should recognize proportionate so out of 10000 we recognize how much revenue 3000 revenue so what jana entry will do advance advance account debit to revenue how much so can i say how much revenue we recognize in first year how much revenue we recognize in first year and how much revenue we recognize in second year have you understood this become what proportionate completion method this become so balance 7000 is 700 hours will be completed in next lot and we recognize the balance advance account debit to revenue debit to revenue 7000 on completion have you understood this point this is which method propose bolna re proportionate completion method okay sir okay sir have you understood correct any doubt understood this example come to one question question number 10 Sarita Publication publishes a monthly magazine on 15th of every month. On 15th of every month, one public one magazine is published. 15th of every month, it sells advertising space in the magazine. In that magazine, now they will provide some space for advertisement. Correct means they are providing some services to the advertiser on terms. Of 80% sales value payable in advance and balance within 30 days of the release of publication. So balance will be paid within 30 days. Can you say payment is not at all relevant for recognition? We do accounting on accrual basis. The so ones when the amount is received, when the amount is not received, that is actually not at all important. 
that is not at all important we can recognize revenue even though not received even though not received the sale of space for march 2014 issue the sale of space for march 2014 issue was made in feb 2014 so the space was sold in feb correct the magazine was published on its scheduled date it received 2 lakh 40 thousand on 10th march and 60 thousand on 10th four for the march 2014 issue my question to you all the amount was received on 10th march amount was received on 10th four but the pub, it was published in which month march means can i say it means the advertisement was shown to public on which month it was sold in the month of feb no 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 the booking was done in the month of feb but the services was done given in which month march month because it was it was available for public to observe in the month of march therefore revenue should be recognized in which month in the month of march irrespective of amount received irrespective of booking irrespective of booking so in the first case can you say the amount the entire amount 2 lakh 40 plus 60 correct means will be recognized 3 lakh will be recognized in the month of march and case 60000 will be what receivable in the month of march 60000 will be receivable and the second discuss in the context of as9 the amount of revenue to recognize and the treatment of amount received from advertiser for the year ended 31st march 2014 what will be the treatment if the publication is delayed till second four means the march publication came in second four quite possible if there was a publication to be released in march but it was delayed and now it came to the public in which month in the month of april now revenue will be recognized in the month of march in the month of april april so whatever amount we have received in the month of march that will be advance received advance received same answer is given you can read the answer by your own have you understood this type of question may come this is an ca inter question only correct and is the level of question have you understood level but easy once you understood it is easy but you need to understand how to write write writing part is also important for that solution is given you can read it bolo good bolo question number 18 you read you do you read you do please your book you have been informed that today is the class fast understood bata in this case the revenue will recognize in which month bolo november december how much in the month of november 40% and how much in the month of december 60% correct because can is it is given only in the question कि इन द मंथ ऑफ नवंबर एंड दिसंबर फ्रॉम दैट आई थिंक यू गॉट अ हिंट हां मिस सलीसम वाज गिवन द क्वेश्चन ओनली करेक्ट बट इवन दो दिस वाज मिसिंग दे विल से कि व्हेन टू रिकॉग्नाइज रेवेन्यू देन आल्सो इन द मंथ ऑफ नवंबर एंड दिसंबर बिकॉज़ इट वाज ऑफर्ड टू पब्लिक व्हिच वाज शोन टू द पब्लिक अपीयर्ड बिफोर द पब्लिक इन द मंथ ऑफ नवंबर एंड दिसंबर 40% 60% करेक्ट 
However, I would like to change the answer. Question number eighteen. So can you say in the month of November and December? But what is the total revenue? Total revenue is what? That no lie. That is cost. What is total amount? Booking amount. Nine forty nine. Means you have not read the question carefully. What is given? They first purchase the space. Normally, this contractor what they will do? They will first purchase the space. You have seen the hoarding. They have done contact for advertisement. They will first purchase that and then they will sell that. So cost of purchasing is how much? Five twenty lakh. This is cost, not revenue. And the company obtain advertisement seventy percent for seven hundred lakh, and then balance for two forty lakh. So total revenue is what? Nine forty lakh. Total revenue is nine forty, na? So this nine forty, how much appeared? Forty percent here upper, sixty percent here upper. Means will apply which method? Proportionate completion. A completed service contract method. Proportionate. So forty percent how much? Three seventy six. And five sixty four. Then what is my cost? Cost is what five twenty. Can it cost always be recognized based on matching concept? How much revenue you have recognized? That much cost you have recognized. So that will be also proportionately. That will be also proportionately. So how much? Two zero eight and three one two. So what is the profit? Profit, tell me. Profit is equal to four twenty. And this become one sixty eight and two fifty two. Have you understood this? Correct. Now just try to understand. AS nine is for revenue or profit. So AS nine is for revenue, not for profit. Profit to it will be automatically calculated. Profit will be automatically calculated once you deducted cost. So AS nine is for revenue, not for Profit understood. Done. This also done. Chalega. Come to next point. Point number six. Use of enterprise resources. By others, use of enterprise resources by others. It is right of first interest. It is very simple. Interest income, though you have done from bachman. Correct, na? Interest income will be recognized on accrual basis, on time proportionate basis. Correct, na? Right on. I think no discussion required. It will be recognized. On time, proportionate basis, as per what rate of interest applicable? As per rate of interest applicable. Correct. For example. You have given rupees ten lakh as loan at four percent per annum on on first December two thousand twenty. Correct. But what will be the interest income? Interest will be how much on outstanding amount? Rate of interest for how many month? Four month only. This will be your interest income. You are doing from bachman na? I think no. Clarification required. Chalega. Then I don't dividend. You know. 
डिविडेंड विल बी रिकॉग्नाइज वेन राइट टू रिसीव राइट टू रिसीव डिविडेंड is established right to receive dividend is established which right right to receive right to receive dividend is established now you all know that for this financial year suppose this is 2021 Dividend will be proposed on which date? In directors' meeting. So suppose this is the directors' meeting. The rate of dividend will be proposed. Bolna yes or no? Suppose ten percent proposed, correct? And then in AGM, it will be finalized or approved. It is approved, correct? For this financial year, ha? Correct. And is what I am saying. So, tell me, right to receive is established at which point of time? When it is approved. So, at this point of time, right to receive will be established. Means when it is declared, not proposed. So, when it is proposed, there is no obligation to pay. So, there is no right to receive. The company does not have any obligation to pay. The so company has an obligation to pay. When it is declared in AGM by shareholders, are you getting? So on this date, there is an obligation to pay by the company. So that obligation will give rise to right to receive by the investor. Understood? So at this point of, even though it belong to this year, the dividend of this year received here, so it will be recognized in this year. Recognized in this year, correct? Yes, sir. That all. Note. As per Companies Act, such right is established when dividend is declared. by company it means there is no right to receive there is no right to receive when dividend is what when dividend is proposed simple i hope this also you have understood correct small small point then on dividend ke baad royalty Royalty will be recognized on accrual basis. As per agreement, as per agreement, correct. As per agreement. So normally, what happen? We receive royalty on transfer of our intellectual property, intangible asset. So royalty is nothing but amount received on transfer of our intellectual property. Are you getting? Correct. Now you know we are recording our classes. 
So whatever the final output will come, that is my intellectual property or not. So normally what we do, we give this normally before COVID we used to do, after COVID that is closed down. So in remote area we give this property, our intellectual property to some academy. That academy will run our classes in their premises and they will do promotions activity student will come student will come correct now and they will do all the expenses but can you see because I have transferred my intellectual property so I require some royalty income so as per agreement we will say 2000 per student or 5000 per student as per negotiation so it means because I transfer my intellectual property, I am not taking any face to face class. I am not available there. I am available in this class now. But there they will play my recorded classes. So they are using my intellectual property. So I will charge some income, some consideration. That consideration is known as royalty income. So I will recognize my royalty income on accrual basis as per the terms of agreement. The terms was what 4000 per student on accrual basis when the once the class is started as per the agreement on accrual basis, I will recognize that. Simple. Correct. Understood. Understood. This also you have understood. Correct. But can I say just try to understand what I have said. In any revenue recognition, point number one will change, point number two and three remain same. So can I say for interest, this is point number one. For interest, this is point number one. For dividend, this is point number one. And for royalty, this is point number one. Can you say point number two and point number three remain same? What is point number two? There is no significant uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration. Suppose, just try to understand. Suppose, I have given one invoice, invoice raised. Invoice raised. Normally, suppose to you also we have given invoice and we say 10,000 is the fees and we have given two month credit period. Suppose batch is of 6 months, then only we will give 2 months. Huh? Correct now. Nah? Are you getting what I am saying? And then we have written one note. In bold. With italic. With a star mark. Any late payment, 10% interest will be charged. Correct. Correct. Understood. And suppose, there is a delay. Now the question is that can we recognize that interest income? Have you understood? Means as per contract we can charge? Are bolna re? Understood what I am saying? I am not saying about this 10,000. This may be for sale of goods or for rendering of services. That already we have done. I am discussing about this interest. Two month credit given but two month expire. Can we recognize that interest as revenue? So, can you say first point is that interest income should be recognized on time proportional basis? Yes, first condition satisfied. Second, whether there is any significant uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration, whether it is reasonable to expect ultimate collection. That two conditions now. Normally, can, can you say in a trade, in a business, normally we don't recover interest from our customer. This is only to what? Uh, only to inform that if you do not pay, we'll charge. But normally, just try to understand one time we'll charge, second time that customer will never come. So we'll lose our customer. We'll lose our customer. Are you getting what I am saying? Normally, if suppose that is the customer one time, then we may charge. But normally, the customer is repeated. Repeated customer is there. Repeated. Normally, we think about repeated customer whenever you will do business now. You will not target customer, you will target your repeated customer. Because if repeated customer is coming, means your goods and your services are good. We suppose you have taken classes for foundation, if you are not coming in inter, means foundation you are not satisfied. Are you saying? Now, but I am foundation, will I charge interest from you? Bol, if I charge, will you come? No. And therefore, we don't charge. You have done so much late payment. Are you saying? Correct. Whether we are charging. But it might happen in our invoice and if you see the terms and conditions of our application form now, everything written. We write but we don't charge, we don't bother also. Correct? Are you getting? This is the business nature. We are here to what? Do business. Correct? Are you getting? 
तो कैन ही से इट इज कैन ही से इन दिस केस सेकंड कंडीशन और थर्ड कंडीशन बोथ विल नॉट बी सेटिस्फाइड एंड देयरफॉर विल नॉट रिकॉग्नाइज हां इट विल बी रिकॉग्नाइज व्हेन इट इज एक्चुअली कलेक्टेड इफ यू कलेक्ट इट रिकॉग्नाइज इट अंडरस्टैंड आई एम नॉट सेइंग डोंट रिकॉग्नाइज आई एम सेइंग व्हेन ऑल द थ्री कंडीशन सेटिस्फाइड देन रिकॉग्नाइज आई एम जस्ट गिविंग वन मोर एग्जांपल आई एम जस्ट गिविंग वन मोर एग्जांपल यू विल अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट दिस अनसर्टेनिटी और चल बात देता हूं बट हैव यू अंडरस्टूड दिस दिस पॉइंट तो राइट डाउन This interest was a very important question. Please don't do. Now I'm disturbed. I'm getting disturbed. Okay, you now with this noise, so I go over. Whatever you are opening, don't open. Okay, you can eat, but without opening. Irritation over. I'm getting irritation. Okay, okay, okay. A lot of concentration required. Right? One sound effect will happen. Correct. Now you don't know so much concentration required, and that should affect you also. Are you getting? If you are not affected with this small small sound, means you are not concentrating. Normally, what happen? I will say when I used to study, I am just saying what what was my nature. So I am studying, studying, studying. My mom will come, will give milk, and they will he she will inform me drink. After when I will say you came, you inform me. I was so much involved in my studies. It happens with me because I was dedicated that time. Normally it happens with, and nowadays also, now also whenever I am doing some work, now my wife will come and say me, when you say it, because I am concentrating my work. Whatever she is saying, that is not affecting me. Correct now, understood? So you should also concentrate. One second, no, right down, right down. Above revenue. Above revenue means this three. Above revenue will be recognized only if what there is no there is no significant. Uncertainty correct regarding the amount of consideration and collection have you understood this point? Correct. Point number seven. Right. Effect of uncertainties on revenue recognition. This we have understood. Only I am just giving a note because this para is important. We have understood whenever there is uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration or regarding the amount of collection, postpone revenue recognition. Correct. So we need to postpone it, and whenever that certainty, that uncertainty will be removed, then recognize revenue. Correct. That already we have understood. I am just giving in writing because normally this is very important. So they will give some question where there will be doubt regarding the amount of consideration or regarding the amount of collection. So always write down this para. If you write down this para, impression will be created. Correct? Understood? Write down. Whenever, yeah, when the ability to access ability to access. ability to assess the ultimate collection ability to assess the ultimate collection with reasonable
सडन एटी वेन द एबिलिटी टू एस द अल्टीमेट कलेक्शन विथ रिजनेबल अनसर्टन राइट ऑफ सॉरी विथ रिजनेबल अनसर्टन एटी करेक्ट इज लैकिंग एट द टाइम ऑफ रेजिंग अ क्लेम करेक्ट रेवन्यू रिकॉग्निशन is postponed to the extent of what uncertainty involved to the extent of uncertainty involved this para is important therefore i have given writing but i think you have understood to the extent of uncertainty involved now let me give one example you will understand suppose we have done one contract that i will teach you and the fees will be 10000 plus GST तो ऑलरेडी भी डिस्कस ना इट इज नॉट एन अमाउंट ऑफ रेवेन्यू प्लस ट्वेंटी परसेंट इफ यू स्कोर सिक्सटी प्लस ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ टेन थाउजेंड करेक्ट मीन्स कैन ए से इफ यू आर गेटिंग मोर मार्क्स इट मीन्स आई एम टीचिंग गुड तो बेस्ड ऑन माई परफॉर्मेंस इफ गुड परफॉर्मेंस तो आई विल चार्ज मोर बताओ कैन ए से इन दिस केस वट इज अनसर्टन What is uncertain? Can I say this is uncertain at the time of raising the claim? Therefore, this much revenue should be postponed because it involves some uncertainty. But we should recognize how much ten thousand. Understood? I hope you have understood with this example. When the ability to assess the ultimate collection, can I say the collection of twenty percent depend upon your score? Correct. So when the ability to assess the ultimate collection with reasonable uncertainty is lacking, at the time of raising the claim, revenue recognition should be postponed to the extent of that uncertainty. I hope now this para is clear. Correct? Understood? Chalo. Understood? I mean, there is there are many good questions based on this. You will find out. there are many good question okay we'll find out okay chalo i will not theek okay? hai understood this point then add on point number 8 point number 8 subsequent uncertainty of collection subsequent uncertainty of collection subsequent means can i say on recognition suppose this was the date and all three conditions are satisfied then revenue recognize means we pass one jana entry receivable account debit to sales means already we pass this jana entry on this date why on this date because all three conditions are satisfied means on this date there was no uncertainty regarding the amount of consideration of fees ultimate collection understood this point correct But can I say there can be subsequent uncertainty? Subsequent uncertainty. There can be three events. Already we have done in our childhood. 
कि नहीं से दे कैन बी बेड डेप्ट बोले या सुनो डाउट रिगार्डिंग कलेक्शन सब्सिक्वेंटली और दे में भी सेल्स रिटर्न सेल्स रिटर्न मी सपोज गुड्स वेयर सोल्ड विद अ रिटर्न क्लॉज दैट यू कैन रिटर्न विद इन वन मंथ इफ द गुड्स आर डिफेक्टिव तो इट कैन बी सेल्स रिटर्न और दे कैन बी सम कैश डिस्काउंट दे में भी सम कैश डिस्काउंट ना वे रिकॉग्नाइज इंटर अमाउंट बट इफ यू पे अर्ली दे सम डिस्काउंट तो कैन दिस बिकम a point of subsequent uncertainty regarding the amount of collection understood just try to understand everyone you recognize sales now in this year only in this year only there is a sales return correct understood but what jana entry you will do बता यू हैव डन यू बचपन सेल्स रिटर्न टू सेल्स रिटर्न टू रिसीवेबल ना अच्छा इन योर बचपन मीन सी ए फाउंडेशन और इन योर क्लास लेवल आई होप दिस डाउट माइट हैव केम टू यू ना यू विल गेट द आंसर बिकॉज द सेम डाउट केम टू मी द माई टीचर माई फैकल्टी एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम हैज गिवन दिस जर्नरी डेटर अकाउंट डेबू टू सेल्स देन बोला सेल्स रिटर्न टू बेटर देन वॉज टोटली कंपनी वाई सेल्स रिटर्न बेटर टू सेल्स ऑनली means i could do sales account debit letter na this doubt came to you so why we are opening sales letter account decrease sales na are bol na re this doubt came to you the answer is given in as nine so now whenever there is a subsequent uncertainty a separate provision will be created without adjusting the amount of revenue means revenue amount will not be adjusted understood therefore in case of bad debt also we pass an entry what Bad debt to debtor. We don't say sales account debit to debtor. We say bad debt to debtor. Understood? Okay. Similarly, in case of discount, we say discount allowed to debtor. We will not say sales account debit debtor. But can I say even though we reduce sales, the effect remains same. But as per AS nine, we should not adjust the amount of revenue whenever there is a subsequent uncertainty regarding the amount of collection. Understood? This I am saying subsequently. Once you recognize revenue, if this uncertainty was there on the time of recognition revenue, then you can't recognize revenue. Then you need to postpone the revenue recognition. Understood? Correct. Right on. When uncertainty of collection. of revenue arises subsequently after what revenue recognition provision for uncertainty in collection should be made without any adjustment to what to revenue already already recognized understood this point this para is also very important they ask question on this para so you know write down this key without any adjustment to already recognized revenue a separate provision will be created for that amount of uncertainty correct this also you have understood correct last point 
of this unit this is point number 9 and disclosure requirement point number a Revenue recognition policy Whatever revenue recognition policy adopted should be disclosed Second Circumstances In which Revenue recognition is postponed. So, if any revenue recognition has been postponed, so why you are postponed? Reason need to be given. What is the reason of that postponement? That need to be given. Very simple. Done. Chapter is over. Simple. Correct. So this chapter is over. This AS is over. AS nine. Come to once your book. If you come to your books, you will see that I have given some illustration for sale of goods. This you read by your own. If you have understood, very good. If you do not understand, then ask me. Okay. Illustration for sale of goods. Ninety percent you will understand. Ninety percent, ten percent you might not understand. So I will help you. Similarly, they have given for what? For rendering of services. So normally I have discussed, but there are some point which I have not discussed intentionally. First you read it. If you understood, okay. If you do not understand, then I am there for you. Nothing to worry. Chalega? Correct. Then there are some questions given. Bolna re. That you can read by room. Bolna. Can you do it by room? Because my help is not required. Acha, one question to be forgot. I have given one question now. At the start of the, I actually forgot. Chocolate wala question. Now let's see what I, what is your answer. Correct now. Question remains same. Hmm. This is the question. But now at which point of time? We should transfer, uh, we should recognize revenue. 30 March. 30 March? Okay, is it 30 March is also correct and 2nd April is also correct because the I have not given full information. Can you say 30 March is correct when the transportation is made by seller? Means then it is at the risk of seller. Oh, sorry. My mistake. My mistake. Repeat. Correct. Okay, 38 March is, is the date to recognize revenue when the transportation is taken by customer. So, already risk anybody is transferred? Means if I have taken the goods and I am doing the transportation by my own risk, risk anybody is transferred? But as per the policy, if suppose it will be delivered by whom? Seller. So it means in transportation, is it, it is at whose risk? Seller. Therefore, risk anybody is not transferred. Then your answer will be 2nd April when the goods are delivered to the customer. Understood. Now you do online sales. So in online sales, you do payment. Or it can be cash on delivery also, but payment is not important. Invoice to raise. Now goods will come and then it will be delivered. Correct now. Everything. 
then you can return also correct now so it means at which point of time the revenue will be recognized normally what happen in this in this e-commerce in this e-commerce the chances of return are very high so they will wait for the return period they will wait for the once the return period is completed means there is carry what transfer then you call whatever you will do they will never return it correct now but you can return one day before the return period normally what we do we'll purchase we'll use it and then we'll return maza aata hai na you do you have done like this so you have not done i have also not done correct but normally karte hain log correct have you understood this thing chalo so with this we completed as9 balance we'll do in the next class for today this much only thank you very much we'll meet tomorrow all questions because questions if you will not do i am not going to help you i will just take the doubtful question correct so it is your duty to complete a question correct but you are not completing today you just go because you have time complete all as because now whatever as are left all are goods accounting standard as 26 as 19 as 20 as 22 and there are two small as also there are three small as but this much as are left correct we will do it nothing to worry correct thank you very much we'll meet again bye bye take care enjoy your remaining day very good morning everyone how are you all very fine now last accounting standard we have done as 9 have you done some questions whatever as we have done in that any doubt bolo not done means done all questions as 9 done all questions done okay no doubt means you have understood doubt will not come once you have understood all the points whatever we have done in class accounting standard one thing is clear that question will come from this book only if you have done all the questions means you can write in exam if you have not done you will not be able to write so simple simple mantra is what revise all accounting standard before exam you will get out of 25 all app but i will say you can easily get 20 marks if you write correct so now we'll start as 20 earning per share as 20 earning per share very simple accounting standard why simple because it is based on calculation and whenever calculation come it become easy for you all earning per share i think because you have already completed fm in fm also you have calculated earning per share but whatever eps you calculate in fm that is not the same whatever will calculate in as 20 because in fm you have not applied accounting standard so in financial management what is fm what is fm fm is financial management but financial management means what they whatever you have studied that is based on projection basis means what will happen in future financial management means based on financial statement whatever we prepare are you getting based on financial statement whatever we prepare the so financial statement is based on past and present transaction whatever has been done the financial statement is based on actual transaction event and based on transaction event whatever has been recorded in this financial statement the financial manager will project the future so there is a projection of future based on our records means can is fm me whatever eps you calculate that is projected eps so that net profit whatever you have taken that is projected earning but here you will take what actual earning based on what sopl based on sopl means one thing is clear one second i am saying that one second i am saying eps whatever you have calculated fm that is not based on as20 and therefore one formula was given maza aaya 
only one formula was given net profit available to equity shareholders divided by number of shares but yahan maza nahi aayega here to will take 3 4 hours discussion only on earning per share is small formula hum uska kya karenge we'll just expand the numerator and denominator ki what is numerator what can be denominator now why eps why we are why we are discussing this eps in accounting class so as per the requirement of schedule 3 because we have done the format where we have done the format in group 1 accounting so as per the requirement of schedule 3 correct now the sopl on the face of sopl eps need to be disclosed i hope you remember the format to after profit you calculated on the face of balance sheet at the bottom of sopl we write on eps so because it become a statutory compliance so statutory compliance so we should calculate eps in finance and we should disclose in on the face of sopl so eps need to be disclosed because statutory compliance so we need to understand how to calculate eps but schedule 3 is silent about calculation of eps schedule 3 is silent about calculation of eps now so i hope you have understood that eps we are doing as per the requirement of schedule 3 means if schedule 3 was silent regarding disclosure of eps so there was no requirement of accounting standard understood so why accounting standard came for eps because of statute requirement one doubt will come why only eps why not other ratio because in fm you have done many other ratio return in equity there are many other ratio you have done so why we have no accounting standard for that one doubt will come i have a doubt will not come now doubt will come because i have asked you in a say simple reason we are doing as 20 because of statutory compliance correct now you have understood earning means numerator and share means denominator in this accounting standard they will focus on what should be the numerator what should be denominator earning means what net profit and uh, share means number of equity shares So we calculate EPS for equity share, not for preference share. That way, it, it is understood. Earning per share. So here, share means equity share. So here, shares means equity share. Now the question is that if there is no accounting standard, then can I say every entity will take net profit as per their requirement? Are you getting? And they will take whatever shares they want to take. There is no standard. Are we able to understand? For example, if I will say earning. So whether it is profit after tax or profit before tax, one doubt will come. Whether it is profit for exceptional item or before extraordinary item, should we consider prior period item or not? We have done AS five. One doubt will come, na? Now suppose you don't want to consider extraordinary item because you have some losses. So can I say every entity will try to disclose higher EPS? So they will take profit as per their requirement. And therefore, what was required? Standard was required. So in this, numerator will be this, so this only. Denominator will be this, this. That we need to take as per accounting standard 20. One thing we have understood that AS 20, let them point number one, is mandatory. mandatory in respect of entity whose equity shares are listed on recognized stock exchange now one thing is clear that eps is required only for companies not for partnership can partnership from there is no equity shares now one doubt will come with this first para that sir whether it is not applicable for unlisted company this is a schedule three is applicable to all companies Schedule is silent about listed and unlisted. It is applicable to all. So, can you say 
because of compliance of schedule 3 is applicable to all companies correct this is item part 2 part 2 you know of what schedule 3 part 2 is for statement of bill correct the so part 2 of schedule 3 of companies act 2013 require disclosure of ets eps where on the face of on the face of sopl means this is the only one requirement of disclosure which is the face otherwise all disclosure is given to the account regarding so on the face of sopl and therefore every company in is every company whether listed or unlisted calculate and disclose eps correct calculate and those eps as per what as 20 But AS20 says that there are two type of EPS. There are two type of EPS thread. EPS are of types. One is known as basic earning per se. One is known as what? Basic earning per se. And second, you know. Uh, very good. From where you know how we how you came to know about this? Now in FM the teacher has not used. Either you know practically, or I think when you have done the SOPL format, so in that format only it is mentioned basic and diluted earning first. So at that time your teacher might have said. As per AS20, there are two types of EPS basic and diluted earning per in FM. Only this word EPS and that is projected EPS. So, right now, don't don't consider FM whatever you have done FM here. Forget that. And in FM, don't consider AS20. Simple now, basic earning per here we calculate for ordinary. For ordinary equity shares, when we say equity shares, equity shares are ordinary equity shares only. So all equity shares are ordinary equity shares only. So don't think so. What is ordinary? First time I think a prefix has been added in equity shares. So whenever you say equity shares, equity shares are ordinary equity shares only. Correct? Are you getting? Don't be confused. Acha, there are two types of equity shares. There are ordinary equity shares, but there is one more. Equity shares that is known as potential equity shares. So to make a distinction between equity shares and potential equity shares, we call equity shares as what? Ordinary equity shares. So what is potential equity shares? That is a new point for you. So what is potential? Potential. Can you see you have potentials? And I am C. It is as simple as I am ordinary C. You have potential C. So I am an ordinary C. You have potential C. So as more respect. No, no, ordinary, ordinary, your potential. Everything just try to understand. We always think about future. So, in future, can you say you will become CA? So, you can you say you will change the entire economic condition of India? Please, can you say the growth of India depends upon you? I am the ordinary CA. You are potential CA. But the who should be given more importance? Potential C and therefore, once we have calculated earning per share from ordinary CA, ordinary CA point of view, now we will also consider once you will become CA, what will happen in India? Because we always think about future of India. So, if you think about future of company, we should also think about what potential equity shares means those equity shares, sorry, those financial instruments who has potential to become what equity share the best example is what convertible preference here 
convertible debentures one more you have done in my accounting only first accounting stop option has potential to become equity shares so can i say right now these are not equity shares but they have potential to equity shares potential to become equity shares correct now just try to understand right now there are 100 clients so i am only see that 100 client will come to me so can i say my earning is more right now but once you become ca you will also come to the market and you will try to capture that client so that my earning may dilute or not and therefore for potential and ordinary in future the earning per se may dilute if you come to practice if you come to practice are bola re are you able to so might happen due to conversion of potential equity shares into equity the profit may be diluted and therefore also calculate what diluted earning per share because investors are interested about future eps not about current eps because anyone who want to invest in the company not shareholders not exist shareholders anyone who want to invest or who want to withdraw their investment they will always think about future earning ki what will get in future what is the expectation in future so based on that they should take rational decision correct na to can i say can i say in future earning per share may dilute the conversion of potential equity shares in they should be informed or not and therefore our accounting standards is, our accounting standards is that first disclose basic earning per share and if earning per share may dilute that also inform is if earning per share will increase that you don't inform because we are what conservative so as per conservatism we always disclose negative point we never disclose positive point of the company correct na so can it in future if there is some dilution that you inform right now right now you inform na that become diluted earning per share means i can say in this year diluted yes is nothing but projected eps but will not call it projected eps projected eps will not call it because when we say projected eps that is fm fm is not based on standard this projection is done internally for internal purpose and this accounting we are doing for external user not for internal user this accounting is based on accounting this entire accounting standard fm is not based on any standard ma to jo lena le lo correct na based on internal that management financial management is for internal discussion na internal discussion that is never for external party this is the difference between eps whatever you have done where in fm and what will do in accounts so can you say this diluted earning per se will for ordinary ordinary and what potential equity sir potential equity sir can you say with my discussion i hope you have understood that diluted earning per se can be either equal to or less than basic earning per se it cannot be more than it cannot be more than basic earning per se correct let us start first what basic earning per se so if you understand basic then only you can understand what diluted so one thing is clear that now we are discussing basic earning per se for basic earning per se numerator and denominator is required so let us understand what is numerator and what is denominator for calculating this ratio one thing one second i just want to inform you that this we are calculating ratio we are not doing any accounting is it has whatever we are discussing for the first time in our class that has nothing to do with accounting that is nothing to do with books of account it is only for calculation of ratio for disclosure purpose is can it for this basic earning per year we are not here to understand any jana entry is all previous accounting standard whatever we have done that was for example revenue recognition we have understood when to pass that jana entry so it will affect books of account na but this will not affect your books of account only it will affect disclosure understood what i am saying the so one clarification i am just want to give that, that this jana this accounting standard has nothing to do with books of account what is the formula for basic earning per share of course we want net profit net profit can you see it can be loss also is basic earning per share can be negative eps also 
if there is a negative eps that also require disclosure correct so we call it earning first year but earning can be negative also correct earning can be negative also correct earning can be negative also correct now write down net profit or loss net profit or loss of the period attributable to whom to equity shareholders correct divided by what weighted average weighted average number of equity shares outstanding outstanding during the period during the period understood you can see the formula also change thoda sa in fm you have never done weighted average there to you take closing number of equity shares but here will take weighted average why weighted average i will explain nothing to worry but one thing is clear that this become numerator this become denominator now we need to understand how to calculate numerator then we'll do discussion about denominator however entire focus will be on denominator entire focus will be on denominator first let us complete discussion on numerator so point number a write down net profit or loss attributable to equity shareholders what as 20 says that this net profit will be profit as per as 5 this can is it should be profit after tax this can is say we should consider all exceptional item we should consider all extraordinary item and we should also consider prior period item and that profit should be after tax so simple they said profit means as per as 5 profit means as per as 5 right now how to calculate this first we'll calculate net profit or loss after tax net profit or loss after tax correct after tax so can a tax means tax expense and tax we calculate as per as 22 after this we'll do as 22 only correct So means here tax will be as per AS 22 and as per AS 22 tax means the current tax plus minus deferred tax coming to this side. Understood now. So this tax will be as per AS. This tax will be as per AS 22 coming soon. After this we'll do AS 22. Correct. So net profit or loss after tax for the period for the period. Can I say simply write down as per SOP? As per SOP, understood. Then from this deduct what? Prefer na na na. Already net profit as per SOP. This is after exceptional item. This is after extraordinary item. This is after prior period item. This is after tax only. So one second that adjustment is not required. Already we have taken net profit as per SOP only, na? Understood? Yes, sir. So less what preference dividend? Why preference dividend? Because we are calculating profit which are attributable to whom? Equity shareholders. So out of this profit, some profit belong to whom? Preference shareholder. Did I get that? But now, but AS twenty says that there are two type of preference yes one is cumulative other is non cumulative so non cumulative dividend declared then deduct if dividend is declared then deduct but if dividend is not declared then it is withdrawn forever means that will not be carried forward na for non you know non cumulative preferences you know cumulative preferences yes or no of course you know 
in case of non cumulative preference year dividend once not declared it will be withdrawn forever it will not be carry forward to next year have in case of cumulative preference year even though it is not declared it will be carry forward and it will paid when equity dividend is paid means it will be carry forward and accumulated and once equity dividend is declared that is required to paid as per company act so can you say for non cumulative preference year if preference dividend declared deduct it if not declared do not deduct it but for cumulative preference year if declared deduct but if not declared then can you say at some point of time it will be declared so deduct right now only are you getting what i am saying so what as 20 says what as 20 says here write down preference dividend just write down point number 1 in less only dividend on cumulative preference years will be deducted but when preference years on cumulative what means what cumulative chalega na cumulative preference year will be deducted when but whether whether dividend is declared or not declared have you understood this point point number 2 it is a dividend on non cumulative preference years will be deducted only when it is declared simple please can the question will give information about the nature of preference year based on that we will do it is whether we should declare whether we should deduct or we should not deduct correct so dividend or non cumulative preference year will be deducted only when it is declared simple any doubt no doubt correct means after this deduction become what profit net profit or loss attributable to whom to equity shareholders is very simple let us some note note number 1 correct madam that profit or loss should be after what after exceptional item only for your clarification i am writing one second after exceptional item extraordinary item and what prior period item as per which years already we know all these item correct point number 2 tax expense is aggregate of what current tax
एंड वाट टेपर्ड टैक्स एस पर वाट ए एस ट्वेंटी टू कमिंग सुन मीन्स कैनेड ऑन दिस टैक्स एक्सपेंस विल बी इक्वल टू करंट टैक्स प्लस माइनस डी टी ना वेन डी टी विल प्लस वेन डी टी माइनस डिस्कशन विल बी डन वेयर ए एस ट्वेंटी टू करेक्ट ना वन डाउट विल कम सर सपोज some profit is transferred to reserve during the year you know there are some profit general reserve means some profit may be transferred to general reserve and there are some mandatory transfer required because of companies act you have done debenture redemption reserve correct you might have done crr also there are some mandatory transfer from pl to what some is some statutory reserve If we are transferring some portion of profit to reserve, so whether that should be deducted to calculate net profit? Understood now. For example, in this year we are transferring some profit from PL account to debenture redemption reserve. So should we deduct that to calculate net profit or loss attributable to equity shareholders? Have you understood this point? Because that is mandatory. So should we deduct? That transfer to calculate net profit or loss attributable to equity shareholders. What do you think? Yes or no? Yes, very good. Can you say any reserve belong to equity shareholders only? Even though it is mandatory, even though it is statutory, but that all reserve belong to our equity shareholders only. And therefore, one clarification has been given that any transfer of profit to any reserve will not be deducted. Understood? I hope you have understood this point. Get on. any transfer of profit to reserve should not be deducted when if mandatory even if mandatory transfer then to required as per act correct before i give note number 4 let us understand you have understood cumulative and non cumulative suppose this is part 10 lakh Cumulative preferences and the rate of dividend. Let us assume ten percent. Understood? This first year, second year, third year, fourth year. First year dividend not declared. Second year dividend not declared. Third year dividend not declared. Fourth year dividend declared. So the first year dividend is what one lakh, one lakh, one lakh. First year, second year, third year, fourth year. So when In this year, can you say we will pay current year dividend of rupees what one lakh, and we will also pay all areas of previous year dividend also. Means we will also pay three lakh. Understood. Now my question to you all: In our books of account, when I am preparing PL account, in our books of account, when we are preparing PL account, so tell me in the first year. How much preference dividend should be written? Is self appropriation account, na? Are you able to understand what I am saying? So, in this year, dividend was not declared. Whether it will be recorded? Hello. Are you able to understand? Are you able to understand what I am saying? One second. He. This is a cumulative preference years. One thing. Just try to understand. So, in this year, dividend is not declared. In this year, dividend is not declared. In this, dividend is not declared. My question to you all. In the in the first year, when dividend is not declared, whether it will be recorded in our books of account, whether we should record it, is whether we should pass one jana entry PL appropriation account debit to preference dividend, yes or no, yes or no, is we should write down two preference dividend, 
बोले यस और नो नो मीन्स यू हैव फॉरगेटन ए एस फोर यू हैव फॉरगेटन ए एस फोर एनी डिविडेंड विच इज डिक्लेयर्ड आफ्टर रिपोर्टिंग डेट शुड नॉट बी रिकॉग्नाइज एज लाइबिलिटी यू हैव फॉरगेटन ए एस फोर मीन्स दिस इज नॉट डिक्लेयर्ड नॉट डिक्लेयर्ड whether there is an obligation to pay there is no obligation to pay whether it is a liability it is not a liability you know provision definition provisions are what provisions are liability which can be measured by substantial degree of estimation what is the meaning of liability liability is a present obligation arising from past event Whose settlement can be done through outflow of resource, but there is no obligation only. In this, it is not declared, it is not finalized, it is not approved. There is no obligation to pay. What companies act say that if it is if it is not paid, it will be carried forward. And once you declare equity dividend, then obligation will come. So it might happen equity dividend we are not declaring. There is no compulsory to declare equity dividend even though it is a profit, na? Even though there is sufficient profit, means they will not declare. A good company will declare, but there is no ob obligation to declare. You can deny any point of time, na? Are you able to understand? So it will not be recorded. I said AS twenty is not accounting. AS twenty is not accounting. AS twenty is calculation of EPS. समझाया? So accounting we are not doing based on AS twenty. अरे बोल ना रे. So here preference dividend zero zero zero. But in this year, how much preference dividend will come? One lakh or four lakh? Now it will come four lakh. Understood? So can you see in books of account, this is coming? Now my question to you all: While calculating EPS, while calculating EPS, whether you deduct preference dividend from first year? Tell me yes or no. Understood. Both are different. Means here you will deduct. Bol na yes or no? Even though not declared. Means both are different. Accounting and calculation are different. That I want to say. Accounting you should record only when it is declared. Declared means it will be paid. Understood. But in EPS, what AS twenty says that it will deduct it. For calculation numerator, even though it is not declared, both are different. That is calculation of EPS. If in this year, how much will deduct? In this, how much will deduct? I question to you all. In fourth year, how much will deduct it? Are four lakh na? Understood my emotions? Understood my emotions? Yes, sir. Till now, this type of question they have not asked. But can you see if they ask, all will die? Means if they will say arrears of preference dividend was also declared in fourth year, so they will say one lakh of current year, three lakh of previous year, so four lakh you have declared and paid. How much we should deduct? One lakh. Till now they have not asked this type of question, but can be dangerous or not? It can be dangerous. I hope now you have understood. So can I give one 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 note? The arrears of preference dividend will not be deducted even though declared in current year. Because it is already deducted from previous EPS, na? Understood? Very important point. So this is note number. Then the clarification is not required for non-cumulative. Non-cumulative, so it will not be deducted, na? Once it is not declared, not do not deduct, do not deduct, do not deduct. In this only one lakh will be declared. Correct? So I think clarification is not required for non-cumulative. Clarification was required for cumulative only, right? Now. Any payment of arrears of preference dividend on cumulative preference years should not be deducted. For calculation of EPS, should not be deducted. Understood? 
Just write down this for your understanding. Because it might happen sometimes we are confused to be able to understand what I want to say. Then a note write down one. Only for your examination point of view. A five. If question is silent, always will assume that preference is accumulative. Correct? No. From examination point of view. If question is silent, always assume Preferences are cumulative. And if we have taken this assumption, this preference dividend will be always deducted. It means deduct, question is silent. We want to say that. Deduct if question is silent, whether declared or not declared. It becomes easy, na? Correct? But if they say non cumulative, be careful. Correct? Yeah. So let me take one question, question number one. Come to question number one. From the following information, from the following information relating to Y Limited, calculate EPS. You can see they have given profit before extraordinary and exceptional item. Means till now, this has not been adjusted. Correct now. But after depreciation, after depreciation means depreciation is already deducted. They have given depreciation, but the what will do? Nothing. This is given to confuse you only. The exam question. They have given depreciation means now they are playing with your mind. Is normally whatever student do not react with this information. You will say 75 na. Ab adat kya minus depreciation maja aa raha. Yes, yes. Even I am a student. I will also do. Have a mistake right now. This question I have done many times now. So, in class, I will not do mistake. Exam, it might have same question. This is not working, correct? So be careful. VRS payment can you say VRS payment is nothing but an exceptional item, ordinary but exceptional. I have given this example also any compensation paid to employee on retirement basis will be ordinary but exceptional. That it. Because it is before what? Exceptional item. We want after exceptional item. Then loss due to earthquake. Extraordinary item. Deducted. Deducted. Provision for tax. After tax. Deducted. Deferred tax. Means provision for tax is current tax. I don't This is nothing but current tax. So current tax plus deferred tax. Understood? Yes, sir. Whenever question is silent, now always we say deferred tax will be added. Means deferred tax can be plus, it can be minus also from current tax. Question is silent, always we say it is plus deferred tax. When it will become plus, when it will become minus, that will enter where? In AS, that, will, that we are not discussing. So, capital as at the beginning of the year, paid up equity share capital, share of rupees 10 is fully paid up. Correct. So, this is 93. 93. Correct. So this is rupees in crore. So this is rupees now. We can find out how much number of equity shares. It become what? 9.3. Then paid up 10% cumulative preference shares. Cumulative. They have given cumulative. See, deduct dividend even though not declared. Paid up 12% non cumulative preference shares. 50. The question is silent whether dividend has been declared or not declared. So for non cumulative preference shares, if question is silent, we will always assume it is not declared. Because we can't assume by our own it is declared. Correct now. This, that note also write down. Point number 6. Write down. For non cumulative preference shares, if question is silent, Always assume that preference dividend not yet declared by giving a note.
by giving a node. The node should be also given that we have taken this assumption. Correct. Now we can do it. We are doing question number one. First, write down the formula always. Basic earning partial. I will write down the formula only once. In exam always write down the formula. Net profit or loss attributable to equity shareholders. FM also now always write down the formula. I think your teacher might have said, even though you can do in calculator, then also write down formula. Because how you have calculated, you are informing them. Dekho, exam kya hota? What is the meaning of exam? Normally, we do not understand what is exam. In exam, whatever you are writing, that should be understood by the examiner because examiner don't know anything. Understood? So, if you are not writing, whether they will understand what you have taken in numerator? What is numerator? They will not understand. So, if they are not able to understand, they will read off mass. For example, simple. Normally, kya hota GP ratio? Now, you think that everyone knows this. No, no, no. You write down GP divided by sales into 100 and then write down GP is how much? Then write down sales is how much? So, you can do in calculator. Normally, students kya karte in inter level and final level, they think they are Paramatma. And they will say, no, no, no. 0 0.20 percent. Look. Numerator also known. In calculator they have done. So, batao. You think if you are chartered account, will you give marks? If you are CA, will you give marks? You will also not give marks. So don't expect any marks. Don't ever expect any marks. Even though this is correct. But zero marks. Understood? So, this exam may don't play with your life. Correct na? It is playing with our life na? What is required that you write down? So net profit divided by what? Weighted average number of equity shares outstanding. Chalega? Now in class I will not write this formula bar bar. In exam you should write down. I have already informed. Class I will not write. Chalega? So it means now we need to calculate what just leave some space right on working note number one calculation of what calculation of net profit or loss attributable to equity shareholders yes we will do this short form you can use if it is popular. Now ESH, this for this they will never deduct marks. Correct now. If you are using ESH, they will not deduct marks for that. Correct? Understood? In calculation though you can use. Now we will start with what profit before? Return profit before exceptional. An extraordinary items. How much given? Seventy five point zero zero seven rupees in pro. Then from this test, so this is not format. So you are not supposed to use the format given in SOP. Right on minus what BRS payment. PRS payment na? PRS payment how much? 30.10 then less what? Na na first loss due to earthquake how much? 2.00 then add on this is profit before tax how much profit before tax? become 42. Point. 90 then less what 42.90 na then less tax expense that on tax expense so the how much current tax current tax in the inner column 10 
and then defer tax nothing is given we'll assume it is plus only correct now it become 15.00 so this become what profit for the period profit for the period how much 27.90 then from this what will deduct less preference dividend there are two point number a uh, on cumulative preferences just write down on cumulative preferences deducted even if even if not declared understood so we will deduct it it is what 50 into 10 percent 5.00 and point number b on non cumulative preferences deducted only when declared so because nothing has been given it is not declared so zero only now you can now send someone note that we have assumed that it is not declared dividend is not declared so this become what net profit attributable to equity shareholders this become 22 point sign zero correct just write down one note it has been assumed that preference dividend is not yet no, for both is to even though not declared deducted na the assumption is not required but i will say preference dividend if nothing is given assume what not declared correct it has been assumed that that preference dividend not yet declared so they can understand that you know everything understood simple question very good Achha, so they have given rate of CDD also now CDD is not applicable at all though. now CDD is now but withdrawn. I think under income tax act you have done na? Corporate dividend tax, you know, tax on dividend. Now it has been withdrawn. Now they will not ask. This is previous year question. That time they were CDD. Ignore CDD now. Now wherever CDD is given, ignore it. Okay? So I am ignoring what CDD. Chale ka? Done. So now write down. What is net profit? Batao? So you have left some space here. Na? Right on 22.90 and what is the number of shares? 9.3 is equal to what? 2.46 done. Simple. Numerator done. Now I'll come to denominator. Understood? Now coming to denominator. Now just try to understand. My question to you all suppose this is the 1 lakh equity shares you issued at the beginning. Correct? Is you got a fund of Rupees 1 lakh, let us take rupees 1 lakh. So it means 1 lakh has been received. Now this will be used in business to generate profit. So can you say by using this 1 lakh, can you see you have generated profit from the beginning only? Bole yes or no? Means this was the funds 
available from the beginning so this was the profit earned on this from the beginning only let us assume you are earning a profit at a rate of 10% on given fund you can say it means can you see you can earn 10000 from the beginning only are you able to understand correct it means if you want to calculate eps what you will do eps 10000 is from beginning and 1 lakh is from beginning only correct understood now what happened during the year is after 6 month once again 1 lakh equity shares were issued quite possible so that these funds was available for how many months Six month, but the, on this you will earn profit for how many months? Six month only means if I say ten percent is the rate of return, so one lakh into ten percent into six by twelve, which can is the profit will be five thousand. Its total profit become how much? Fifteen thousand. My question to you all: fifteen thousand. What average profit? It is total profit. The total profit is, but it is an average profit earned during the year. If this is not an average profit earned during the year, huh? It is average profit only. Check it out. Average profit. This average profit, na? This profit was earned for how many months? This ten thousand, and this profit was earned for how many months? Six months. So average is it? Ho gaya na? Just try to understand. It is an average. Not an average. Agar bata this profit you would have earned from the beginning, it would have been ten thousand only, na? Correct. To average. We don't call it average, but it is average only. We don't. We norm. We normally don't say this is average profit, but if you apply a mathematic, it is an average only. Correct. We can say if numerator is average, so denominator should be what average only, and therefore it is weighted average. Normally we don't call profit as an average. Profit is what. Actual profit, whatever we have earned, but what I want to say, this profit was earned for how many months? And this profit was earned for how many months? Six months only, na? So you have only done average because you have done into six by twelve. I have not said you have done, na? If this profit was for six months, this profit was for twelve months, and therefore it become fifteen thousand. It's an average only. My question to you all: This was available for how many months? This was available for how many months? Will you divide by two lakh or by some other amount? Means this was available for how many months? This was available for how many months? So my question to you all: What should be the denominator? Denominator should be one lakh or one lakh fifty to two lakh. Average only because it was average. Just average. Therefore divided by weighted average. Understood. Have you understood this point? Therefore, can you see what our AS says? He, while calculating number of shares, he weight as per the number of days or number of months it has been used. So it will be one lakh into, eh, sorry, twelve by twelve, and this will be one lakh into what? Six by twelve means. Are you plus? Cut it, na. This will be what? This will be time weight. Time weight. Time weight means the weight will be given for number of days or number of months it has been used during that period. Understood? Have you understood? However, entire discussion right now, whatever we will do, till we go to diluted earning per share, it for weighted average only. Means now whatever discussion we will do will be based on weighted average. Once you understand weighted average, the chapter is very simple. Correct? Can we start discussion? We are discussing about point number B of formula. A was net profit. B is what weighted average. Point number B is what weighted average. Number of equity shares outstanding. During the period, weighted average
number of equidishes should be calculated by multiplying by multiplying with time weight factor time weight factor time weight the number of days or months for which equities are outstanding throughout that period outstanding throughout that period this should that period is only we need to take questions only to understand this correct now from examination point of view if they have given date either at the beginning of month or at the end of the month then we'll choose months for easy purpose but suppose they have given date as 15th of the month or 6th of the month or 17th of the month then always calculate what number of days i think you know how to calculate number of days so number of days in every month so you can calculate number of days let us take one question question number 2 question number 2 calculate basic earning per share date has been given you can see correct and equity shares outstanding is top shares is top shares has been given net profit is given whenever net profit is given without any adjustment we'll assume this net profit attributable to equity shares holders only correct yes so now in every question you write down the formula but not in class in exam we are doing question number so basic earning per share did you calculate basic earning per share is to numerator by denominator you can add down and so now in exam in class write down n by d in exam write down formula correct now we we'll do working note number 1 is not required how much given 2 lakh 40000 we need to calculate what write down working note number 1 weighted average number of equity shares how many equity shares outstanding from beginning yeah from what is the date 14 2001 it is what 10000 you do 10000 into what 12 by 12 when the not required 10000 then we'll plus how many shares issued issue of shares on which date on 30th september so how many shares issued 5000 so for how many month it was outstanding counting from october October always use finger sa huh? one month mistake zero mark so even though you can do i know the six month but then also you check kar lo november december january february march okay na be careful what i am saying because don't play with your life always believe me i to do one into one in calculator so once check is it is correct or not if i am reading exam 
टू वन इज वन ना बट एन तो क्रॉस चेक क्या दिक्कत है कैलकुलेटर इज गिवन टू यू ना क्रॉस चेक इज वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू से क्रॉस चेक वन इट इज बिकम हाउ मच इज टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड देन वॉट इज गिवन प्लस इशू ऑफ सीयर्स ऑन विच डेट ट्वेंटी एट फाइव हाउ मेनी मंथ तो ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड इंटू वन बाई ट्वेल्व इज इक्वल टू वन थाउजेंड टोटल नंबर ऑफ सीयर्स आउटस्टैंडिंग थर्टीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड अंडरस्टूड Very easy. We write down thirteen thousand five hundred. How much it become? Seventeen point seven seven. Done. Question number two done. Let me take question number three. Calculate weighted average number of shares. First Jan balance at the beginning one thousand eight hundred. Thirty first May issue of shares for cash and first number buyback of shares. Buyback means reduced to minus to minus three hundred. But by giving time weight, by giving time weight, can we do it? So now we are calculating only what calculation. Of weighted average number of item. Two item full. Understood. In exam, don't write this, huh? Correct. Right. Ada. What do you write down? First, the number of shares outstanding. From beginning, how much? It is one thousand into what? Twelve by twelve, one thousand eight hundred. Then plus number of shares issued. Number of shares issued on which date? Issued on thirty first May. How many number of shares? Weight will be for how many month? Pakka, ha? But the thirty first twelve we have taken, na? Ka na? Seven by twelve. How much? Three fifty. Then minus what? Number of shares bought back on which date? On first November. So it is three hundred into what? Two by twelve. How much? Fifty or fifty-five? Fifty. How much? Answer. Two thousand one hundred. Understood. I think no doubt. I think you have understood, but only for your clarification. I just want to form you some. What was the first date? First twelve. Then what is the date? Thirty first May. Then what is the date? First November. Correct. How many this month? Seven month. Oh, sorry. This how many month? Five month. This how many month? Five month only. And this is two month. Can I say in this way? Initially, one thousand shares, one thousand eight hundred shares were outstanding. First five month. Then it become two thousand four hundred, and it was outstanding for five month, and then it become two thousand one hundred. This is outstanding for how many month? You can do calculation in this way also. Same answer will come or not? Is mathematics? 
जस्ट चेक कर लो एक बार एटीन हंड्रेड इंटू फाइव बाई ट्वेल्व प्लस टू थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड इंटू फाइव बाई ट्वेल्व प्लस टू थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड इंटू टू बाई ट्वेल्व सेम आंसर इज कमिंग नॉट दिस यू कैन डू इन दिस वे ऑल्सो बट विल प्रीफर फर्स्ट वे इन क्लास इन एग्जाम यू कैन प्रीफर एनी वे इन क्लास विल प्रीफर फर्स्ट वे बोथ आर करेक्ट ना बोथ आर करेक्ट एनी वेज यू कैन डू इट इज समाइम सोल्यूशन गिवेन दिस वे तो टू के योर डाउट आई जस्ट इन्फॉर्म यू इन बोथ वेज एंसर विल कम इज मैथमेटिक्स डन एनी डाउट Now I have already said that we are into which point weighted average number of shares, and our concentration will be on weighted average number of shares, and that will depend upon the nature of equity shares. Now equity shares may be either fully paid up or partly paid up. Equity shares can be of same face value or different face value. Equity shares can be bonus shares, right shares. Are you getting? Equity shares may be issued at a time of amalgamation also. Are you getting? So can I say they can be different different issues? So can I say your weighted average number of shares will be based on that circumstances? So it might affect the calculation of weighted average number of shares depending upon the circumstances. So let us discuss each by each. Correct now. Right now, whatever we have done, it is fully paid up equity shares. This two example we have done. Question is that it will be paid up equity shares. So if it become partly paid up, then what will do? That we need to understand. Correct? You know partly paid up. You know partly paid up. Right on. Uh, issue number one. Partly paid up. Equity shares. partly paid up equity shares we will understand this with one question only let me take one question question number 5 we'll take 5 calculate basic earning per share here is given One for two thousand six equity shares or rupees ten is outstanding. If nothing is given, it is fully paid up. Is of rupees ten is fully paid up? Then you can see on thirtieth September two thousand six they have issued another equity shares of rupees ten is rupees six paid up. Then on one one two thousand seven because six was paid up. One second, how much call amount received on ten thousand shares only? On ten thousand shares. So in this case, how to calculate what? Basic earning per share numerator is given how much? Three lakh. Madam, keep some space here. Upper. I'll give a note. We are doing question number five. What is given? Check. Date is what? One four two thousand six. Correct. How many shares are outstanding? So, can you say number of shares outstanding? So, how much consideration you have received? Ten rupees. Twenty thousand into ten. Ten. That is not required. But you have received twenty thousand into ten. Yes, sir. Then on thirtieth September, how much it become? Ten thousand into six. Correct. And then on one one. It become ten thousand into what? Two, correct. One thing is clear that this twenty thousand not comparable with this ten thousand, and this ten thousand is not comparable with this ten thousand. But AS twenty says that to calculate each years, make them comparable. Is make them equivalent. So how to make them equivalent? To only say, okay. Means when you are comp, when you are calculating, means when you are giving importance, importance should be on same level, na? Means I will say if you want to compare your knowledge with my knowledge, so first become C A, and then become experience of fifteen years. 
then only your knowledge will become equal to my knowledge and then we can fight now fighting with equivalent now so you should first become equivalent to me so you can any time compete with me and you will win i always say once you become ca start challenging everyone don't under underestimate your knowledge correct now are you able to understand but chalo theek hai if you want to come at par so i will say first become ca and then get an experience of 15 years then we will start competition correct now so it is as simple because you are giving you are calculating weighted average number of years so these are right now not comparable this 20000 is not comparable with this 10000 this 10000 is not comparable with this 10000 so if you want to compare what you will do you will make it equivalent so how to make them equivalent that i am asking to you we will do weighted average but how to you want suppose you, if i will say this make this 10000 comparable with this 20000 so how to make it comparable ha fully make it fully paid up simple la make it fully paid up so how much consideration you have received into 6 divided by what 10 understood what i am saying means can i say once you have divided by 10 it become how much 5 th become 5000 na sorry sorry it become 6000 so can i say now 6000 of rupees 10 each is now convertible into what 20000 of rupees 10 because you can 6000 into 10 is nothing but how much consideration you have received 6000 only so you receive 60000 now it become comparable if you make it 6000 fully paid up equity shares so can it 10000 partly paid up equity shares of rupees 6 is equal to 6000 fully paid up equity shares of rupees 10 each you will make it what comparable by making it equivalent number of shares fully paid up equity shares understood i hope you have understood correct Yes, sir. What is our basic earning per share? Now we can do it. Basic earning per share, how much? What is the formula? Numerator by denominator. Very good. Now I am not writing. Correct. What is the net profit given? Now, for weighted average, you will do working note. But now in class, we will not prepare working note. We will do directly. In exam to working note, huh? class we are doing directly now because you become expert now in working note. We will not waste our time in giving working note. Huh? In exam, working note. Two questions I have done with working note. Huh? Don't blame me if your marks is deducted. Now, can we say in this way, Badao, how many shares outstanding at the beginning? 20,000? It is to of rupees 10 is only, weight will be given 12 by 12 plus. Then 10,000 to 6, first make it equivalent. So 10,000 into what? 6 by 10, outstanding for how many months? From 38 September. 6 months into 6 by 12. Then plus 10,000 to 2. 10,000 to 2 by 10, it become comparable. Now outstanding for how many months? 3 months, 3 by 12. Have you and Follow. Is in exam once again request you working note. So this question will be of five marks, huh? Five marks may I don't know whether they will deduct or not, but why to take risk? Why to take risk? If I am checking, I might give marks. I am not checking your paper. Who is checking your paper? Who has taken multiple attempt? Who is checking your paper? Who has taken multiple attempt? On that assumption, right solution. If they have taken multiple items, they will not allow you. Ah, pakka. This is what hierarchy. It is coming three lakh divided by what? Twenty three thousand five hundred twelve point seven six. One question you will do. Do question number six.
डूइंग क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स ना गुड क्वेश्चन रीड इट केयरफुली एंड एंड डू हा They have given one point. This is the net profit after considering what? Now this point is not applicable. This point is not applicable, na? Because it is after ignore it only. So now CDD is not applicable, na? Acha, this is dividend. Oh sorry. Sorry. My mistake. My mistake. Bye. I was thinking it is CDD. It is dividend. And do na? This is a good question. Done. What you have done? We are doing basic earning per share. But what is the profit given? It is twenty one lakh. You have taken after before dividend. It is given after only, na? So have you deducted three lakh forty? No. Very good. That can be dangerous. Divide by. But the how many equity shares outstanding from the beginning? Six lakh, but partly made up. You have done six lakh into one. Five by ten for how many months? Twelve by twelve. Ten. Then what happened on first September? The remaining five was called up and paid up shareholders, except one shareholder having six thousand shares. Means how many shares has paid entire amount? You have taken five lakh forty thousand into what? Two five by ten for how many months? Seven by twelve, na? Very good. I hope this only. For other they have not paid, so that will not be considered. So that this become twenty one lakh ninety six thousand divided by 
फोर लैख फिफ्टी सेवन थाउजेंड फोर लैख फिफ्टी सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इज इक्वल टू फोर पॉइंट एट अंडरस्ट वट फाइव बटेन वट फाइव बटेन दिस फाइव बटेन फर्स्ट यू पेड फॉर सिक्स लैक देन तो इट विल बी टेन था फाइव यू आर पेड या फाइव यू आर पेड यहां पर हाउ मच कंसिडरेशन यू हैव रिसीव फाइव रुपीस यू हैव रिसीव ना इफ दे हैव यू हैव रिसीव टेन रुपीस देन दिस मूल्ड ऑफ कन्वर्सन फॉर देन तो यू बिकम फुल्ली पेड ओनली नो 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 कैन डू इन टू वेज जस्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इफ दिस इज सिक्स लैक हाउ मच कंसिडरेशन रिसीव फाइव यहां पर इट इज फाइव लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड शेयर हाउ मच कंसिडर फाइव ओनली ना तो बोथ आर पार्टली बेटर ना क्या हियर टू कन्वर्ट डेव इन टू वॉट टेन यू विल डू डिवाइड बाई टेन यूर ऑल्सो डिवाइड बाई टेन दिस इज आउटस्टैंडिंग फॉर हाउ मनी मंथ ट्वेल्व मंथ दिस इज आउटस्टैंडिंग फॉर हाउ मनी मंथ सेवन मंथ स्टूड है टॉपिक टॉपिक वॉज पार्टली पेड अप शेयर partly paid up equity shares now partly paid up equity shares are of two type correct partly paid up equity shares are of two type now but let me ask one question whether this partly paid up equity shares are entitled to dividend means whether varko whether dividend will be declared on partly paid up shares so no you don't know anything means Dividend will be declared on partly paid up shares also. Until there is some restriction in Articles of Association, means dividend is declared on paid up equity shares. Paid up means partly paid up also. अरे बोल रहे हैं. So as per Companies Act on paid up value, until there is some restriction is given on AOA, means it might happen in AOA some restriction has been given that dividend will be declared only when it becomes fully paid up. Then they are not entitled to participate in dividend. Means partly paid up equity shares. Normally, if question is signed, what will assume they are entitled to participate in earning? If they are entitled to dividend, right on. Partly paid up equity shares, which are entitled to dividend. Means, can I say if I am saying which are entitled dividend means they can participate in earning, and therefore it should be considered for earning per share. Therefore, it should be considered for calculating basic earning per share. Correct? For calculation of basic earning per share. Correct. Partly paid up shares which are entitled to participate. in dividend will be considered bole yes or no will be considered by converting by converting them into what by converting them into equivalent number of by converting them into equivalent number of fully paid up fiduciaries bole yes no understood now my question is sir and always will assume that participants are entitled to dividend 
correct and normally question will be silent 100% question will be silent still now they have not given any question when party benefits are not entitled dividend but practically possible practically possible now you only say if suppose there are party paid up shares which are not entitled dividend whether it will be considered for basic earning per share so they are not entitled to earning only they are not entitled earning then go away you are not participating in earning now it is as simple as their preferences it is as simple as their preferences means they are not entitled to any income only remain standing outside the class if i am saying you participating class so you are coming in class na there are some student if i say you are not able to participate in class so whatever say stand outside and see whatever you want to see from outside only but don't come in class because you are not participating so can i say we'll just say what go outside is any ca foundation or what not not any ca foundation are not able to participate in class but once they become ca into they can come or not i will say First, become fully paid up. Means can I say they have become potential equity shares? This type of question has not been asked. Should I do or not? Can no say easy? Eh? Full nay yes or no? However, they will not ask. Ninety nine point nine nine percent they will not ask. Can I take one question if you allow? If you allow. Hello. So only for your basic knowledge, I am taking. Okay. Point number two. इशू नंबर टू वन टू ठीक है तो ना पार्टली पेड अप शेयर्स विच आर नॉट एंटाइटल टू Such partly paid up shares are not considered for calculation of what basic earning per share. correct however they are treated as what as potential equity shares and so why it become potential because in future they will participate once they become fully paid up so they are potential equity shares correct and therefore will be considered for calculation of and therefore will be considered for calculation of diluted earning per share correct understood so we will take one question number 4 in which we will do by taking both assumption but in exam always take first assumption because in solution if question is silent they are taking first assumption only understood let us read that question question number 4 you can see calculate weighted average number of shares And add on here net profit. Wait a little bit. So I am just giving net profit also. Okay, so that we can calculate basic and diluted. Net profit is suppose three lakh. Add on net profit is three lakh. Since they give first and thirty first equal thirty first October balance at the beginning. You can case value ten ten pay the value ten five means partly pay the equity shares. Partly pay, na? You can see in answer what they are given. Assume that partly paid up shares are entitled to participate in dividend to the extent of amount paid. Means they have taken that assumption only. If they are they are participating dividend and then they are given answer. 
in exam will also give that will take that as an only web question is silent and question will be always silent in exam are you able to understand yeah. but as per rule so there are two assumptions now they may or they may not participate correct suppose i am saying in worst circumstances they have given in the question because they are writing solution in this way sometime unka phir sakta hai they is while making question paper they can say na assume they are not participating in what dividend then then to you need to do that only na correct on that worst situation i am doing this question question number 4 case 1 if eps means what partly paid up shares correct if pps are entitled to participate in dividend understood just write down for your understanding if question is silent always assume always assume this don't write in grammar question is silent always assume case number 1 only don't do case number 2 in exam because i don't know whether they do they know that point or not correct now don't take risk so batao basic earning per se will what how much profit i have given and then weighted average number of shares it will be 1800 into 12 by 12 Plus six hundred into what? Five by ten. October means six month. Six by. Oh ho! Look, I was wrong. Look, Sunday class this event. Oh ho ho ho! Finger. Now what is number? Look. Oh ho ho. Two by. Two time mistake I have done. So if I can do mistake, you can also do mistake. Huh? Correct. That was wrong. So what I am saying, this become what three lakh divided by eighteen fifty. What is the earning per share? How much? Case two. Case two. Hold on. If EPS are not entitled to participate in dividend, are you getting what I am saying? In dividend. Will you consider partly paid up shares for calculation of basic earning per share? No. Means here basic earning per share will be what? Three lakh divided by what? Eighteen hundred only. Understood. How much? One sixty. But in future, when it become fully better, the earning per share may dilute. We'll also calculate what by considering what potential equity shares. It will be eight hundred into twelve by twelve. Sorry, eighteen hundred into twelve by twelve. That's case one. Become case one. So it is what six hundred into. Five by ten into what? Two by twelve. Have you understood? This calculation remains same, but now it has been considered for calculation EPS. This become diluted earning per share. Means in future, so earning may dilute by this amount. Correct? How much? One sixty. Point. So you can see diluted now. 
saluted have you understood have you understood this one second you are saying that this answer and this answer are same yes it will remain same you are just try to understand everyone what i want to say right now we six have our chartered accountant correct everyone think in this way think in this way okay if we are what how much how many we are what 10 members chalo 10 members 10 members of icii correct 100 clients so what is client per member 10 client per member so in future this will means in future the client remain same the profit will remain same na what will change this may become 15 so this will dilute na this will dilute so can i say just try to understand what i want to say everyone what i want to say if the profit remain same what will change number of shares will change due to conversion of potential equity shares to what ordinary equity shares that only i am saying have you understood correct no 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 i understood doubt but can you see this is what this is what partly paid up shares partly paid up shares are not entitled to dividend they will be entitled dividend only when it become fully paid up when it become fully paid up and to calculate earning per share whether equity dividend will deduct you are not able to understand. to calculate net profit in numerator whether you are deducting equity dividend no okay this profit and this profit remain same only na we deduct preference dividend but can you see this is partly paid up equity shares even though it become fully paid up we are paying them equity dividend and to calculate net profit we do not deduct equity dividend now your doubt is clear ha huh. if suppose it was preference shares we will come to convertible preference shares so when it become equity shares we are not giving dividend then some adjustment is required then some adjustment is required give me some time i'll explain i don't want to go to diluted earning per share right now i don't want to go to go to diluted earning per share so whatever your doubt na keep in your pocket for some time because abhi kya ho raha ki from basic i am coming to a diluted i don't want to go to diluted have you understood this calculation no give me some time because abhi kya hoga if i start discussing diluted na i will be fully going to some other point i don't want to go into that first let us clear basic earning per share what i want to say have you understood this point the case number 1 case number 2 you have understood is if partly paid up shares are entitled dividend basic earning per share if partly paid up shares are not entitled dividend then it will not be considered for basic earning per share because they are potential equity shares and if they are potential equity share calculate it calculate, consider it for which eps dilute earning per share i mean right now objective is this i mean one second leave this calculation of dilute earning per share i'll come into that automatically you understand i don't want to go into that right now correct okay? yes sir okay. because i have asked your permission then i have taken this question okay there was no intention to take this question but ho gaya khatam khatam and why i am doing this in the last batch last to last some batch i don't used to do this but now now the answer is they started giving when they started giving answer in this way na so i am understood the intention that they may ask some other assumption also they have given in the answer assuming that partly paid up shares are entitled dividend in some other assumption can be also asked and because of that is then in your batch i am doing because now ic is giving answer in this way kare ga na ye assuming likh diya na chalo see it now issue number 3 different class
of equilibrium different class of equilibrium is what having different phase value it is also same suppose you have what 10000 equilibrium of rupees 10 each then 20000 equilibrium of rupees 50 each and then 5000 equilibrium of rupees 100 each so whether these are comparable uh, to calculate ep yes we should make it comparable so either make them 10 10 10 or make them 50 50 50 or make them 100 100 100 which can I say make them equivalent number of same class and then only you can calculate EPS same whatever we have done for partly paid up sales same thing will be applicable but can I say because they are fully paid up they are, will be always entitled to dividend understood but concept remains same concept remains same correct yes. when entity has different class of equilibrium with the different phase value the number of equilibrium is calculated by converting all such equidicious into what equivalent number of equidicious of what same phase value very good same phase value means calculation remains same only entire calculation remains same can we take one question come to question number 7 Question 7. You can see calculate basic earning per share 14 2006 means at the beginning of the year. Of rupees 10 is outstanding this much, of rupees 50 is outstanding this much, of rupees 100 is outstanding this much. Net profit is this. Either you convert into 10 or into 50 into 100. Let us convert into 10. Correct. We are doing question number. Basic earning per share. What is the net profit? 30 lakh. Divided by what? Number of equity shares. So 20,000 of rupees 10 only. No conversion required. 12 by 12. Plus what? Then 10,000. It is of rupees what? 50. Divided by what? 10 into what? 12 by 12, I am just giving weight to inform you that it might be 6 months or so. Then it is what? How many shares? 5000 into what? 100 divided by 10 into what? 12 by 12. So can you give me 30 lakh divided by what? 1,20,000 correct now so what is EPS 25 
But guys, this 25 is the earning per share of rupees 10 each, not of rupees 50 each. Please, you should disclose earning per share for each class, na? And therefore, you should calculate what? That on basic earning per share, that on in bracket, if phase value is equal to rupees 10, then it is 25. That on basic earning per share, if phase value is equal to 50, what you will do? 25 into 50 divided by 10 is equal to what? 125? Very simple. Then basic earning per share, phase value equal to 100. 25 into 100 divided by 10 is equal to what? 250. Then, this also you have understood. Then, on next is point number four. Issue of equity shares without. Corresponding change in resource means what? Issue of equity say without corresponding change in resource means which type of equity shares we are dealing right now? Means without receiving any consideration. The resource is not changing, only equity shares issued. So it is which type of shares? Bonus shares? Bonus shares issued without receiving any consideration. Your resource remains same only. Correct. It means that is without consideration. So normally there are three types of such shares. One to you know bonus shares. Second is what? Right, so you receive consideration, na? but inadequate consideration. In this, to no consideration. In right, so you are receiving what? Some consideration. ESOP, ESOP, to, till now not issued only. ESOP is potential equitious. ESOP is okay, but it is potential equitious. Now, it is not ordinary equitious. So, it's option, I mean, option better. Option, so, na? that is an option. It will be issued in. So it will become equitious in future. So that is potential equitious. Correct? Then what? You have done in internal reconstruction. Split shares, subdivision of shares. Subdivision. Means number of shares will increase without changing paid up capital. And consolidation shares. Number of shares will decrease without changing consideration. You remember? So write on split shares. Split shares. Split shares nothing but subdivision of subdivision of shares. You remember journal entry, and then what we call it reverse split. Reverse consolidation is known as reverse split. The name is given reverse split. What is the opposite of split? Consolidate. Reverse split shares means consolidation. I mean, exam, they do not ask questions from these, they ask questions only for what bonus years in this chapter. In this chapter, huh? but we all know these three. Correct. What they want to say? Everyone just try to understand. First, before coming to this bonus years, my question to you all. Correct. I will ask one question by giving one case study. You will say which company is better. There are two different companies. Just try to understand. There are two different companies. Company A and Company B. Company A, there was equity shares 1 lakh into 10. Correct? And there was a reserve and surplus 
ऑफ रुपीज फोर लैक तो बोले टोटल फंड टोटल फंड इज वॉट फाइव लैख अच्छा इसको टेन थाउजेंड कर देखिए टेन थाउजेंड टेन थाउजेंड इंटू टेन ना ओके तो कैन इट बिकम फाइव लैख एंड लेट एज्यूम दिस कंपनी द अर्निंग परसेंटेज इज टेन परसेंट तो दे अर्निंग टेन परसेंट ऑन टोटल फंड मीन्स वट इज द टोटल फंड अवेलेबल फाइव लैख टोटल फंड मीन्स इक्विटी इज इक्वल टू एसेट माइनस लाइबिलिटी टोटल फंड इंप्लॉयड इन द बिजनेस Five lakh. It means they are using five lakh to generate profit. Let us assume they are generating how much profit? Ten percent. Means their net profit will be how much? Fifty thousand. Now we'll apply EPS as per AS twenty. So EPS will be what? Fifty thousand divided by ten thousand is equal to what? Five rupees per year. The company be. What happened? What happened? In previous year, they have converted reserve into capital. This bonus year they have declared. So bonus is nothing but what conversion of reserve into capital. It might happen now. It become fifty thousand shares of rupees ten, and reserve and surplus become what zero. But their total funds remain same or not? Without change in resource, his bonus years were issued without changing capital fund. Without changing funds, resource remains same. Let us assume their earning is also ten percent. Correct. But how much net profit? Net profit is equal to fifty thousand. Now we'll apply what AS twenty and we'll calculate EPS. EPS we calculate to fifty thousand. Now divide by what? Fifty thousand number of shares fifty thousand, so it become what one rupees per share. So the which company is better? Both are same, na? Both are same, na? Both are same. My question to you: whether EPS will be used? Whether EPS should be used? Find out the performance of the company. So what do you have done? No, no, no. Just try to understand. The investors are not see. Yeah. First thing is this: whether investor can analyze. Now, if you are saying EPS for the performance of the company, that use EPS means this EPS, this means this EPS means as per your FM, you will say this company is better. And you have done this type of question. So what happened? So I have not done AS twenty before ever. Otherwise, you have raised this doubt. Tell me, sir. You have raised this the doubt or not? Your so FM teacher is now saved. Your so FM is completed, na? What I want to say, sir, they have done as per examination point of view. Whatever they have done, they have done from exam point of view. But can you see this is a good question or not? Is a how can he use EPS for uh, for evaluating the performance of the company? It should not be used. However, I will say from my point to be return on equity is better ratio to find out performance of the company. Return on equity, you have done return on equity. This is EPS. Return on equity means total return divided by total equity. In this, this ten percent is return on equity. This ten percent, whatever I have given, this is return on equity. What was the formula for return on equity? Net profit divided by equity. So net profit is fifty divided by equity is what? This two. Equity means what? Equity shareholders fund. Are you following me? So fifty thousand divided by five lakh, ten percent. This is also ten percent. Both are same. So I will say, I will say, EPS not correct ratio. Find out the performance of the company. Better use what? Return on equity. But whatever your FM teacher has done, that is from exam point of view. Because in that question, bonus share was not there, na. But then also, even though no bonus shares, 
just try it once step suppose bonus years one not declared but can can i say it can be a possible situation if they have issued this much years is a new company suppose this new company it is issued 5 lakh shares and reserve and surplus zero but they are earning 10% only but the eps will be 1 rupees per share na then also both are same then also both are same means eps should not be taken into consideration to find out what and therefore if you know a stock market because some of you say that you know you are dealing in stock market we don't use eps we use p ratio if you know have you done in p ratio you have done to bolna the p ratio have you done in fm if you have done so i will say p ratio is better ratio to find out performance of the company in the stock market normally we use p ratio we don't use eps i will eps also given but as a ca we should not use not use correct chalo this was only for your understanding one thing is clear that one thing is clear that he whenever bonus years are done some adjustment is required or not because can is this eps and this eps we cannot disclose this is not correct either make it 1 1 or make it 5 5 bolna yes or no either make it 1 1 or make it 5 5 for disclosure purpose otherwise investor will be cheated and therefore our as 20 says that some adjustment is required for what for what bonus year understood have you understood correct so what adjustment they say now i am just giving one more question to explain the adjustment now same company same company let us take company a company a initially how many equity shares 10000 into 10 how much reserve and surplus let us take 1 lakh only 1 lakh 1 lakh total become what correct so let us assume earning ratio is 10% so it become net profit how much 20000 divided by what 10000 so what is eps 2 rupees per share this is previous year previous year so let us come to current year current year what happened what happened he initially it was 1 lakh to this year initially reserve and surplus also what 1 lakh so in the mid of the year he have issued what equity shares bonus shares in 1 is to 1 ratio 1 is to 1 ratio na so they have given bonus shares into 1 is to 1 ratio so now equity shares will increase by what 1 lakh and reserve and surplus will become zero correct na this automatically what will happen equity shares will become 2 lakh actually and reserve and surplus will become zero this to you have understood na it become zero so your resource remain same your resource remain same Are you able to understand? So bonus is issued without changes in the resource. Initially also two lakh, now also two lakh, correct. But now if you apply what that profit and let us assume, let us assume the performance in previous also remains same. Current year also remains same ten percent. So ten percent two lakh, so two lakh is outstanding throughout the period. There is no change in resource now. So this two lakh is outstanding throughout the period now. So twenty thousand will be net profit, but now yes will be ten thousand. Now as per AS twenty, ten thousand is outstanding from the beginning, and this ten thousand is issued from after six months, na. So if you apply what AS twenty, it will be twelve by twelve, and bonus is issued in the mid of the year. So you will do what six by twelve. So your EPS become what? Your EPS become what? One point, one point three three. Use calculator. Just wait. Now you only see whether these are comparable. Just try to understand. If you see your finances statement, in finances statement write down current year, previous year also. If you write down EPS one point three three. And two, what will happen in stock market? What 
but these are not comparable only performance was same only na performance was 20 20 funds also remain same some adjustment is required or not safe we are discussing as 20 are getting what i am some adjustment is required to make it comparable both should be same one thing is clear you only say what adjustment should be done you are saying ignore bonus shares but can i say if you say ignore bonus shares then what will happen this your this public sab janti hai means even the public don't know anything but public know number of shares outstanding at the end because they will say what number of shares but number of shares in balance is coming 20000 na so you know they will raise hand or not are bol na re ye public hai sab janti hai and so to, you can't take that assumption even though your feeling is good but you should do as per users na other they will they will say how it happens they will be confused they will say auditors are not good I mean, no, no, we can't change the statutory compliance. Statutory compliance is EPS, EPS only. You can't convert it to return on equity. If it was the case, then I would have not taught you this only. I have said that this is not better ratio. Better ratio is for return on equity. Correct, na? So can you convert EPS into return on equity? No, no, no. Simply, what should be done? Just try to understand AS twenty. But you can see this one lakh. Which was converted into equity share was available from the beginning, and it was not only available from the beginning; it was available from the previous year, and therefore bonus shares weight will be given twelve months, not for current year, from the beginning of previous year, and previous year EPS will be restated in current financial statement. Okay, what you said, sir. Listen, listen. What they are saying? What AS twenty says? We need to make it comparable. Comparable. So what they are saying? Just see, this one lakh bonus is whatever you have issued here is nothing but one lakh reserve and surplus, which was available from the beginning, and this was not only available from the beginning; it was available from the beginning of. Previous year, it means bonus year's weight will be given for twelve months because it was available from the beginning only. Bol na yes or no? And not only for current year, it was available from previous year, and therefore he wait twelve months and restate the EPS of previous year, assuming bonus years were issued from the beginning of previous year. Means what they are saying? They are saying don't change previous year financial statement. We cannot change previous year financial statement. But in current year we can restate, restate, restate means restate. So what they are saying this is not correct. What you do for current year? What you this is also not correct. So for current year you say twenty thousand divide by ten thousand outstanding from the beginning, and bonus is also outstanding from the beginning. It become what two rupees per share? Eh, sorry, one rupees per share. But can you write on two here? Par no. So what do you say? Previous year EPS will be also restated, assuming that bonus shares were issued at the beginning of what previous year, because reserve and surplus were available from the beginning of previous year. And give a star mark and write a note that bonus shares has been restated due to bonus shares. Bonus, sorry, EPS is restated due to bonus shares. A note give. Can I say if users will have doubt, they will come to see only, will take fees and will explain. अरे बोल ना रे, they may have doubt, but can I say that का in market झटका नहीं लगेगा. Just try to understand if you are seeing one and two, because the stock market is based on sentiments, fully sentiments, fully sentiments. I have understood because I am also dealing in the stock market. I wonder should we कभी नहीं कमा सकते in stock market we cannot earn if you are earning one lakh today next day you will lose what two lakh so totally based on what sentiment totally based on sentiment 
uh, if you are totally involved in stock market from uh, from what morning to night then only you can earn but you don't have time na will teach or will be in the market it is totally based on sentiments one news came so aisa dekh yeah yeah i was expecting it please now we are waiting 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 recover just try to understand once years i have purchased many years ago at rupees 145 at rupees 145 suddenly something happened it become 42 i waited for 3 years it was not increasing not increasing now it become 100 once understood now so you don't know what will happen you don't know what will happen it is totally based on sentiments means prime minister will go to america are bhai he is going to america why you are dancing why you are dancing the stock market started dancing yahan par and if america mein america mein america there is a terrorist attack are bhai there is a terrorist attack why you are dancing correct na it is totally to so stock market is totally based on sentiment so can i say we are here to stop the movement in sentiments one one so it will not be affected na ha one one to okay one one they will have a doubt because you have given star mark so doubt will be resolved by saturday content are bolna re or they will ask question in agm let them ask question in agm will answer it because auditor will be also there ki why we have done this will try to convince them na are you able to understand but sentiments will not increase or decrease understood and there for such adjustment was have you understood this point so can i conclude from examination point of view however this much discussion was not required from examination point of view why it was not required because i would have said only one sentence one is with for 12 months and previous year ups were stated done but maza nahi aata मजा नहीं आता बोलो या सुनो ना वट इज योर जॉब जस्ट आस्क दिस क्वेश्चन टू योर फ्रेंड और सीनियर की वाई वी हैव टेकन ट्वेल्व मंथ फॉर बोनस इयर लेट सी वट एंसर दे आर गिव टू योर सीनियर यू कैन आस्क ए फाइनल स्टूडेंट सो इफ दे आर नॉट माई स्टूडेंट देव सी वॉन्ग एंसर लेट सी वट दे आर सेंग लेट सी करेक्ट ना टू यू लास्क द सेम क्वेश्चन टू योर सीनियर वट यू लास्क की बोनस इयर वाई द वेट हैज बीन गिवन फॉर ट्वेल्व मंथ and why previous year eps is restated let's see what answer they are getting but have you understood the reason so can i give a note what is the topic issue number 4 let us whenever point break ha huh? after this okay whenever equity shares are issued without consideration weighted average number of equities is calculated as if such shares have been issued at the beginning of very good at the beginning of previous year correct and previous year eps will be in which financial statement ah uh, series that is not in current year financial statement tamak for practical purpose i have said correct yeah. here let me take one question 
एग्जाम्पल नंबर क्वेश्चन नंबर एट कैलकुलेट अर्निंग पर सेम क्वेश्चन है बिना मेनी टाइम इज नॉर्मली आई हैव सीन फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर दे आर थ्री क्वेश्चन दिस इज वन क्वेश्चन सेकंड इज राइट सेल्स थर्ड इज ई शॉप थ्री क्वेश्चन आर वेरी पॉपुलर करेक्ट ना दे कैन आज अदर क्वेश्चन सो बट दिस थ्री क्वेश्चन आर वेरी पॉपुलर फ्रॉम एग्जामिनेशन थ्री क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट इज बोनस इयर सेकेंड इज राइट सेयर थर्ड इज वॉट ई शॉप ई शॉप विल बी डायल्यूटेड अर्निंग पर सेयर तो नंबर ऑफ विकेट शेयर्स आउटस्टैंडिंग एज ऑफ फर्स्ट जैन 2001 इज 20000 ऑन फर्स्ट अक्टूबर 2002 मींस नेक्स्ट ईयर बिकॉज़ दिस इज जैन 1 2001 अ बोनस ऑफ वन इक्विटी शेयर्स फॉर टू इक्विटी शेयर्स आउटस्टैंडिंग वाज गिवन मींस फॉर टू इक्विटी शेयर्स वन शेयर्स वे इशूड इज हाउ मेनी बोनस शेयर्स इशूड 10000 10000 ना नेट प्रॉफिट ऑफ प्रीवियस ईयर गिवन हाउ मच नेट प्रॉफिट ऑफ करंट ईयर इज गिवन हाउ मच When the net of profit of previous year given, it means they have given restate EPS of our previous year. First, we'll do previous year. Right on. Year 2001. But I will calculate basic earning per year. You can see we are into right now year 2001 means we are calculating actual EPS, not restated. Not restated. This statement will be done in next financial year, correct? So it means we are calculating for current year only. But what was the profit? And how many shares were outstanding? Divided by twenty thousand. What is the previous year EPS actually? Then, then we come to which year? Two thousand two. First, we'll calculate current year only. Basic EPS current year. So what is the profit now? So how many shares were outstanding from the beginning? No, no, twenty thousand into what? Twelve by twelve plus how many bonus shares? Weight will be given how much? Twelve by twelve only, na? In this concept, we have understood this point. That for bonus shares, weight will be from the beginning. Correct. So this become what thirty thousand. What is the EPS? Twenty rupees per share. But whether these are comparable? These are not comparable. Therefore, what is required? We'll do re. We'll calculate restated basic earning per share of which year? Previous year. Profit remains same. Profit remains same, na? But now it will be twenty thousand plus what? Ten thousand. And it become what? Thirty thousand. Five lakh divided by thirty thousand. Sixteen point six seven. Now it is comparable. Now it is comparable. And five must question. What mistake you will do? Nothing. Nothing, na? Very simple. One more question will take before break. After break. Before you will take. You'll do. Read question carefully. Yeah. Please apply the concept of bonus year chapter. This question I have created, and I create to some masala will be there. Correct na? You'll do. I will do. First, you try question number nine. Nine. I have created this question. Draw timeline. I will suggest draw timeline. For this question, draw timeline.
Dan is only doubt. That is only doubt. Whether partly paid FCS are entitled to bonus years? No. Doubt over? Correct. Partly paid FCS are not entitled to? Now it becomes easy. Then, hello. First calculate for previous year, then calculate for current year. Hello. Done? Current year done? Current year is what? Which date? Which year? 0506? Ah, the previous year 0506? So basic earning per year, current year, but for this 56. It is 10 lakh divided by 20,000 into 10 by 10 12 by 12 na then plus 5000 into 8 by 10 5 by 12 so 10 lakh divided by 21667 is equal to what 
46.15 you doubt over i am to show you doubt you doubt over it is not required to convert if you are adding 10 by 10 also your answer remain same but there is no need to convert 20000 so you are not supposed to. you can add to 10 by 10 chalega you are also correct 0607 first we will do current year basic earning per year current year for the how much 7 lakh divided by huh? no, no, first 1 by 1 because for this you will prepare working note huh? in class we are doing in this way you have to prepare working note 1 by 1 so just give 1 by 1 don't say total correct first 20,000 20,000 outstanding for 10 plus 5,000 into outstanding for 12 by month 12 month na? plus bonus years 1 is to 1 na? so partly paid up years are not entitled to bonus years so only these 20,000 will get bonus years so into what 12 by 12 very good so 11 lakh divided by as a call here so is call also very good Chalo. so it become plus what 5000 into 2 by 10 into 3 by 3 by 12 it become 11 lakh divided by 44000 250 is equal to 24.86 Then restated earning per year of which year? Previous year. So what was the profit? Profit remains same. So you will give only bonus effect. So can you say first we will take this only? 1667. Then we will increase it by what? 21667 plus 20,000 is equal to what? 23.99. Very good. Is 24. Better write on 24. Chalega. Easy. You have done by your own. Means you have understood. Correct. We'll take break. Break after break. For basic, only one point is left. That is right shares. Then we'll come to diluted and we'll try to complete this chapter. Okay. So we'll take break. Can we start once again everyone? Yes. Now. So before break we have discussed bonus years. I hope you have understood. Now come to one more concept about right shares. What is the difference between bonus years and right shares? The bonus shares is without consideration and right shares is with consideration but inadequate consideration. Inadequate consideration. Right on. Point number five na right on. issue of equity shares issue of equity shares at inadequate consideration inadequate consideration okay, so I think there is only one Shares which are issued at inadequate consideration that is what right shares that is right shares so only one example we have right shares everyone now what what AS20 says that so it has issued at inadequate consideration there are two components of right shares one is there are some component which has been issued at fair value and there are some component which has been issued without consideration Please let me explain you this point with one very basic example 
Suppose you went to the market, purchase hundred chocolates, correct? And suppose the price is hundred rupees per chocolate. It means it become ten. How much? Ten thousand. Suppose you purchase hundred chocolate together, you you demand some discount. They will give some discount for bulk purchase, and they have given suppose discount of rupees two thousand. Let us assume. Correct. It means eight thousand. It means eighty. It means hundred chocolate has been purchased. Has been purchased at less than what market price? Less than market price. It is as simple as we can say hundred shares has been issued at eighty. Even though market price is what hundred, we can say in this. Way. It is the same information. The information I can give in this way also. Same information that you went to purchase eighty chocolates. You went to purchase eighty chocolates of rupees hundred only. At rupees hundred, and you pay eight thousand. Correct. But because you purchase eighty chocolates, some offer was given. If you purchase eighty chocolate, twenty chocolate will be free. Twenty chocolate will free means you purchase hundred chocolates at rupees what eight thousand only, and it become what eighty once again. Correct. So can I say I can say out of this hundred chocolate there are two component. Eighty chocolate has been purchased at market price, and twenty chocolate has been purchased without consideration. It means can I say this hundred chocolate has two component. Same thing. What AS twenty one to say that whenever any CSI is issued at inadequate consideration, there are two components. There are some number of shares which are which has been issued at market price, and there are some number of shares which are issued at no 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 consideration zero consideration. So can I say wait for this component will be given from the date of right issue, as we have done for any other shares. Correct now, but wait for this component which has been. Without consideration, this bonus element weight will be given from the beginning of previous year, and previous year years, previous year years will be restated. Means whenever right year split into two part, number of years which has been issued at fair value, number of years which has been issued at without consideration. Correct. Now how to calculate that? That we need to understand. Means can I say in this way? Just try to understand. If suppose this information has been given in the question, the hundred shares has been issued at rupees eighty, correct? The market price has been given, so we can calculate. So we'll do in this way: hundred into eighty divided by hundred. How much? So can I say eighty? We can calculate. So this number of shares has been issued at fair value, and balance twenty shares has been issued at what? Still value. So we can calculate this or not? We can calculate this, correct? So can it's a formula become formula is what number of right shares issued multiplied by right issue price divided by what fair value of shares current fair value of shares this become formula, correct? So this fair value in this chapter is known as critical theoretical. X right fair value of shares. X right, don't write. Listen. Theoretical X right fair value of shares. Theoretical X right fair value of shares. Now I hope you have understood this fair value. Now you must ask me. You may ask me one doubt. So why it is theoretical X right? Just try to understand. X right means what? After right. Come right means what? Before right. I think you have done the concept of X right, come right in which chapter? In investment chapter, come bonus X bonus, come right X right. So investment chapter may you have done. So come right means what? Before right. X right means after right. So if you want to calculate the correct market price, this will be always X right. X right gives the correct fair value because that is excluding right. Excluding right. Come right means including right. Are you getting? Suppose the fees is ten thousand, excluding right. I am excluding right. 
So right now the fees, whatever you have paid, you don't have any right in the class. You don't have any right in the class now. The fees is ten thousand. But suppose if I give one right to you, so I will demand higher fees. Because suppose you say, sir, give me a right to cancel the class. Okay, I say pay twenty thousand. I will teach you as per your requirement. अरे बोल ना तो I will demand higher price ना तो I will say twenty thousand is X right twenty thousand become what come right what is the fair value of this piece ten thousand बोल ना तो fair value of this class piece is only ten thousand that is always excluding right तो क्या नहीं सिर्फ the fair value of shares if you want to calculate fair value of shares that will be that should be always X right so this become X right now you have understood why you want X right theoretical means what This is not as per stock market. We'll calculate theoretically. Theoretically means it will not be market price. It will be intrinsic value. Oh, अच्छा ये बात. Intrinsic value. Remember, we have done in amalgamation chapter intrinsic value of shares. What was the formula of calculating intrinsic value of shares? What is the formula to calculate intrinsic value of shares? Net asset at fair value divided by number of equity shares. Then this is value calculated from books. This is not stock market price, and therefore we call it theoretical. This it is calculated theoretically. This is not market price in the market. This is theoretically calculated. Why? Because this market price depends upon many sentiments. Sentiments will affect market price. So that not no that that may not be fair enough. Right now terrorist attack, market crash. But that is not the exact fair value of the shares. So can you see intrinsic value? Ignore external factor. Intrinsic value only consider internal factor. So if you want to calculate the fair value of shares, that should be based on intrinsic value, and therefore they have given importance to what intrinsic value of shares. Understood. So this fair value of shares will be known as what theoretical X right fair value. of shares so how to calculate theoretical x right fair value of shares that we need to understand if you understood that means you can calculate this if you can apply this formula you can do this and once you have calculated this can i say this weight will be given forward from the date of right issue and for this the weight will be given from the beginning of previous year understood have you understood correct right now point number 8 Right shares are issued at a price lower than lower than its fair value. Correct, and therefore. Right shares have two elements. For the purpose of what? For the purpose of shares calculation. It right now whatever we are doing, we are doing for which purpose? Not for accounting. Accounting may we don't divide into two parts. Ah? Accounting to be have done right shares accounting bank account debit to it capital to it but only that much means when we have done accounting we have not split into two parts na only for EPS calculation we are dividing into two parts first is known as what paid element point number one is known as what paid element paid element means what number of shares Team to be issued at. Team to be issued at what? Hello. Fair value. Team to be issued at fair value. This will be calculated by using this formula. Number of right shares. Correct. Multiplied by what? Right issue price divided by what? Very good. X. Adam periodical. 
x right x right share value of shares so how to calculate this theoretical x right share value of share that we need to understand but we know this is nothing but intrinsic value but we need to apply the formula given by as20 yeah. correct point number 2 is bonus element bonus element that is number of shares team to be issued team na team to be issued without consideration is this will be equal to what number of right shares minus paid element minus paid element understood correct this you understood point number b right down theoretical x right fair value of shares will be calculated as under for you understanding can i say it is nothing but intrinsic value of shares exam don't write intrinsic value of shares what do you write down theoretical x right fair value of shares for only your comfort i am writing what intrinsic value because you know intrinsic value correct so right it is nothing but intrinsic value of shares now what is the formula for intrinsic value means we want net asset after write or before write no no x write means what x write means after write before write up come write means before write x write means after write as excluding write write will be given then it become excluding right so first write is given it become come right once write is exercise it become excluding right you just try to understand suppose this is the date of announcement of write and write write shares will be given on this date so during this market become this time it become come right and once the write shares are allotted on this date it become what x right correct now is now if you purchase any shares it will excluding right now but if you purchase any shares from the market during the it will including right including right so can you say come right means before right x right means after right i don't want to go into this much discussion correct now because if i'll go right now it will take half an hour to explain this however just write down you are confused x right means what after right write down this much you are confused you getting what i am saying after right it means you want net asset of company after right or before right you want net asset because you are calculating intrinsic value formula is what net asset divided by number of shares you want net asset before right or after right and you want number of shares before right after right after right so what formula they have given they have given first calculate what pre first calculate pre t means what before na pre write fair value of shares pre write fair value of shares 
तो कहीं से इट बिकम इक्विटी बिफोर राइट मीन्स इक्विटी प्री राइट मीन्स वाट बिफोर राइट तो कहीं से इट बिकम इक्विटी बिफोर राइट इक्विटी इज नथिंग बट एसिड माइनस लाइबिलिटी इट बिकम नेट एसिड बिफोर राइट तो कहीं से आफ्टर राइट मीन्स वाट ओनली यू विल इंक्रीज बाय द प्रोसीड्स रिसीव फॉर अलॉटमेंट ऑफ राइट शेयर्स तो कैश विल इंक्रीज वेन यू हैव डन राइट शेयर्स बट जो राइट कैश अकाउंट डेबिट विट इज कैपिटल Means this will be increased by what proceeds from right shares. So if we add proceeds from right shares, so it become what net asset after right. So let us know. Have you know what formula they have given? Means in exam you need to use this formula only. So they will provide the information in this way. So this become pre pre right pair value of shares. Means for your understanding, can you say it become net asset before right? Want to write down? Write down. This is nothing but net asset before right. Correct. And can you say what is journal entry for issue of right? Bank account debit we could say capital. So your net asset will increase by what? Proceeds from right shares. So now it become net asset after right divided by number of shares. Number of shares what after right or before right? After right, this become what x right pair value of shares. A theoretical, theoretical. We have not taken from market. We have calculated it theoretically, and therefore the name become theoretical x right pair value of shares. So in exam you need to use this word theoretical x right pair value of shares, and you need to write down this formula only. Understood? Then point number C, write down. I hope you understood the formula. Weighted average number of equity shares will be calculated by giving, yeah, by considering. Paid element from which date? From the date of right issue. Correct. And bonus element from which date? Very good. From the beginning of previous year, previous year EPS will be restated. Then one question will do. They will do it. Previous year EPS will be restated. Let me take one question. Come to question number ten. Calculate earning per share for current year and previous year. Net profit of previous year ten lakh. Net profit of seven. Not ten. Question number ten. Calculate earning per share. Net profit of previous year five lakh. Net profit of current year seven lakh fifty thousand. Number of equity shares outstanding at the beginning of previous year two lakh, correct? Then on 30th September 2006 current year issue right shares one new shares for each four share outstanding means how many right shares? 50,000 right shares. 50,000 na? Two lakh into one by four it become 50,000. Right issue price, fair value of one equity share immediately. Prior to exercise of right on 30th September study means this is pre right pay value of shares. And so why they have given pre right pay value of shares? But we want x right. So can you consider this? No. We do convert pre right into what x right. Have you understood? Let's do it. 
first we'll calculate what first write down this first calculate theoretical x right favor theoretical x right fair value of shares okay write down the formula by your own write down the formula formula is what pre write fair value of shares plus proceeds from write shares divided by number of shares after write What is the total number of shares before write? Formula written. Write down formula first. Then, so two lakh into what pre-write fair value of shares? How much? Thirty. So this become pre-write total fair value of shares plus what proceeds from Right issue. How many number of right shares? What is the right issue price? Twenty-three divided by number of shares after it become two lakh fifty thousand. Understood the formula? How much? How much? Twenty-eight point. Six zero. Correct. Now, point number B. Now we'll calculate paid element and bonus element. Right shares will be. Divided into two elements for which purpose? For EPS calculation, number of shares deemed to be issued at fair value. Number of shares deemed to be issued at fair value. Right, say how much fifty thousand multiplied by. Twenty-three, na? Divided by what? Twenty-eight point six. So here, fair value means x right fair value. So that is what correct fair value, excluding right. So this become how much? Forty thousand to ten. Become forty thousand two hundred ten. Point number B. Number of shares deemed to be issued without consideration. Will be fifty thousand minus forty thousand two hundred ten is equal to nine thousand seven. Very easy. Now we'll do calculation of what. 
point number C. Do it. Let's do for current year. As we have done for bonus years, na? Let's first do for previous year. As we have done for bonus. What is first is 0, 05 the 6. Basic earning per year. How much? 5 lakh divided by lakh is equal to 2.5 then 0607 AC earning per year first for current year what is the earning 7,50,000 divided by this 2 lakh is outstanding from the beginning and without Right shares divided in two part. What is paid element? Forty thousand two hundred ten. From which date? So what is the date they have given? Check karing. Thirty September. It is thirty first March. How many month? Six by twelve. And bonus element nine seven nine zero. This twelve month. Very good. Huh. 7,50,000 divided by what? Two lakh. What is the answer? Three point two six. Then we'll do restated. Yes. For previous year, profit remain five lakh. Two lakh increase by what? Only bonus element. What is the answer? Two point. Point three eight, and now this become comparable. This is comparable now. Understood. Simple. Understood. This was point number 5 done now. One question you will do by your own for practice. Question number 11 do fast. Do fast. For practice. Same question. Formations are different.
Kan? What is the theoretical x right fear value of shares? Fear value, how much you calculated? Hello? What is the total number of shares? Before write 12 lakh multiplied by 28 plus how many 4 lakh multiplied by 22 divided by 16 lakh how much it is coming 26.5 then we will divide 4 lakh into 2 element so how much paid element we'll say 4 lakh into 22 divided by 26.5 is equal to 3 lakh 32,075 so how much bonus element 67,925 now I'm doing only for current year 2010 2011 so the current year basic earning per year how much 40 lakh divided by 12 back into 12 by 12 plus 3 lakh 32,075 for how many months 9 by into 9 by 12 na? plus 6 7 12 by 12 but answer you are getting 2.636 then previous year it will be restated restated so it will be 25 lakh divided by 12 lakh 67,925 how much 1.972 understood calculation write down properly exam and I think you have written properly only then So all points considered for basic earning per share. Now we will come to what? Diluted earning per share. Done this much, everyone. A mistake you have done? So slow. Why is so slow? So that's an increase of speed, huh? Otherwise, it's effect in exam. Increase on and writing fine writing you are you can't get any extra marks. Okay. So then increase the speed. And writing affected marks will not be deducted. Any student fail because of speed also. They are not able to complete the question paper. Worst part in exam hall, if you know something you can't write, that is the worst part. They never leave any question because of time management. Time management is also very key factor for passing the exam and that actually we don't understand we don't practice by writing and therefore we say practice by writing also correct this should practice record i hope you are doing practice but speed increase curve that's all. so what happened actually what happened your mind your hands work together so mind is what at 2x speed so your hands will be also 2x speed Mind is 2x, but if this is 1x, so match ni hota hai na? And then what happens? Your mind is running, but you are not able to write. Understood? Both should be what? Same. Speed. 
Now coming to diluted running pulse here. I hope you have understood diluted running pulse here. Means due to conversion of potential equity shares into equity shares in future, the earning percent may dilute and therefore diluted earning percent need to be disclosed. This to you have understood. Due to conversion of potential equity shares into what ordinary sorry, ordinary equity share, the earning may dilute and therefore diluted earning per share must be disclosed. So what are potential equity shares? Potential equity shares are financial instrument on any contract. which may entitle equity shares to its holder to its holder which may which may what which may means what either compulsory or it may be what may not be may right now we don't know is there some contingency right now? So which may entitle equity shares to its holder. So examples of such financial instrument are what? Convertible debentures, convertible preferences. Correct now. Preferences and ESOP. From examination point of view, these three you know they will ask question based on this. But there are many other potential equity shares that will be discussed in your final level. So they will ask either debentures or ESOP or till now they have not asked any question of preferences, but they may ask also convertible preference. Popular is what this and this and normally they concentrate on ESOP but debenture also they may ask potential equity share you have understood okay due to conversion of potential equity shares into equity shares Earning per share decreases than such potential equity shares are what diluted. Yes, it means such potential equity shares are diluted and therefore will be considered for what will be considered for calculation of diluted earning per share have you understood this point however If due to conversion of potential equity shares into what? Equity shares. Earning per share increases. That it is possible. Possible, possible. I will explain how. I'll explain how, but possible. Earning per se increases, then such potential equity shares are what? 
आर वाट एंटी डायल्यूटिव एंड देर फोर वाट विल नॉट बी कंसिडर्ड फॉर कैलकुलेशन ऑफ वाट फॉर कैलकुलेशन ऑफ डायल्यूटेड रनिंग प्रोसीजर पहला तो यू हैव अंडरस्टूड बिकॉज डायल्यूटेड रनिंग प्रोसीजर कैन नॉट बी मोर देन बेसिक रनिंग प्रोसीजर अंडरस्टूड तो इफ ड्यू टू कन्वर्सन अर्निंग प्रोसीजर इंक्रीजेस इट इज एंटी डायल्यूटिव तो एंटी डायल्यूटिव पोटेंशियल इक्विटी विल नॉट बी कंसिडर फॉर कैलकुलेशन ऑफ डायल्यूटेड रनिंग प्रोसीजर पॉइंट नंबर सी इट इज ए डायल्यूटेड अर्निंग प्रोसीजर फॉर्मूला विल बी वाट एडजस्टेड नेट प्रॉफिट एट्रीब्यूटेबल टू इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स ड्यू टू कन्वर्सन ऑफ पोटेंशियल इक्विटी शेयर टू इक्विटी and adjusted what adjusted weighted average number of equity shares outstanding due to conversion it means can i say the net profit as per basic will be adjusted and weighted average as per basic will be adjusted Q to what? Q to conversion of potential equity shares. Are you getting what I am saying? Into what? Equity shares means if suppose convertible debenture. Right now you are paying interest. Before conversion, so interest expenses is already deducted to calculate numerator for basic. Understood once. Concentrate. Then write down. Have written. All have written. Increase your speed, ah. Huh? Increase your speed. You also increase your speed. Why? Because effect. One second. What I am saying. Formula. So I hope you have understood. Only what is added? Adjusted, adjusted due to conversion of potential equity share into equity shares. Please first calculate net profit as per basic. Then to adjustment. So can you say if suppose there is a convertible debenture, so before conversion they were allowed interest. Interest in expenses to to calculate net profit attributable to equity shareholders. That interest expense is deducted. Correct. But due to conversion of convertible debenture into equity shares, so in future it become equity shares. So they are not entitled to interest expense with net profit. Whatever now we are calculating after conversion from that interest expenses should not be. Deducted. It means some adjustment is required. Which can is a profit is also affected due to conversion, and number of shares will be also affected due to conversion, and therefore adjustment is required in both. So it might happen income increases more than what increase in what number of shares. So it might happen earning per se increases due to conversion of what potential equity shares into equity shares. The potential equity share may be anti dilutive also. It might happen. We'll take one question. Don't understand. But have you understood this parallel now? This both cases may arise. Ha! Huh. If only number of shares will increase, then it will be always diluted. But can you say due to conversion, it might happen the previously holders were entitled to some income. Now due to conversion, they are not because they become equity shareholders. So that should be adjusted or not? Understood? Have you understood? We'll take some question. All doubts will be over. We'll take three. I will take two questions first. First, come to question number thirteen. 
फेवरेट क्वेश्चन फेवरेट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन थर्टीन मोहन लिमिटेड एड इक्विटी कैपिटल ऑफ फोर्टी लैक कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ फुल्ली पेड इक्विटी शेयर और क्रिस्टियानी द नेट प्रॉफिट ऑफ द इयर इज सिक्सटी लैक इट ऑल्सो इज थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड टेन परसेंट कन्वर्टेबल डिवेंचर ऑफ रुपीज फिफ्टी These debentures is converted into five equity shares. The tax rate applicable is thirty percent calculated diluted earnings per share. My question to you all: When they have given sixty lakh net profit, this is after interest expense or before interest expense? After interest expense means for basic, so they have given net profit. Thank you very much. Only adjustment is required for what? Diluted earnings per share. Write down basic earnings per share. Basic earnings per share. How much? Lakh is the net profit divided by number of shares. How much given? Forty lakh divided by ten. Four lakh, na? Is equal to what? Fifteen. This become basic earning per share. Now we will calculate what? Diluted earning per share. So first take numerator. And denominator as per what? Basic only. First take numerator and denominator as per basics. Okay. Now this two point is done. Then we'll do some adjustment due to what? Conversion of potential equity share into equity shares. So due to conversion of potential equity share into equity shares, now these debenture holders are not entitled to interest expense. So add interest expense, add interest expense to add it. So now, what was the face value of debentures? Thirty-six thousand into fifty. Thirty-six thousand into fifty. What is the rate of interest? Ten percent. Understood. So this is increase in what interest expense? Correct. Uh, calculation you can do. Don't calculate right now. Understand first. Calculator you have. I am not interested in calculation. Calculation you can do now. This thirty six thousand you understood. Fifty you understood. Ten percent you understood. That is the ob objective. Calculation you can do it. Now due to conversion, number of shares will also increase. Is the venture holders are entitled to how many equity shares? This will be thirty-six thousand into what? Five. Up to this, to no doubt. But one concept. Uh, if you have done FM, you know. See, this is net profit. This is net profit after tax. The profit after tax. When you add interest expense, interest expense have some tax benefit. I think FM this concept has been done. But in every question, FM we yehi karte. And the detailed discussion has been done because FM is completed, so my explanation is not required. So you are habituated of that. So whenever you add some expense to net profit after tax, there should be net of tax because of some tax benefit in expense. Expense are good or bad? Good because in expense we get some tax benefit. Your expense will increase, your tax will decrease. Hello, yes or no? So always expense are good. And losses are very good. The losses can be set off. Losses can be set off or not. Whenever you incur loss, you should be happy because you are getting some in what future. So you should not be worried about loss. Understood? Whenever something bad happens in your life, don't worry. Hamesa say, "Jo hota hai, achhe ke liye hota hai." This is hundred percent true. Because whatever has been happening in your life, that is designed by the God, and God will never think bad about you. Whatever has been happened, it happened for something good. So just have confidence on you. Have what? Some hope on that. Yes, this has happened with some good result in future. You think about that in that way. Always something better is going to come in you. Correct. So guys, into what net of tax? So you do one minus t, one minus t. So one minus t means how much rate? 
सेवेंटी परसेंट कैन बी राइट ऑन डायरेक्टली सेवेंटी परसेंट कैन बी राइट ऑन डायरेक्टली तो सेवेंटी परसेंट पॉइंट सेवन जीरो राइट ऑन सेवेंटी परसेंट होता सेम है तो दिस बिकम एडजस्टमेंट ड्यू टू कन्वर्सन ऑफ कन्वर्टेबल डिवेंचर इन टू वार्ड इक्विशियस करेक्ट बताओ सिक्सटी लैक बिकम हाउ मच ना दिस इज हाउ मच बोलो सिक्सटी वन लैख ट्वेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड डिवाइडेड बाई फाइव लैख एटी थाउजेंड ओके सर टोटल बिकम हाउ मच टेन पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स and because due to conversion 15 become 10.56 so this convertible debenture is what dilutive or anti dilutive so dilutive so this become your answer this is diluted earning per share have you understood one more question come to question number 40 calculate the earning per share net profit for the year is much karo 1 karo correct number of equity shares outstanding is what 50 lakh number of 12% convertible debenture of rupees 100 is outstanding as on 1st jan 2001 means from the beginning it is outstanding 1 lakh this debenture is convertible into 10 equity shares tax rate 30% can you do fast do it हाँ तो फ्यूचर इट विल बी कन्वर्टेड दिस इज नॉट एट ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट इन फ्यूचर इट विल बी कन्वर्टेड ना ऑलवेज कन्वर्जन विल डन इन फ्यूचर ओनली तो दिस डेट इग्नोर डोंट गिव इंपॉर्टेंस दिस डेट ऑल पोटेंशियल इक्विटी शेयर्स विल बिकम इक्विटी शेयर इन फ्यूचर ओनली करंट ईयर तो डन ना तो पोटेंशियल इक्विटी शेयर विल बी कन्वर्ट इन फ्यूचर यू आर पोटेंशियल सी और नॉट तो यू विल बिकम सी इन फ्यूचर टूडे फ्यूचर तो ऑलवेज फ्यूचर So don't give any importance this date. Do it. Okay. Can you prepare one working note for this? Better I will give one working note. Okay. Better I will give you in the way how to write in exam. So I am only doing. I think you can do it by your own. We are doing question number. So first write down basic earning per share. and then write down the formula and then i don't diluted earning per share then formula then write down working note number 1 so they have given what they have given net profit and number of equity shares for basic that to they have given this to you can calculate directly because it is given in the question you will do 1 crore Divided by fifty lakh or five lakh. Fifty lakh. So it become two. But after adding formula, correct. Now working note number one. You want adjusted. You want adjusted. That profit. attributable correct na to whom to equity shareholders for diluted earning per share so as per basic how much वन करो देन विल एड इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंस नेट ऑफ टैक्स नेट ऑफ टैक्स ना इट इज हाउ मच इट इज वन लैक इन टू 
हंड्रेड वन लैक इंटू हंड्रेड इंटू वाट ट्वेल्व परसेंट इंटू वाट कैन से ट्वेल्व बाय ट्वेल्व ऑलवेज थिंक अबाउट डेट ऑल्सो बिकॉज इट इज आउटस्टैंडिंग फ्रॉम बिगिनिंग इट माइट हैपन सम डिमेंशन हैज बीन इशू ड्यूरिंग द ईयर तो बी केयरफुल वेन एवर क्वेश्चन इज साइलेंट एज इट वॉज साइलेंट इज लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑलवेज एज्यूम फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग But can you say if date is given, it might happen it was issued at the mid of the year. Correct, na? Hello. Into twelve by twelve. Into what? Seventy percent. How much? How much? Eight lakh forty thousand. So this become what? One crore eight lakh forty thousand. यूल डू वर्किंग नोट नंबर टू एडजस्टेड वेटेड एवरेज नंबर ऑफ इक्रीशियस आउटस्टैंडिंग एज पर बेसिक हाउ मच फिफ्टी लैक Plus what? Number of equity shares to be issued, to be issued, na? On conversion, is it one lakh? One lakh into ten. And because it was outstanding from the beginning, the weight will be from the beginning only. Understood. So this is also very important. Student, do mistake. I will give you right now one question. Yeah, where you can do this twelve by twelve for potential equity share. So you should keep in your mind. Okay. Normally, student do mistake here. But this was easy question. So twelve by twelve, even though you ignore your answer, remains same. Correct, na? But what I want to say, have you understood my emotions? Yes. Will not get what. Motions. Example. Now done. Correct. So now it become one crore eight lakh divided by what? Sixty lakh is equal to what? One point eight. Now suppose in exam you don't have time. Then you do in this formula plus plus करके. Suppose in exam you don't have time. So time management is also very important. Correct ना? ना लिखोगे. Will take some time ना. I will say better save time. Do one more question of five marks. That is also important. When to write? How to write? How much to write? That is also very important. Are we doing? So that planning is required in exam hall. You can't prepare that thing right now. See how to write, how much to write. That decisions will be taken in exam hall. Understood? Means, abhi to right now we have lot of time, na? So I am just giving solution as required. But smart work is what plan for that. And therefore, mock test is required. Three hours, hundred marks paper. Three hours you need to prepare well. Sit for three hours and then write down the paper. That is very important. Correct? Then I'll give one question for your better understanding. Example. Write down clearly, huh? Write down whatever information I am giving clearly. One four two thousand twenty. Thirty first March two thousand twenty one. One good question. On this date. One lakh equity shares of rupees ten each of rupees ten each fully paid up. Understood. On this date, one lakh equity shares of rupees 
10 is rupees 6 paid up that's it on 15 2020 10% convertible debentures issued 10 lakh will be converted into 5 lakh equities after 5 years correct thirty first twelve fall of rupees four on what partly paid up shares understood net profit is equal to 20 lakh tax rate is equal to 30 percent net profit means after tax you will do basic and diluted bit without giving working note working note don't give Direct in formula plus minus. Can you do it? Have you understood without giving working note number one to direct do plus minus? Yeah, you have to just enter constant. I hope you have understood the question. You have tried to mix with what? Partly paid up sales. First give me basic earning per share, then do diluted earning per. Then basic done. Start doing diluted. Ten percent I have given now. Of rupees ten lakh only. Ten lakh. Na? This is rupees. Rupees, huh? Not number of debentures. Case value is not given. This will be rupees only, na? Correct, na? Have you done basic? 
Now do dilute it. Dilute also done. First, I will do basic. Can you help me? So, when we are doing basic earning per share, how much? 20 lakh profit. Then divided by what? 1 lakh. 12 by 12. 1 lakh into. 6 by 10 very good plus 1 lakh into into very good excellent answer can you give me answer or better you give first kilometer 1 lakh 1 lakh 70 don't do calculus. Seven point. Don't do calculus mistake, please. Huh? To have calculator. Once you have written correctly, after that, if you are doing calculus mistake, then to no one can help you. Correctly written, then why you are doing calculus mistake? Okay, now. now diluted. So twenty lakh plus what? Ten lakh into. Into 10 percent into what? Very good. I hope you have understood my emotions. Into 70 percent divided by what? 1 lakh 70 thousand plus what? 5 lakh into what? Is now the totally understood. Fully understood. Have you done 11 by 12? Missed. How many have you missed 11 by 12? How many done 12 by 12? 11 by 12 done. So, can you give me numerator? 20 lakh 64 thousand 167. Then what? 6 lakh. Triple three answer two eight five. One more question. Can I give one more question? Because this type of questions are not given in ICS study, they, they have given very simple questions. So I am just giving doing two questions. If they ask, you should be able to do it. Okay, now, only for that reason. However, chances are rare. But let us do it. Okay, na? One lakh fifty shares of rupees ten each fully paid up, outstanding, and ten percent rupees ten lakh. Convertible debenture outstanding. Correct. Thirty first twelve. Convertible debenture was converted into one lakh equity shares. Understood. Is during the year it was converted. Means can I say for the first nine months it was what? It was potential equity shares and the balance three months it is what? Ordinary shares. Means for three months it will be in basic earning per share and for 
9 month it will be also considered for what diluted earning per share understood this type of question has not been given but can be asked or not have you understood i think now you can do it net profit 10 lakh rate of tax 30% of course you can so you can help me first basic earning per share batao 10 lakh divided by 1 lakh for how many month this is the 12 month then how much converted 1 lakh for how many month understood is coming how much Ten lakh divided by one lakh. Understood. Whenever you start diluted now, diluted always take from basic. Is first take numerator as per basic, and then denominator as per basic. Then do plus minus. Plus. Batao. Interest will be adjusted. What is the nominal value of debenture? 10 lakh I have given. Into what? Into how many months? Very good. Rate of tax is what? 30%, 70%. Plus what? 1 lakh into what? Hello? 1 lakh into what? 9 by 12, 12 by 12. Means we will also consider potential equity shares. So it was potential equity share for how many months? 9 months. So it will be 9 by 12, na? Have you understood this point? No question has been given. But have you understood? Can be asked. From my point of view, can be asked. But they are not asking what can I do. Numerator how much? Numerator. 10 lakh 50 to 500 divided by 2 lakh is equal to what? 5.26 5.26 Understood Come. So I am supposed to complete but for other time lagega. Okay Only two questions I will say and one more I will take one more question three type of question I need to take then this chapter will complete However from exam point to the one question is pending stop this stop is pending what we will do in, in the next class ok I hope whatever we have done you have understood practice also done in class only I am doing lot of questions so practice also done correct now two major AS is left AS 19 and AS 22 that is thorough difficult balance AS is very easy theoretical AS correct so we will do the balance part in the next class thank you very much we will meet tomorrow till then bye bye take care enjoy your remaining day Very good morning everyone. How are you all? Now, last class we started AS20. Almost we completed. Let us take some more question for diluted learning per year for practice. Okay. Come to question number 19. While calculating diluted learning per year, question number 19. Effect is given to all dilutive potential equity shares. That way, outstanding during the period. Explain. You can say correct only. Effect is given to all dilutive potential equity shares. Understood? Dilutive potential equity shares, not anti-dilutive, not anti-dilutive. So this is a theoretical question. Let's see what the answer has been given. In calculating diluted earning per share, 
the effect is given to all dilutive potential equity share that were outstanding during the period as per as20 eps the net profit for the period attributable to equity shareholders and weighted average number of shares outstanding during the period should be adjusted for the effect of all dilutive potential equity share for the purpose of calculation of dilutive earning per share means same thing is repeated means we need to calculate adjusted net profit adjusted weighted average number of shares due to conversion of potential equity shares to what equity shares that only is given i think this too you can add on by your own then they have given the next part of this question also calculate dilutive earning per share net profit is given how much 85 lakh 50000 Number of equity shares outstanding. Number of eight percent convertible debenture of rupees hundred each. Each debenture is convertible into ten equity shares. Interest expense for the current year is what? Six lakh tax relating expense. Very simple. Can I say? Very simple. But in this one, in one point you can do mistake. Only for one point you can do mistake. Very good question. But every student will do mistake in that point. Correct? Let's see. When I am doing the solution, whether you can react or not. Understood? So question number nineteen we are doing. First we will calculate basic earning per share. Basic earning per share. They have given net profit how much? Eighty five lakh fifty thousand divided by number of equity shares how much given? Twenty lakh, two lakh, twenty lakh. So this become basic earning per share four point two seven five. Then let us come to diluted earning per share. Diluted earning per share. This is how much eighty five lakh fifty thousand plus what? But a plus plus what? Six lakh into. Into seventy, seventy percent divided by what? Twenty lakh, twenty lakh plus plus what? How many number of shares? It is what? Number of debentures is one lakh into ten means ten lakh. But the weight will be given for how many months? Weight will be given for how many months? But now, weight will be given for how many month? How many month? Twelve month. I said only one point you will do mistake, and that mistake you have done. Correct. And in exam, normally we do this type of mistake, and we don't understand, and then at the end we blame what ICI. And then, if nothing is done by blaming ICI, then we blame what faculty. And then also nothing is done, then we blame what ah bad luck. Better next time. चलो ठीक है. किन्हें से interest expense given here for the first time in any question they have given interest expense and they have given rate of interest. So why they have given interest expense to find out something means just find out. 10 lakh because this is 100 is not so it become how much no it become 100 lakh 100 lakh 8 percent is equal to how much 8 lakh na it means this was issued during the year not for 12 month it means it is for some period of time so it means you need to calculate how many month so if you will do 9 by 12 then 6 by 6 lakh will come check karo 9 Just do eight lakh. So nine by twelve. It is coming nine by twelve now. It means it is outstanding for how many month? Nine month, and therefore it will be nine by twelve. One mistake. One mistake. One marks will be given out of five marks. चलेगा? Have you understood this point? Same question have been repeated two three times in exam. Have you understood this nine by twelve? Yes. Then what answer is coming? 
3.26 that is the next example fast understood 9 by 12 whenever ex interest expense given just cross check once what is the outstanding period for that particular potential equity shares ok you want a note for this let us one student note. Whenever interest expense is given in question, always Always check outstanding period for that potential equities. Understood? Correct. Let us one more example. One for two thousand twenty equity shares one lakh into ten convertible debenture. Rupees ten lakh rate of interest ten percent will be converted into one lakh equity shares after five years. Correct. On 30th June, bonus issue 1 is to 1. Correct. Understood. Net profit. 10 lakh tax rate 30 percent then can we do it basic earning per share it is what 10 lakh divided by 1 lakh outstanding from the beginning then bonus here what will be the weight bonus is also what 1 lakh 12 by 12 it become 10 lakh divided by how much 5 per share Diluted earning per share ten lakh plus what is the interest one lakh into seventy percent correct Hello. then this will be two lakh plus how many equity shares? 1 lakh. Correct? Can I say because debentures are outstanding for 12 months into 12 by 12? Plus what? One new point.
Now, whether the venture holders are entitled to bonuses? Whether the venture holders are entitled to bonuses? Huh? After? Now, with right now, bonus is given before conversion. Abhi bonus shares are, is announced before conversion of debentures into equity shares. So, whether such debenture holders are entitled to bonus shares? Huh? If me, if you have, it means you have forgotten one point. As per means in bonus share chapter, that is group 1 accounting. Correct? I don't know whether you have done this point or not. But, as per SEBI guidelines, that is underwriting commission rate in the As per SEBI guidelines, whenever bonuses are allotted to equity shareholders, then similar benefit is given to holders of debentures, means debenture holders, at the time of conversion. At the time of Conversion. So when they will be converted into equity shares, bonus shares will be allotted in the same terms. Correct? So they are also entitled to bonus shares as per SEBI guidelines, but now, but not now, on the date of conversion. Means can I say when this will be converted into 1 lakh equity shares? So on 1 lakh bonus shares will be allotted. On 1 lakh bonus shares will be allotted. So, write down. So, can you say on the same terms means on one is to one basis? So, can you say it will be allotted on the date of conversion? So, because of that, there will be potential equity shares, but 2 lakh potential equity shares now? 2 lakh potential equity shares. So, this special point because of what? AB guidelines. And this will be 12 by 12. So, for bonus shares, it will be 12 by 12 always. Means even though this debentures are issued suppose during the year for 1 lakh you are taking 6 by 12 chalega but to the bonus years which will be given as per SEBI guidelines the weight will be what 12 by 12 from the beginning from the beginning understood this point correct have you understood and because I have not given previous information therefore we are not able to restate it because I have not given previous information, if previous information given for that, we need to restate basic earning per share as well as diluted earning per share for the effect of what bonus years? For the effect of bonus years. So, this is new point as per what SEBI guidelines? New point as per what SEBI guidelines. Understood? Correct? So, only one question has been given RTP of this nature, but till now no question has been asked in exam of this nature. So, on the assumption that it can be asked, I have done this point in your batch. Chalega? Bolo? Have you understood this point? I will give that note. Just first calculate. It become how much? Now, first can you give me numerator? 10,70,000. Divided by? 4 lakh. Is equal to? 2.5. 6, 7. Correct. Add on note. Whenever such question come, always give this note in exam. Correct. So, as per AB guidelines, you have not done this point. Huh? Have you done this point in your accounting group 1? But question is asked from this topic also. I don't know why you have not done. Correct. As per SEBI guidelines, if any company has issued bonus shares Before conversion
ऑफ डिवेंचर्स करेक्ट बिफोर कन्वर्सन ऑफ डिवेंचर्स एडम देन then such debenture holders are also entitled to bonus shares on the same terms on the same terms but on the date of on the date of their conversion on the date of their conversion understood correct i hope you have understood previous aps you can restate if the information about previous year earning is given that restatement you can do correct then it on next point dilutive component in options dilutive component in options now option means here esop employee stock option plan correct we all know that we all know that what is option that we know suppose 1 lakh options 1 lakh options are granted at an exercise price of 20 and the market price is 100 correct understood and suppose this is vesting day and this is exercise day so on this date options become vested option Vested options, and after that it can be exercised. It can be exercised. So what AS twenty says that these one lakh vested options are of two types. One is number of options, number of options or shares you can say number of shares. which will be issued at what fair value and number of options which will be issued at nil consideration understood similar point we have done for what right shares you remember but right shares were already issued and it will be issued different this so right shares were not potential equity shares right shares already issued they become ordinary equity shares and therefore it were considered for basic earning per share but in this case equity shares will be issued so will be issued means it become potential equity shares but out of 1 lakh 1 lakh equity shares will be issued in future when it will be exercised so 1 lakh equity shares will be issued but out of that 1 lakh some equity shares will be issued at fair value and some equity shares will be issued at nil consideration means what is the proceed we are going to receive 20 
वन लैख इंटू ट्वेंटी तो वट इज द मार्केट प्राइस टू विल डू वन लैख इंटू ट्वेंटी डिवाइडेड बाई बाट फेयर वैल्यू तो दिस इज हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स तो कहीं से ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड इक्विटी शेयर्स विल बी इशू डेट फेयर वैल्यू एंड द बैलेंस बैलेंस इज वाट वन लैख माइनस वाट ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड विल बी इशू डेट वाट नील कंसिडेशन मीन्स कहीं से एनी जस्ट राइट वन डेसन एनी इक्विटी शेयर्स विच विल बी इशू डेट फेयर वैल्यू देन इट कैन नॉट हैव डायल्यूटिव एलिमेंट मीन्स इट विल नेवर डिक्रीज अर्निंग पर शेयर अरविंग If equity shares will be issued at fair value, it will not decrease earning per share. But any equity shares which are issued without any consideration that will have impact on earning and that will be dilutive impact. Have you understood this point? Have you understood, or I will prove it. You want proof or understood? So can I say out of these, this is dilutive component, and this is not a dilutive component. It means for dilutive earning per share. You will consider one lakh twenty thousand or eighty thousand. So only eighty thousand will be considered. This become dilutive component. Have you understood this point? Have you? Means this will be only considered for calculation of what diluted earning per share. Understood? Any doubt? Understood. Write down. Write down this. To calculate diluted earning per share options. is treated as consisting of how many component two component point number a number of equity shares Which will be deemed to be issued at at fair value. Correct. How to calculate number of options multiplied by exercise price divided by. That on average fair value, an average fair value will be given in the question. Point number B. Find this right down first. These shares are not dilutive. and therefore therefore will not be considered for diluted earning per share understood point number b point number b will what number of shares Which will be issued for nil consideration understood. So this will be what total options minus what. non dilutive 
component the first one is non dilutive component and the second one is dilutive component this is dilutive component na is write down here non dilutive component understood correct in this write down these shares will be considered for calculation of diluted earning per share any doubt simple can we take one question question number 15 that am favorite question of institute a limited had 6 lakh equity shares the company earned a profit of 50 lakh the average fair value per share is 25 understood average fair value given the company has given a share option to its employee 1 lakh at an option price option price means exercise price calculate basic and diluted earning per share can we do it so we are doing question number 15 First, we'll do basic earning per share. So, how much net profit given? Net profit attributable to equity shareholders. How much? Fifteen lakh. What is the weighted average number of shares? Weighted average number of equity shares how much? Six lakh, na? It is six lakh. So what is basic earning per share? Very simple. Two point five. Diluted earning per share. So we want adjusted net profit attributable to to equity shareholders. Correct. Now, here is whenever we have taken a question of debentures. So debenture holders are entitled to interest before conversion, and therefore we have done some adjustment. But these options are not entitled to any income, and therefore such adjustment is not required in numerator. The so numerator no adjustment for option. Option it will remain same only. That is fifteen lakh. So only adjustment is required where. So then we will calculate adjusted. adjusted weighted average number of equity shares outstanding during the period so as per basic how much as per basic 6 lakh 
then plus dilutive component in in options what is the total option granted so we can see in this is 1 lakh minus what minus 1 lakh into what 15 divided by very good how much it is coming minus ke baad 40,000 so this becomes 6 lakh 40,000 if nothing is given we will always assume options were outstanding from the beginning understood suppose it is given options were issued on 38th June suppose given so option was granted on 30th June, then wait will be given for how many months? 9 months. 30th June, 9 months. So in this case also wait is required. If nothing is given, we'll assume from the beginning. Got it? Yes, sir. So now basic diluted earning per will be what? How much? 2.34. Done. Very simple. But revision is required before exam, otherwise you will forget this. This option wala point you will forget. So just write down this question MRQ. This question is specifically because you will forget this dilutive component wala point. Got it? Any doubt? Then last point of this chapter. Last point. Point number. no point how to determine how to determine the sequence in which potential equity shares are considered potential equity share considered for determining dilutive potential equity shares Still no question has been given from this point in ICS study material, but very easy and important also. Means good topic. I don't know one second whether this type of question will be asked or not. Correct. But sometime unexpected is expected. Sometime whatever we are not expecting that will come in exam. And we have done this much and they ask this point, then entire wasted. Because if I will not do, you will not be able to do it. Okay, no? But I will do it. So how to determine the sequence? Please write down whatever question we have taken. In this, all questions, there were only one potential equity here. But if there are more than one, so in which order we will consider to find out which one is dilutive and which one is anti-dilutive? Are you getting what I am saying? We know that once it is anti-dilutive, it will not be considered. If it is dilutive, then only will be considered. Now we are here to find out the worst EPS. Means in what circumstances worst EPS will come. Are you getting? So in which circumstances EPS will become minimum and that become diluted earning per share? Are you getting? So they have given one step to find out the sequence in which we need to consider the potential equity shares for the purpose of calculation of what? Diluted earning per share. Okay. Are you able to understand? Okay. Now, so to understand this concept, let me take one question. From that question, we will try to understand ki what actually this topic want to say. Correct? Right now, you are not able to understand what I am saying. Right now, you are not able to understand what I am saying. Correct? Understood? The objective is to calculate what? 
ना द ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू कैलकुलेट वर्स्ट सीनारियो ऑफ ईपीएस इन वट सरकम स्टांसेज द ईपीएस विल बिकम मिनिमम फॉर दैट दिस टॉपिक इज वट एवर दिस टॉपिक इज रिलेटेड करेक्ट लेट मी टेक वन क्वेश्चन विद एट क्वेश्चन विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड वाई वी आर डिस्कसिंग दिस पॉइंट ठीक है तो क्वेश्चन सिक्सटीन दिस क्वेश्चन आई हैव क्रिएटेड करेक्ट तो दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन हैज नॉट बीन गिवन इन आई सी एस स्टडी मेटेरियल तो इफ बिफोर एग्जाम यू आर फाइंड इट डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड डिलीट दिस क्वेश्चन बट इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड डू इट करेक्ट ना तो सपोज इफ यू आर फाइंडिंग ट्रबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस हाउ एवर दैट सिचुएशन विल नॉट कम बट सपोज वॉट एपन इफ यू आर नॉट फाइंडिंग कंफर्टेबल डिलीट दिस क्वेश्चन चलेगा तो कैलकुलेट बेसिक एंड डायल्यूटेड रनिंग फर्स्ट ईयर इक्विटी शेयर और फीस टेन इज आउटस्टैंडिंग एट द बिगिनिंग टेन परसेंट कन्वर्टेबल प्रिफरेंस ईयर्स कन्वर्टेड इन टू फाइव थाउजेंड इक्विटी शेयर ऑफ रुपीज टेन इज आउटस्टैंडिंग एट द बिगिनिंग ट्वेल्व परसेंट डिवेंचर ऑफ रुपीज हंड्रेड इज आउटस्टैंडिंग एट द बिगिनिंग प्रॉफिट बिफोर प्रॉफिट बिफोर टैक्स एंड डिवेंचर इंटरेस्ट टेन लैक रेट ऑफ इनकम टैक्स इतना रेट ऑफ सी डी टी डिलीट रेट ऑफ सी डी टी डिलीट कैन आई एड वन मोर ऑप्शन एंड वन मोर पोटेंशियल इक्विटीशियस इफ यू परमिट बिकॉज आई हैव गिवन वॉट टेन परसेंट कन्वर्टेबल प्रिफ्रेंसियस करेक्ट अच्छा Not convertible, na? No? The debenture only. Okay. So this question, leave it. I am creating one question. Better. Example. Let us. Let us create one question. Okay. So, at a financial year, 2020-21. Net profit. is given 10 lakh correct for lakh equity shares of rupees 10 each outstanding at beginning correct then add down Twelve percent one lakh twelve percent ventures. Of rupees ten each, outstanding at beginning. Converted into one lakh equity shares of rupees ten each. After five year, correct. Then it will two lakh ten percent preference years convertible. This is also convertible. This is also convertible. Preference years. 
of rupees 10 each outstanding at beginning converted into Twenty thousand equity shares of rupees ten each after two year. Correct. One lakh options outstanding at beginning. Average fair value. Seventy-five exercise price is equal to sixty. Calculate diluted earning per share. If tax rate. Is equal to thirty percent. Then, can we start? Whenever they ask diluted, basic is compulsory. Okay, so basic is implied. If they are asking diluted earning per share, you need to first calculate basic earning per share. Shall I go? Come on. So, can we start basic earning per share first? So, first, let us calculate. Point number one. Basic earning per share. For that, first we want net profit attributable to equity shareholders. What I have given? Net profit I have given ten lakh. So this net profit is after interest, after tax, but before preference dividend. So we should also deduct what preference dividend, and I have informed you that if question is silent, always assume cumulative. Deduct even though dividend is not declared. Remember, so I have given how much number of shares two lakh. What is the face value ten? What is the rate ten percent? How much? It become two lakh. It means it is eight lakh. Eight lakh become what? Net profit attributable. You can say A. Then point number B. Weighted average number of equity shares. Weighted average number of equity shares. Outstanding during the year. So how many equity shares? Equity shares outstanding at the beginning. How much? One lakh into twelve by twelve. It means it is one lakh only, and nothing will come. This is one lakh. So what is basic earning per share? A by B. How much? It is eight rupees per share. Basic, no doubt. Let us come to point number two. Diluted earning per share. Correct. We need to calculate. Adjusted net profit attributable to equity shareholders. For this, one working note is required. And adjusted weighted average. Number of equity shares outstanding during the period for this also one working note will do. 
and then we can create calculate what derivative running procedure this much i hope you have understood now the topic started now at all work in note so what as20 says that you need to do that test for dilution test for dilutions means you need to find out which potential equity share is most dilutive for that we need to first calculate incremental eps incremental eps due to conversion of that potential equity share into equity shares means first we need to calculate point number a calculation of what bada incremental incremental eps for each potential equity shares are you able to understand for each potential equity shares so incremental eps means what increase in numerator divided by increase in denominator that become what incremental eps correct na so can i say in this way we can do potential equity shares then we'll find out increase in net profit and then increase in what number of equity shares then we can find out incremental eps are you able to understand ki how much increase in net profit due to conversion then increase in what number of shares due to conversion then this by this will be incremental eps correct na so first let us take option my question to you all due to conversion of option into equity share whether any effect in net profit due to conversion of option into equity shares whether options are entitled to any income no so no impact in income so this will be zero but can i say number of equity shares will increase means we need to find out dilutive component of what dilutive component in options but how to calculate this total option is what 1 lakh minus what 1 lakh into 60 by 75 how much so this is to nil this is what 20000 so can i say incremental eps will be nil only this by this incremental eps is nil so have you understood this first point then second point convertible debentures we have convertible debentures so due to conversion of convertible debenture into equity shares what is the effect in net profit net profit will increase by interest net of net of tax correct so can you give me what is the interest expense can you give me the amount what is the total interest 1 lakh into 10 into 12 percent how much 1 lakh 20000 into what 70 percent is equal to 84000 and how many equity shares will be issued i have given 1 lakh correct and can is into 12 by 12 only because outstanding from the beginning so be careful about this this will be 12 by 12 only i mean right now we know it is for 12 month therefore i am not writing correct so 84000 divided by what 1 lakh how much 0.84 correct now similarly we'll do for what convertible preference shares batao they are entitled to preference dividend so how much preference dividend we already calculated 2 lakh and how many can is a preference dividend will not do net of tax why not net of tax because that is after profit after tax correct now how many equity shares will be given 20000 to 2 lakh divided by 20000 how much 
टेन अंडरस्टूड है करेक्ट माई क्वेश्चन टू यू ऑल इन दिस विच वन इज मोस्ट डायलूटिव बताओ मीन्स विच विल हैव मोर इंपैक्ट ऑन अर्निंग पर शेयर एज पर डायल्यूशन इज कंसर्न प्रिफरेंस शेयर तो विल इंक्रीज ईपीएस इट इज टेन रुपीज इंक्रीमेंटल ईपीएस तो ऑप्शन बिकम मोस्ट डायलूटिव तो दिस विल बिकम रैंक वन देन वॉट डिवेंचर रैंक टू देन वॉट rank 3 means what as 21 to say that for calculation of diluted earning per share this order will be considered first consider what option then what then what and then find out which one is anti which one is anti dilutive and which one is dilutive potential equity shares for that purpose we'll do one more working note In this point, item. This was point number A. Then item point number B. So, calculation of dilutive and anti-dilutive potential equities. In this what we write on we write on numerator, denominator, and EPS. Correct. Numerator, denominator, and EPS. So the as per basic, as per basic, what is the numerator? Already calculated how much? Eight lakh. And how much denominator? So, as per basic, what is the EPS? Eight. Understood. Now we'll give the effect of conversion. The first effect will be given for what? Options. You understood. So, first write down options. But the how much effect in numerator? Nil. How much in denominator? Twenty thousand. Now it become how much? Eight lakh and one lakh twenty thousand. Now what is the EPS? This by this, this by this nil. This by this I am saying total six point six seven. But the decreases or increases, and therefore it become dilutive. Dilutive means options will be considered for calculation of diluted earning per share. Understood. Then we'll take convertible debenture. But the how much? Eighty-four thousand, one lakh. This become how much? Eight lakh, eighty-four thousand, and how much? Four point zero, one or two. So one second it is dilutive, dilutive na. So it is further decreases by this. So one second dilutive. Now we'll take what convertible, preference years. How much? Two lakh and twenty thousand. It become how much? Ten lakh eighty four thousand and. Two lakh forty thousand. Have you understood? There were four point five one. So now it increases. So compare with this. This increases now. So it become anti dilutive. Means this will not be considered for diluted. EPS means what is the most worst condition? Four point zero one, and therefore it become diluted earning per share. But you have not considered what the effect of. You have not considered the effect of conversion of preference shares. That effect has been ignored because that become anti-dilutive. It means 
जो यो एडजस्टेड न्यूमरेटर विल वाट यो एडजस्टेड डिनोमिनेटर विल वाट एंड यू आंसर विल वाट अंडरस्टूड हैव यू अंडरस्टूड करेक्ट राइट ऑन ऑलरेडी वी कैलकुलेटेड तो यू कैन जस्ट राइट ऑन यहां पर बताओ एडजस्टेड न्यूमरेटर इज हाउ मच 8 लाख 84000 adjusted number of shares how much 2 lakh 20000 this become 4.01 answer you got so one question i have done for your understanding if exam me questions come do it otherwise leave it but from my point of view this type of question can be asked can be asked and therefore in every batch i do it Still no not asked, but sometimes we have also expectation based on the past trend. He has they may ask this type of question, and therefore I have done it. This question sixteen also let us do. Question number sixteen. Now in this, they ask you to calculate basic and diluted earning per share. They have given equity shares or rupees ten is outstanding at the beginning. Ten percent convertible preference shares converted into five thousand equity shares outstanding at the beginning. Then they give they have given twelve percent debenture. This is not convertible debenture. So these are not potential equity shares. Correct. Then profit before tax and debenture interest. It means you need to find out. Profit after tax, they have given rate of income tax thirty percent. Rate of CDT ignore because has been withdrawn. Can we do it? So first we'll do point number one. Basic earning per share. Correct. So first we want net profit. attributable to equity shareholders what they have given profit before interest and tax how much they have given from this first what will minus the venture interest how much this 5 lakh into 12 percent, 60 thousand. It become 9 lakh. From this, what will deduct? Tax at what rate? 30 percent. 30 percent is how much? 2 lakh 82 thousand. So how much net profit? Six lakh fifty-eight thousand. From this, what will deduct? Preference dividend. We'll assume what? Cumulative. So how much it is? Ten lakh ka. Ten percent. Are you able to understand? This is very easy, na? So this become what five lakh fifty eight thousand fifty eight thousand correct. Now B will calculate what weighted average number of. Equity shares outstanding. So only there are some equity shares outstanding at the beginning. Look, equity shares outstanding at beginning. How much given? So this will only become weighted average. One lakh. So what is basic earning per share? Five point five eight.
करेक्ट देन रेड ऑन डायल्यूटेड रनिंग पर्सियल तो कहीं से इट विल बी इक्वल टू वाट एज पर बेसिक हाउ मच आई एम डूइंग डायरेक्टली हाँ फाइव लैख फिफ्टी एट थाउजेंड प्लस हाउ मच प्लस रिफरेंस डिविडेंट ऑलरेडी कैलकुलेटेड ना वन लैख इट विल बी नॉट नेट ऑफ टैक्स ना देन हाउ मच वॉज द वन लैख इट विल बी कन्वर्ट इन टू हाउ मेनी क्विशियस Five thousand. So this become how much? Six lakh fifty eight thousand divided by one lakh five thousand is equal to six point two seven. It become what? Anti dilutive. Correct. And therefore will not be considered. And therefore diluted running percentage will be equal to five point five eight. Understood, madam. Due to conversion of convertible preferences into equitious, earning per share increases, and therefore. Convertible preferences are anti-dilutive, correct? And hence, will not be considered for calculation of. Diluted earning per share, correct? So it means diluted earning per share is equal to what? Five point five eight. Understood. Any doubt? No doubt. सिंपल कम टू दिस क्वेश्चन दिस क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो आई हैव टेकन फ्रॉम अदर सोर्सेस बट दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन हैज नॉट बीन गिवन इन आईसीएस स्टडी मेटेरियल इन केस ऑफ एमालगेमेशन बिकॉज एमालगेमेशन इज नाउ टॉपिक तो फ्रॉम माई पॉइंट ऑफ दैट टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन कैन बी आग समे बट नॉट गिवन इन ICA study material. Correct. Let us do it because easy only. One thing we know that amalgamation are of two type: purchase and merger. Correct. Understood. So what they have given? On 30th June 2011, B Limited merged into A Limited. The amalgamation was accounted for in accordance with pooling of interest method described in AS 14 on accounting for amalgamation. Means it is merger. The following is relevant information for the year ended. They have given particulars: A Limited, B Limited, net profit until merger five lakh two lakh, and after merger two year end eight lakh. Number of shares at the start of the year six thousand, then year B four thousand. On the date of merger six thousand more shares has been. So on the date of merger also six thousand. Then of course. They have issued some shares for PC, and that six thousand become ten thousand. Means how many shares has been issued for PC? Four thousand number of shares has been issued for PC. Correct now to trans to the shareholders of transferer company. Compute EPS of A Limited at year end. What will be your answer if amalgamation was in the nature of purchase? Means they have asked both. First, let me explain what they want to say. This is question number. Well, what is the date of merger? Thirty first, 
थर्टी एट जून थर्टी एट जून ना वट इज इयर एंड थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व करेक्ट मीन्स दिस इज थ्री मंथ दिस इज नाइन मंथ करेक्ट ना फॉर ए लिमिटेड बी लिमिटेड हाउ मच इज द प्रॉफिट फॉर द फर्स्ट थ्री मंथ दे हैव गिवन and for b limited what is the profit for the first three month can i say after this to b limited will be liquidated now can i say profit of this nine month will be combined profit of a and b in the books of a because business is taken over now so this become combined profit of a and b but in the books of a correct how much 8 lakh have you understood what i want to say Now, initially, what is the number of shares of A Limited? Six thousand. Then they have issued how many shares per PC? Four thousand equity shares have been issued. Understood. And these four thousand equity shares has been issued in exchange of shares of B Limited. In exchange of shares of B Limited. Understood. Now we are here to calculate earning per share for A Limited. Now. Not for B limited. B limited liquidated. So it is for A limited. So can we do case one? First take easy. If amalgamation is in the nature of purchase. So can you say if I am saying A limited will take profit of A limited only? So EPS will be what? Tell me. Basic EPS. Profit will be how much? Profit will be what? A limited profit, na? So this is so not relevant. So it will be five lakh plus eight lakh. What is the total profit? Five lakh plus eight lakh, na? Arey bol. Then how many shares were outstanding at the beginning? So it will be six thousand into what? Plus, how many shares issued on 30th June? So, how many month? Nine by twelve. How much? Hello. Thirteen lakh divided by nine thousand. So, what is the answer? One point one forty four point four. Have you understood this point? This is very simple. Can be asked, but simple only. In the nature of purchase, purchase, I think no discussion required. But merger. Now, remember what is amalgamation in the nature of merger? So when an amalgamation is said to be amalgamation in the nature of merger, four points, five points. If five points satisfied, five points satisfied. You remember, if you don't remember, revise it. Correct? Okay. The five condition na first condition all assets and liability of transfer company will become the assets and liability of transfer company. Second condition. 90% of equity shareholders, at least 90% of equity shareholders of transfer company become equity shareholders of transfer company. Point number three: purchase consideration will be discharged to the equity shareholders of transfer company only in the form of equity shares of transfer company. Only fractional lot can be paid in cash. Correct. Fourth point: business of transfer company is intended to be carried on by Transfer company. Last point: All assets and liability of transfer company will be incorporated in the financial statement of transfer company at book value. This way, five point which we have discussed there. If all points satisfied, merger. If one point does not satisfied, then purchase. Miss, can I say I have said pooling of interest matter is nothing but joining together, working together. 
means profit of that company will also become profit of this company means reserve and surplus will be also maintained means now you only say if you are calculating eps so but but what should be the numerator very good so can you see it will include profit of transfer a company also means 13 lakh plus what have you understood it means can i say you have considered profit of transfer company from beginning so if you have considered profit from beginning the number of shares will be also considered from beginning only so it means how many shares were of a limited 6000 is from beginning understood now this 4000 is nothing but equivalent number of shares means this 4000 is nothing but equivalent number of shares in exchange of in exchange of number of shares of b limited means b limited outstanding shares were 4000 means this has been exchanged with this shares but can you see this shares were outstanding from the beginning if you have taken this from the beginning so this 4000 should be also taken from the beginning only means here the weight will be given for pc from the beginning this is only a point which require understanding otherwise so it is easy only have you understood means here eps will be what 15 lakh divided by 10000 is equal to have you understood if questions come you can do it then this chapter completed from my point of view have you understood correct this one theory question always asks in exam whenever they don't ask practical question now they will ask this question in exam so that one important this you can read by your own important date consider for consideration of weight means from which date weight will be given this is a theoretical theory question normally this type of question they ask in as 20 whenever they don't ask any practical question chalega that one important this you can do by your own the following date should be considered for consideration of weight equity shares issued in exchange of cash from the date of cash receivable not receive when the cash will be receivable equity shares issued as a result of conversion of date that instrument to equity share from the date of conversion equity share issued in lieu of interest of principal on other financial instrument date when interest ceases to accrue means once you interest ceases to accrue from that date will consider the interest means you understand equity share issued in lieu of interest of principal amount so once interest ceased means equity share is allotted so from that date what it will be considered understood this you can read by your own so they will ask this question you can do it by your own correct with this as20 is completed now come to next as as19 thesis correct understood now let us understand as19 now everyone everyone can you see this lease lease is an agreement between two party between two party one party other party correct who are these two party one will be what owner of asset one party will be owner of asset other party will be what user of asset correct and the first party will transfer what transfer what 
राइट टू वेरी गुड राइट टू यूज सच एसिड यानी इट्स फॉर ए स्पेसिफाइड फॉर ए स्पेसिफाइड पीरियड पीरियड विल बी ऑल्सो डिफाइंड फॉर ए स्पेसिफाइड पीरियड करेक्ट एंड इन एक्सचेंज ऑफ आर्ट इन एक्सचेंज ऑफ कंसिडरेशन इन एक्सचेंज ऑफ कंसिडरेशन इन एक्सचेंज ऑफ सम कंसिडरेशन आर यू एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज वॉट लीज एग्रीमेंट दिस इज नोन एज लीज एग्रीमेंट अंडरस्टूड ना इन दिस लीज एग्रीमेंट दिस पार्टी इज नोन एज वॉट लेसर This party is known as what? Let's see. Correct. This period is known as what? This term. And this consideration is known as what? This payment. This payment. Understood. And normally, this lease payment. is a series of payment not lump sum payment it can be lump sum also it can be lump sum also but normally it will be a series of payment installment correct understood have you understood correct now what as 19 says that this lease are of two type for accounting purpose this lease are of two type for which purpose accounting purpose चल वट आई एम सेंग एवरी वन की दिस लीज आर ऑफ टू टाइप फॉर विच पर्पज अकाउंटिंग पर्पज वन इज नोन एज वाट ऑपरेटिंग लीज वन विल बी नोन एज वाट फाइनेंस लीज करेक्ट ऑपरेटिंग लीज एंड फाइनेंस लीज करेक्ट फॉर विच पर्पज अकाउंटिंग पर्पज तो इट मीन कैन इज फॉर अकाउंटिंग पर्पज फर्स्ट मिनिट टू फाइंड आउट या आइडेंटिफाई when it will be when it will be finance lease that we need to understand simple what as 19 says that if lesser transfer risk and reward of the asset along with right to use it become a finance lease otherwise it is an operating lease can you say under as 9 we have done revenue recognition the revenue recognition was based on what risk and reward transferred means whenever revenue for sale of goods will be recognized when seller when seller transfers substantially all the risk and reward incidental to the ownership to whom to the buyer then we recognize revenue means can is when risk and reward is transferred when risk and reward is transferred so actually it is a sale transaction Are you able to understand? To what AS 19 want to say when it is a finance transaction? Sorry, when it is a finance lease. So in substance, that is a sale transaction, and therefore we need to record sale and purchase entry in the books of lessee, in the books of lessor and lessee respectively. Correct. So when it will become finance lease? When? When it will become finance lease? When? When lessor transfer substantially. All the risk and reward incidental to the ownership to whom lessee. But sir, how we we'll understand the risk and reward has been transferred? That is one question mark. Correct. That we need to understand. But I hope you have understood one thing that with right to use, if plus risk and reward is also transferred. If risk and reward is also transferred, correct now. If I say risk and reward transferred, then it become FL. FL means what? If I will say with right to use, with right to use, risk and reward is not transferred, then it is what operating lease, operating lease understood, correct? Any doubt? Have you understood? Any doubt? 
చెప్తున్నాడు పాయింట్ నెంబర్ వన్ మీనింగ్ అల్లీస్ is an agreement whereby the lesser there's a convey to lessee in return for a payment or series of payment what the right to use right to use and what asset for an agreed period of of time it is simply an agreement correct got it what is the keyword right to use an asset right to use an asset then next point point number 2 types of lease you can say only for accounting purpose this classification has been done for accounting purpose these are of two types point number a is what finance lease what is finance lease understood so, is a lease that transfer substantial risk and reward incidental to ownership incidental to ownership of that asset along with right to use such as it incidental to ownership risk and reward incidental to ownership means when i am saying risk and reward incidental to ownership it means what correct now for example if i purchase this projector and if i am not using this projector that is my risk if the technology changes it is my risk correct now if fair value decreases it is my risk if fair value increases my reward so this is incidental to what ownership so we are discussing about that risk 
Are you getting? So if I have taken this building on risk, and suppose COVID-19 happen, lockdown announce, so then also I need to pay rent. So this risk of idle time, that risk is borne by what? Lessy only now. We cannot cancel the contract. We cannot cancel the contract. Means can lease is actually for non-cancellable period. Is that period, whatever I said, defined period is non-cancellable. The so non-cancellable contract are those contracts which can be cancelled. Understood? Non any contract can be cancelled. Nah? In India, to anything can be cancelled. But just write when non-cancellable contract are those contracts which can be cancelled but upon payment of penalty. Understood? Means any contract which can be cancelled without payment of penalty that become cancellable contract. Means our contract, whether anything about penalty? Yes, there is a penalty, yaar. Why it is not? Can I cancel it right now? Can I cancel it? No, 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 I can't cancel it. Can I cancel it in the mid of the batch? I think some unforeseen circumstances came, then we need to convert. Yeah, we need to cancel. I am not in a position to teach. Oh, sorry, sorry. Some other faculty is not in a position to teach. Correct, na? Understood. Then to, we need to cancel only, na? We don't have any other option. But if I am able to teach, if I am in a position to teach, I need to teach only. We normally, it is what non cancel but contract, it is implied point. It is implied, but just try, try to. It is written in the contract that I can cancel without payment of penalty. Then it become what cancelable contract. So what I want to say is this is what risk. So risk of ownership has been transferred. So if you are not able to use that asset for a defined period, that that risk has been transferred. If you purchase one asset, but the technology changes, then also you need to use it. You cannot cancel the contract. If you want to cancel, you need to pay the penalty. That risk is borne by what let's see. If fair value decreases, then also you need to pay the defined lease payment. Means lease payment will be based on current fair value. If the fair value decreases, then also you need to pay the defined payment as per previous agreed. Are you getting what I am saying? This is a risk of ownership has been transferred. Reward have also have been transferred. Are you getting what I am saying? Yes, sir. Correct. This becomes finance lease. Coming to operating lease. Second will be operating lease. So operating lease are which lease? Correct. So operating lease is a lease that are not what? That are not finance lease. Simple now. It means first you need to identify whether the lease is a finance lease. If yes, okay. If no, then operating lease. The best example of finance lease is higher purchase. Higher purchase is also a finance lease. Means already we know the accounting treatment because you have done one chapter in accounting higher purchase and the accounting treatment whatever you have done is as per AS 19. Means this chapter you know. Only I need to inform you the technical terms which you have not used in that chapter based on AS19. If you understood that technical term, then it is very simple chapter. Means already what I want to say, this chapter you have completed. And finance lease you have completed because higher purchase is an example of finance lease. Correct? Because in higher purchase, as it is transferred with risk and reward only. With risk and reward only. Understood? Are you able to understand? Means even if suppose something happened to the asset, then also all the installment is payable. Are you able to understand? So risk and reward is transferred at the beginning only and therefore higher purchase become a finance lease. But then also sir, how we will understand that a given lease is a finance lease. So for this purpose, AS19 has given 5 situations. If any situation exists, it becomes a finance lease. So they have given how many situations? So from examination point of view, they may give any one of the situation to identify whether it is a finance lease or it is not a finance lease. So from examination point of view, this situation is important. Write down point number three. Situations.
which will seed a leaves being classified as finance leaves one by one how many situation i said five situation so situation number 1 madam the lessee will get the ownership the lessee will get the ownership of leased asset by the end of by the end of what lease term by the end of lease term so can you see ownership will be transferred at the end of lease term means risk any what transferred only correct na means can you say in higher purchase also ownership was transferred on payment of last installment means at the end of lease term and therefore higher purchase is nothing but point number 1 correct na are you able to understand if you want to write on example higher purchase so higher purchase will be always finance lease correct yes sir so lessee will get the ownership of the leased of the leased asset of the leased asset by the end of lease term correct understood second the lessee has an option option means right has an option option means right na so has an option to purchase the leased asset at the end of lease term understood the lessee has an option to purchase the leased asset at the end of lease term whether risk can be what transferred no just try to understand it does not means risk can be what is transferred it does not mean correct means it might happen i have given you an option that you can you can purchase the asset at the end of lease term but at a higher fair value then you will never exercise the option na means there is no intention to sell the asset just try to understand when i am saying finance lease it means there is an intention of sale when i am saying intention of sale means entire fair value will be recovered means just try to understand the mobile this mobile fair value is 40000 correct understood 40000 so if i want to give this asset to you on finance lease how much i will recover from you 40000 correct na because the risk and reward is transferred means it is as simple as sale transaction as simple as sale transaction but if i want to give you an operating lease means risk and reward is not transferred then i will not recover 40000 and you will not pay 40000 to me and if you want to pay 40000 you will say i will purchase from the market only are you getting what i am saying so can i say operating lease operating lease you will never miss i will never recover 40000 from you but in case of finance lease i will recover what 40000 from you are you able to understand so just try to understand everyone if i if they say lessee has an option to purchase the lease asset at the end of lease term at a price which is more than fair value of the asset at the end of lease term so whether you will exercise the option you will never exercise the option you will never na it means there is no intention to sell if there is no intention to sell risk and reward is not transferred and risk if risk and reward is not transferred it cannot be a finance lease correct so lessee has an option to purchase the lease asset at the end of lease term at a price 
lower than fair value of that asset at the end of lease term it means there is an intention to say means if suppose the fair value of this lease asset at the end of lease term is 10,000 and I said you can purchase at rupees 1 it means what intention to sell risk and reward transferred and you will always exercise the you will always exercise that is why this is also a finances to just complete the sentence the lessee has an option to purchase the lease asset at the end of lease term at a price at a price at a price which is lower than lower than its expected fair value at the end of least term have you understood correct normally it any cases it is seen that lease agreement designed in such a way that at the end of lease term you can purchase the asset at rupees 100 means what they don't want to transfer the ownership during the lease term but at the end of lease term automatically it will be transferred it means risk and reward they want to transfer correct means similar to point number one similar to point number one in point number one it is transferred at the end automatically in point number two they need to exercise that option the difference between one and two have you understood correct point number three the least term these terms cover major part of economic life economic life of the asset of the asset the lease term cover major part of economic life of the asset what is the meaning of economic life no no it is not useful life useful life and economic life is different correct now you can just try it one as for a human being the life is 70 years but they cannot work for 70 years so useful life may be 50 years Correct now for CA, the entire life is useful life. Correct now they work till they are ah uh, they will work. They will be in call only. Correct. So what I am saying for CA it is an exception. But can I say for a normal human being, useful life is 50 year, but the economic life might be 70 year. For acid also just try to understand. He suppose this is the economic life. For economic life is 10 year means this mobile can. Uh, can give benefit for how many years but normally we use for four years and then exchange it so for my business i want to use it only for four years correct now the useful life become what four years economic life become what ten years understood economic life become ten years means an asset can be used by many num uh, multiple user it can be used by multiple person for depreciation we calculate useful life which may be equal to or less than what economic life which may be equal to or less than economic life so there is a difference between economic life and useful life so lease terms cover major part of economic life of the asset first thing what is major part that is not defined under AS19 what is this major part that is not defined under AS19 but just try to understand if suppose an asset is of 10 year economy life and it has been given for 10 year means can a service can you what transferred after that even the ownership not transferred what lesser we, we do with this asset nothing correct now now if an asset is of 10 year is given for 9 year then also can you say it has been given for the major part of economic life means can I say substantially all the risk and reward has been transferred substantially all the risk and reward has been transferred are you able to understand and therefore this will be also a case of 
फाइनेंस लीज करेक्ट तो द लीज टर्म कवर मेजर पार्ट ऑफ द इकोनॉमिक लाइफ ऑफ द एसेट इवन इफ ऑनरशिप इज नॉट ट्रांसफर्ड एट द एंड ऑफ लीज टर्म इवन इफ ऑनरशिप इज नॉट ट्रांसफर एट द एंड ऑफ लीज टर्म मिस कहने से अ फाइनेंस लीज कैन बी मिस अ फाइनेंस लीज कैन बी विथ और विदाउट ट्रांसफर ऑफ ऑनरशिप मीन्स ऑनरशिप मे और मे नॉट बी ट्रांसफर एट द एंड ऑफ लीज टर्म देन ऑल्सो इट कैन बी अ फाइनेंस लीज अंडर सो वट आई एम सेंग करेक्ट दैट ऑन इवन इफ इवन इफ ऑनरशिप इज नॉट ट्रांसफर्ड एट द एंड ऑफ at the end of lease term have you understood this point so lease terms cover major part of economic life of the asset even if ownership is not transfer at the end of lease term now from examination point of view this major part will be considered as 75% of economic life from examination point of view huh? this is not defined under as 19 practically use the facts and circumstances available But from examination point of view, if out of ten years, seven point five year transfer, it become major part financially is carlo. Understood? Means if it is eight year now, then also it will be what financially, correct? Understood? Ha. But suppose if this they have given five year, so it is not a financially, then it is not a financially. In exam they will not give seven point five exact. Don't worry. Because for that you will be confused. Correct? They will not give seven year also. You will be confused what to take. Correct? So they will give this situation. So this is clearly understood. Finance list. This is not a finance list clearly understood. Point number three also done. Point number four. Get on. Get on. The asset. The asset is of. specialized nature which can be used which can be used only by only by whom let's see unless major modification being made the asset is of a specialized nature which can be used only by lessee unless major modification is being made correct means as a, an asset which has been designed or constructed or produced only for lessee customized asset customized asset na Guys, on right now you are just observing metro construction under metro construction use use equipment has been used that has been designed for this project only. Once the project completed, what we will do about that asset? Nothing dismantled. That asset is not not required for any other activities. Now it has been designed specifically for what metro project construction. Now are you able to understand? So can I say just try to understand if that asset has been taken on lease? If that asset has been taken on lease, so my question to you or lesser will recover the entire fair value or only a portion of fair value? Entire fair value, even though ownership is not transferred at the end, even though it is not for major part of economic life. Are you getting? Means just try to understand the life may be 50 year, but metro project to five year, na? But after five year, that asset is of no use of less lesser. What they will do? They will dismantle it. So what does the scrap only na? Are you bolna re? Because there is no second customer for that. There is no second customer for that. Are you able to understand? Means even though asset is not given for major part of economic life, even though the ownership is not transfer at the end of lease term, can lessor be recover entire fair value? And the risk and reward will be transferred. The risk and reward will be transferred during that period. Understood, correct. So this will be also considered as what finance list. So what is the uh, next point? The asset is of specialized nature, 
विच कैन बी यूज ओनली बाई ले अनलेस मेजर मॉडिफिकेशन इज बींग मेड आई जस्ट गिव वन मोर एग्जाम्पल इन हॉस्पिटल ना यू हैव सीन एम्बुलेंस नॉर्मली ना नॉर्मली दिस हॉस्पिटल प्रीवियसली द एम्बुलेंस नाउ तो इट कैन बी ऑफ अदर डिजाइन प्रीवियसली एम्बुलेंस वॉज ओनली मारुति ओमनी यू नो ओमनी मारुति ओमनी दैट वॉज ओनली वॉज यूज फॉर वॉट एम्बुलेंस पर्पज एंड दे यूज टू डू वन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विथ मारुति कंपनी दैट दे विल प्रोवाइड द कार विथ मॉडिफिकेशन मीन्स दे विल चेंज द कार फॉर वॉट विच पर्पज एम्बुलेंस पर्पज मीन्स दे बी वॉट इट विल बी टोटली डिजाइन फॉर विच पर्पज एम्बुलेंस पर्पज अर्गरिंग so they will not purchase that car that car will be taken on lease only for 5 year normally why they will take on lease normally why they will take on lease for 5 year because as per government rules this ambulance cannot be of old age because this should be very much what fast and it should be in good condition na so they will they will use the car only for 5 year and then they will change it india chalo hota hai india they will not follow the rules but as per government there is some rules that this car this which are used for ambulance can be used for certain period only therefore they will not purchase the car they will take the car on lease now you will say this ambulance maruti car if other person want to use it suppose this ram purchase the car from hospital so how he will use maza aa raha hai piche mein करेक्ट ना तो कहने से ही नीट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यूज इट मेजर मॉडिफिकेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड टू यूज दैट कार फॉर हिज पर्सनल पर्पज अर्गरिंग तो दैट एग्रीमेंट विल बी ऑल्सो ए फाइनेंस लीज एग्रीमेंट अंडरस्टूड है बी अंडरस्टूड तो द एसिड इज ऑफ स्पेशलाइज नेचर विच कैन बी यूज ओनली बाई लेसी अनलेस मेजर मॉडिफिकेशन इज बींग मेड दिस मच यू हैव यू अंडरस्टूड लास्ट पॉइंट लास्ट पॉइंट इज मैथोमेटिकल फॉर्मूला Mathematical formula. What AS 19 says that if one, two, three, four is not satisfied, apply mathematical formula. Mathematical formula is very simple. But now, you know higher purchase price, you know cash price. The difference is what? Interest. Interest. Miss, can I say this cash price? Because now you know FM. This cash price is nothing but a present value of higher purchase price. Understood. and cash price is nothing but fair value initial fair value and this higher purchase price will be installment including interest so if you calculate present value of all installment including down payment that will be equal to what cash price so what they have given a simple formula ki if on inception of contract the present value of lease payment is substantially equal to initial fair value means entire fair value is recovered and if you are recovering entire fair, fair value it means it is a sale only sale means it is can award transfer so if at any point of time you find that less is recovering entire fair value it means it is can award is transferred so they have given this mathematical formula understood the formula i hope you understood because now you know fm now you know fm na and you know higher purchase agreement correct freedom freedom at the inception of lease inception means inception means beginning at the inception of lease at the inception of lease the present value of minimum lease payment minimum lease payment cover substantially cover substantially the initial fair value of what leased asset then this will be also what finance lease first second third fourth fifth understood important from examination point of view 
because they may give this type of point in the question so first you need to identify whether it is a finance lease and then do accounting treatment simple but simple only these five points will be asked in exam so can you repeat with me first point the lessee will get ownership at the end of lease term second point the lessee has an option to purchase the lease asset at the end of at a price lower than expected fair value at the end of lease term point number three the lease terms cover major part of economic life of leased asset point number four the asset is of specialized nature which can be used only by unless major modification is being made last point on inception of lease the present value of minimum lease payment substantially cover the initial fair value of that asset now once again substantially this has not been defined how much percentage this present value should cover how much percentage of initial fair value this is not defined not defined from examination point will take 90 percent 90 percent means if the present value is 90 percent or more than 90 percent of initial fair value then it will be a finance lease then it will be a finance lease understood correct it now we'll come to the accounting treatment of finance lease without wasting your time now what i will do i will take question only because you know fm you can do any question now by your own for this chapter until this, i need to give some technical terms i need to give some technical terms so better i will start with one question only correct now are you able to understand now finance lease you have understood that Asset will be recorded in the books of higher purchase. Higher purchase. Asset will be recorded in the books of higher purchaser. Are, what you have done in higher purchase? Asset will be recorded in the books of higher vendor or higher purchaser? Hey, in case of higher purchase chapter asset was given on higher purchase to higher purchaser so asset will be recorded in the books of higher purchaser or higher vendor higher <laughs> i am not able to leave higher you are saying buyer or seller seller are vendor and seller are same only higher vendor higher purchaser Mata phollo apna. Mata phollo. I say risk and reward transferred. Apply common sense. Apply common sense. But I will do jana entry as per substance or agreement. As per the substance of contract or as per agreement of the contract. Substance over form. Substance will prevail over legal document. Ownership is not transferred. Then also who is deriving entire benefit. Risk and reward transferred. So as per substance it become asset of higher purchaser so it will be recorded in the books of higher purchaser used to pass one general entry asset account debit to higher vendor and in the books of higher vendor used to record a sales general entry higher vend higher purchaser account debit to sales remember huh? Achha, this general entry whatever you have done I should ask or I should not ask Ask Pujla sir, as if you don't know anything. Correct? Achha, this journal entry asset account debit to higher vendor will be done at cash price or higher purchase price? Cash price or higher purchase price? You have passed group 1? Yes. Huh? So those who have passed, they, what happened in Indian education system, what I have seen? What is the Indian education system? We, pla we pass class 10th, forgotten. Then came to class 12, passed, forgotten. Then came to CA foundation, passed, forgotten. Then came to CA inter group 1, passed, forgotten means we write first we memorize 
फर्स्ट वी कंज्यूम सुनो क्या होता है फर्स्ट वी कंज्यूम ऑल द कॉन्सेप्ट इन एग्जाम वी राइट आफ्टर एग्जाम हॉल वी वॉमिट कॉन्सेप्ट इज आउट ऑफ द स्टोमैक करेक्ट ना बोल ना रही वेरी गुड ना चलो बेटर आई शुड नॉट आस्क आई शुड डू करेक्ट ना अच्छा इट विल रिकॉर्डेड कैश प्राइस और हायर परचेज प्राइस रिकॉर्डेड एट कैश प्राइस मीन्स कैश प्राइस इज द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ हायर परचेज प्राइस ऑलरेडी एप से ना मीन्स के नहीं से एसेट विल बी रिकॉर्डेड एट विच प्राइस कैश प्राइस इन दिस चैप्टर प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ लीज पेमेंट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ लीज पेमेंट टेक्निकल टर्म्स आई एम हियर टू नाउ गिव यू दैट टेक्निकल टर्म हायर परचेज वॉज सेम टू सेम ए एस नाइनटीन बट इन दैट चैप्टर वी हैव नॉट यूज टेक्निकल टर्म्स बिकॉज यू पास फाउंडेशन वे स्मॉल स्मॉल किट दैट टाइम तो आई सी आई से ओके ए एस नाइनटीन विल डू एट नाइन बस गिव दम वन चैप्टर लॉलीपॉप चैप्टर हायर परचेज हायर परचेज यू हंड्रेड सुड ना पास ना पास यस सर करेक्ट चलो ठीक है ना राइट डाउन वी आर डूइंग नेक्स्ट पॉइंट पॉइंट नंबर फोर ना अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट एवरीवन फॉर व्हाट फाइनेंस लीज इन द बुक्स ऑफ फर्स्ट विल डू वॉट लेसी इन द बुक्स ऑफ लेसी बट आई विल टेक आई विल टेक बेटर वन क्वेश्चन ऑनली वन क्वेश्चन इज वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू से very simple if you understand whatever i am saying ha question number 8 question number 8 are limited the lessee acquired machinery on lease acquired machinery on lease when his fair value was 3 lakh 50000 the lease term cover the entire economic life of the asset that is 3 year indication of finance lease and the lessee pay वन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड एट द एंड ऑफ ईच ईयर मीन्स वन लैख फिफ्टी वन लैख फिफ्टी वन लैख फिफ्टी इंस्टॉलमेंट इंस्टॉलमेंट मीन्स हायर परचेज प्राइस एंड थ्री लैख फिफ्टी इज कैश प्राइस सिमिलर टू सिमिलर टू हायर परचेज चैप्टर बट टेक्निकल टर्म्स इज वाट प्लीज 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 बट डाउट Doubt. Doubt is. Listen everything. I will say everything. Whatever is coming in your mind, correct now. Please listen, listen, listen. Because what happened? This chapter you will leave immediately before exam. Normally trend is that. Because what happened when you when you are writing both group. If you are writing group two only this time, so you will not leave. But when you are writing both group, when you are coming after fourth paper to fifth paper, na. then नहीं चलता करेक्ट ना फोर्थ पे फोर पेपर यू हैव रिटर्न दैट इज फिफ्थ एग्जाम फिफ्थ एग्जाम करेक्ट ना तो वट एपन की हाउ टू रिवाइज इंटायर सब्जेक्ट दैट इज वन ऑफ द मेजर पॉइंट एंड नॉर्मली आई विल से द स्टूडेंट हु कैन रिवाइज इट फुल्ली दे विन द गेम 
because our education system from the bachpan has been designed in that way only because in every exam you revise and then go from bachpan you just recall your bachpan class 1 class 2 class 3 class for you always have done 100% revision and then went to exam hall and then you passed in class 10 also 100% revision you have done for each subject bole ja suno have you done partial revision and then went and then passed no 100% revision i will say you have done to each questions also means accounts ka to sara question dekh ke gaya bole ja suno correct na i think because i have also written exam because that time we have done 100% revision class 12 was the same correct na but when you came to ca na then whether you can revise or you can't revise that is a challenge if you can revise then pakka you will pass pakka means probability is very high level that you will pass but if you can't revise na probability become less because of our previous mentality because that confidence will come in exam hall if you have done 100% revision substantial revision you have done then that confidence will come so how to revise that also planning is required and normally we fail to plan that revision before exam understood we fail to plan revision before exam and therefore multiple attempt lagta because in multiple attempt we now understand how to revise are you getting first attempt we are not able to understand are bol rahe second attempt also we are not able to understand third attempt samajh mein aa gaya then you pass means we are not just what i want to say just try to understand we, do, we are not failing because we are not studying in ca inter i think 70 80% are studying only have you seen any student who are not studying are bol rahe studying थोड़ा कम थोड़ा ज्यादा ले बट दे आर स्टडिंग ना अरे बोल रे मीन्स नाइंटी परसेंट टाइम दे विल बी इन विथ बुक्स ओनली मीन्स यू विल स्लीप विथ द बुक्स ऑल्सो अरे बोल रे आई हैव ऑल्सो सीन मीन्स इन वेन आई वॉज इन सी ए फाइनल माई इंटायर रूम वॉज विथ बुक्स ओनली इन बैड बुक्स ऐसे सो जाता था उसी के ऊपर करेक्ट ना ऐसा यस दैट वॉज फैक्ट टाइम सिंग आई डोंट यूज टू वट बट वहीं पर पढ़ते पढ़ते सो जाओ वट एवर बुक्स वॉज दे आई यूज टू स्लीप विद डैट ऑनली टाइम ही नहीं था उसको सजाने का करेक्ट ना तो इट मीन्स वी आर विद बुक्स एवरी टाइम्स वेदर यू आर स्टडिंग और नॉट स्टडिंग दैट इज अदर पॉइंट बट यू आर विद बुक्स बट यू डोंट प्लान हाउ टू रिवाइज करेक्ट दैट प्लानिंग इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिफोर एग्जाम बिफोर मीन्स इन फर्स्ट एटम ऑनली in first attempt only correct got it so one second please because as 19 is so technical simple so once you understand in class na so half game is over 50% game is over 50% a game is for revision correct understood so that half game is over only when you listen carefully when you listen carefully then maza aata hai correct understood now one more thing if you one more thing i just want to inform you because if i will not say to sometime kya hota hai na you take it granted you take it granted but the fact i am saying just try to understand i am not i am not saying to any individual okay so if you pass group 1 multiple item lagta hai group 2 mein bhi and this fact i have seen correct na so even though you pass group 1 i have seen multiple even though you are adding only group 2 multiple attempt i have seen students are giving why because group 1 passed the indians are na thoda sa seena choda ho jata hai you pass group 1 na yes yes yeah i am saying the fact hey what hey aisa kya why you pin point to other person please don't do like this ha huh? please don't please please i am very i am really you think about yourself ha huh? don't think about others try to increase your ability why you are pin pointing other mistakes or other what quality why apne acche hain kabhi nahi 
believe me this type of nature na you will never be able to succeed in your life think about yourself try to identify what what limitations you have if you think about others na you will always think about others only you will never think about yourself understood so i started with the saying that i am not saying for any individual person so why you are taking i may i may be saying but about you only what is this what is this say sorry no no sorry to him correct na one second one more point for you if you say about others na others will go you remain there only correct this all facts i am saying because normally you need to understand this thing right now only otherwise time will go time will go and you will not be able to realize what we are actually doing correct one second focus on this i just want to say one thing that ca inter exam is very important because most of the time multiple attempt will come in ca inter only one second i am saying you all are very good student but then also one fact is there that everyone is not going to pass correct na means i am saying two points you are very good student but everyone is not going to pass that is also fact means good student does not pass are you able to understand what i am saying good student does not become ca correct na it means you need to be best if you want to become ca are you able to understand what i am saying the good student does not become ca everyone is good because you are in this classroom it means you you are good only otherwise to you have, you have never opted for ca only and you would have never passed ca foundation also so once you pass ca foundation you are a bunch of good student because ca foundation is also not easy exam fifth what was the percentage of pass in ca foundation 15% 20% so out of 100 you came out here na 20 aayo maximum 25 maximum 30 30 aaye na 70 to either they are writing only or they have left also so you came from that lot na so you are good but good student does not become ca this is also fact so if you want to become ca you need to think what is best in you and work on that work on that so what i have seen what i am observing today what i am observing what was the initial days of my class and this a lot of this lot of what um, i will say lot of uh, is not i will say you are not able to concentrate right now you are not able to focus i can understand from your face na you are not concentrating you are not focusing on classroom why is the case that case i don't know why this case is happening so go i will teach and go i will teach and go and this will not affect my life but the changes have happened isliye batana zaruri hai understood so that whatever you are discussing or whatever is come going in your mind i don't know कभी कभी ओवर हो जाता है कभी कभी ज्यादा हो जाता है ओवर कॉन्फिडेंट हो जाते हैं वी बिकम ओवर कॉन्फिडेंट एंड वंस वी बिकम ओवर कॉन्फिडेंट ट्रैक लूज हो जाता है डोंट बिकम रिलैक्स इफ यू बिकम रिलैक्स देन रिलैक्सेशन विल कम इन योर लाइफ अंडर डोंट बिकम रिलैक्स एवरी डे यू नीड थिंक अबाउट सी ओनली तो डोंट गो टू अदर ट्रैक आर यू गिंग वट एम सींग प्लीज कॉन्सेंट्रेट is concentrate is concentrate three days left three days left kar lo we see final padhai karenge are bolo na wapas ye enter karna hai nahi na nahi socho socho dard hoga thoda ha socho to takleef hona chahiye if you think after this exam whenever this attempt after that whether you are going to come for ca final ca inter 
Now there are both options available, huh? Both option is available. Understood? So please, because I am just observing some changes. Therefore, bolna pada mere ko. Okay? Understood? Please concentrate. Please concentrate, everyone. Concentrate. Chalo. So what I am saying, finance lease. Finance lease, everyone. Are limited. The lessee acquired the machinery on lease. When the fair value was three lakh fifty thousand, so if I compare this chapter with higher purchase, this is what cash price. This is cash price, correct. The lease terms cover the entire economic life of the asset. That is three year. Means one thing is clear in this question that it is a finance lease. Yes, sir. And the lessee pay one lakh fifty thousand at the end of each year. This is installment in that chapter. Total installment become higher purchase price. Means higher purchase price one lakh fifty thousand into three into three four lakh fifty thousand. The lessee has the lessee has guaranteed a residual value of rupees eleven thousand four hundred. So the lessee estimate the salvage value to be ten thousand at the end of lease term. Means at the end of lease term the expectation of the expectation of lesser is that the asset can be sold at what price 10000 this is the expectation of lesser correct but what lessee has done lessee has given one guarantee to whom lesser that he will purchase the asset at the end of lease term by giving a guaranteed value of what 11400 11400 Sometime just try to understand it might happen in the lease agreement there is no purchase option that option has not been given to purchase the asset at the end of lease term correct now are you able to understand? suppose I have taken one asset but there is no option to purchase the asset at the end of lease term but when we use the asset now we become emotionally attached to that we become emotionally connected to that are you agreeing what I am saying and therefore we may give a guarantee to the lesser that I want to purchase the asset at the end of lease term at this price if you want you give me otherwise bye bye so a guarantee has been given by whom lessee to lesser at what price 11,400 but what was the expectation of lesser but that is not known to lessee and therefore he may give any amount as guarantee it can be lower than 10,000 it can be higher than 10,000 it can be higher than 10,000. Right now, we are doing accounting in the books of lessee. So, can you say if you are doing accounting in the books of lessee, so whether we will consider the lesser expectation? No. So, that is Bakwa's point in this question because we are doing accounting treatment in the books of lessee. Have you understood this point? Have you understood this point? So, what I want to say, can you say this information is actually not relevant? This information is not at all relevant. Compute the value of machinery to be recognized by the lessee and finance charges every year. IRR. FM. FM means this is discount rate. This discount rate is 15% per annum and PV factor of 15% in 3 years is 2.283. This is annuity factor. Annuity factor. In FM you have done all these things. Correct. Now come to the solution we are doing question number question number 8 correct first we need to do classification of lease classification of lease means whether it is a finance or operating lease Deekho. Since the lease term cover the entire economic life of the asset, that is what? Three year. Correct? Understood. These will be classified as
फाइनेंस लीव दीज विल बी क्लासिफाइड एज फाइनेंस लीव एस पर विच ए एस एस पर ए एस नाइनटीन करेक्ट पॉइंट नंबर टू करेक्ट वैल्यू ऑफ एसेट टू बी रिकॉग्नाइज इन द बुक्स ऑफ वाट इन द बुक्स ऑफ लेसी इन द बुक्स ऑफ लेसी वट इज द नेम आर लिमिटेड करेक्ट रेड ऑन एज पर एस नाइनटीन As per AS 19, it will be lower of point number A. It will be lower of fair value of asset. That is how much? Three lakh fifty thousand. Point number B. Present value of minimum fees payment. Present value of minimum lease payment from the standpoint of from the standpoint of Let's see. Means we need to calculate minimum lease payment from the point of view of let's see because we are doing accounting treatment in the books of let's see because minimum lease payment from the point of let's see may be different from let's see understood correct so we need to understand what is minimum lease payment we need to understand what is minimum lease payment right on. is equal to it is present value of present value of agreed present value of this payment right on present value of this payment Correct. Plus GRB. GRB means guaranteed residual value. Guaranteed residual value. One guarantee is given, na? Guaranteed residual value. If you want to write down, write down full. But you can use GRB in exam. Popular term. Correct. You can use GRB in exam, popular term, but GRB full form is what? Once you write down guaranteed residual value in respect of lessee. Correct. Now we know what is our lease payment? One lakh fifty thousand. One lakh fifty thousand multiplied by present value annuity factor. PV factor, so PV factor is given how much? Two point two eight three. This to you know na. Every year, year one, year two, year three, correct? Some total of present value factor become present value annuity factor. Everyone knows this. What are you saying? And can you say what is guaranteed residual value? And that is payable at the end of third year. That is payable at the end of third year. You need to find out present value factor at what rate? What is IRR? 
15 percent can you calculate present value factor at the end of third year at the rate of 15 percent you'll do 1.15 divide by equal to equal to equal to 0 0.658 can you calculate it is coming how much three lakh forty two four fifty plus seven five seven five really point It is six five eight. Seven five zero one. Three four double nine five one. Since it is approximately equal to what? Three lakh fifty thousand only. Approximately, the difference coming because of decimal. If you would have taken entire decimal, it will come three lakh fifty thousand only. Means you can see initial fair value and present value are same, but if there is a difference, we'll take what lower one. So it will be lower of these two, lower of these two. So therefore, value of asset will be equal to three lakh fifty thousand. Understood? Have you understood this point? Yes, it is approximately three lakh fifty. Na? You can take this also. We'll take lower. If you want to take this, that is also correct. But it is approximately equal to three lakh fifty only, because we have taken some decimal. We have not taken entire decimal. Therefore, such difference is coming. Chalega? Then point number three. We'll do calculation of what finance charges. You remember in higher purchase also you need to calculate interest expense. That is nothing but finance charges. So for this, we'll prepare one table. You remember, year end. First, we write on opening, opening obligation. Obligation means liability. Means initially we need to record a liability of three lakh fifty thousand. Correct. Then on this we need to calculate interest at what rate? Fifteen percent. Then we'll say these payment. How much paid? These payment is paid at the end, and this will be closing obligation. Closing obligation. You understood this type of statement we used to prepare in higher purchase chapter also. What is the date given? Date to they have not given. So we'll say year and one, two, three. The so first year opening obligation how much? Three lakh fifty thousand. But the interest will come how much? Three lakh fifty thousand into fifteen percent how much? Fifty two thousand five hundred. And what is the lease payment? One lakh fifty thousand. What is the closing balance? This is two lakh fifty two thousand five hundred. Understood? Then two lakh fifty two thousand five hundred. Again, interest fifteen percent. This is thirty seven thousand eight seventy five. Then one second, how much paid? One lakh fifty thousand minus one lakh fifty thousand. How much? 
Have you understood this? Then one lakh forty thousand three seventy five. Yeah, last year always we should take a balancing figure. Interest, you remember higher purchase, correct? So last year it become one lakh fifty plus eleven thousand four hundred. Correct now. Or you can add on this is one lakh fifty thousand and the closing balance should be eleven thousand four hundred. Understood? So what is the balancing figure? Zero two five. Understood. Then we'll do what? Accounting. Correct. In this question, they have not asked accounting treatment. If asked, they will do. Correct. So can I say we are doing year one, year one. So first we'll do point number A on inception of contract, on inception of lease. What journal entry will do? This machinery will come in the books. So machinery account debit to what? Lease liability. There will be one lease liability, na? Lease liability at what amount? Three lakh fifty thousand. Three lakh fifty thousand. Correct. Then point number B. At year end, at year end, at year end, can I say at year end? First point will be for recognition of finance charges. We recognize interest expense for. What journal entry? Hello. Finance charges, or you can add on interest expense also. Account debit to what? To lease liability. Lease liability, na? Already we calculated how much for first year? Fifty-two thousand five hundred. Then on payment of what lease payment? So lease payment is one word. Okay, so on payment of lease payment, understood now? On payment of lease payment. It is lease liability account debit one lakh fifty to to bank one lakh fifty thousand. Then point number three depreciation depreciation will also come. For depreciation on leased asset, correct. What is the entry depreciation account debit to machinery 
or you can say accumulated depreciation okay divide by 3 because economic life is 3 and lease term is also 3 divide by 3 it is 3 lakh 50000 divide by 3 acha guaranteed residual value is not residual value for depreciation that is something different so grb is not residual value for depreciation that is something different so don't minus it okay so 3 lakh 50000 divide by 3 how much hmm? like this Done. Let's see done. Then same jana interval repeated for second year and third year. Done. Not complicated, huh? Not complicated. If you are understanding. Easy. I hope you have understood. Then we. do the accounting treatment then we'll take a break you want break of course yes sir so we'll read the accounting treatment from the books accounting treatment finance lease books of lessee books of lessee correct what have given for recognition of lease at the inception of lease at the inception of lease the lessee should recognize the lease as an asset and a liability miss what jana entry lease asset account debit to lease liability we'll call it lease liability chalega lease asset to lease liability or you can say lesser also to lesser okay first jana entry understood then such recognition is made at fair value of asset on inception of lease or present value of mlp mlp means mlp minimum lease payment mlp from the standpoint of lessee which ever is lower which ever is lower now one doubt will come so what is mlp what is mlp One doubt will come. Correct. Minimum lease payment. That is full form. What is MLP? So let us understand what is the meaning of MLP. So MLP, you can see in the previous page, minimum lease payment. From the standpoint of view of lessee and from lessee, it will be different. So right now we are doing from which point of view? Lessee. So MLP from the standpoint of view of lessee. Can you see it will be total lease term over lease term? Total sorry, total lease payment over lease term. We have done one lakh fifty, one lakh fifty, one lakh fifty over lease term plus guaranteed residual value in respect of lessee plus GRB in respect of lessee. We have done this only. Same thing we have done. So total lease payment over lease term. total lease payment over lease term plus grb in respect of lessee so what is grb so in grb is nothing but residual value guaranteed by lessee or on behalf of lessee means any other person on behalf of lessee has given guarantee so normally it might it might happen some related person may give guarantee on behalf of lessee so either guarantee given by lessee or on behalf of Let's see. That will be GRB. That will be given in the question. Correct. Understood. Now one doubt will come, sir. What is what is this lease payment? So this lease payment, this lease payment will include all payment made by let's see to lesser, but some payment will not be included. Are you getting what I am saying? come to lease payment lease payment abhi we have done we are going reverse ha huh? reverse ja rahe hain we are going reverse na please say, let us come to one second reverse i started with accounting treatment 
I say first Jana it will be done what? What is Jana entry? Lease asset to lease liability will be done at what value? Lower of this Jana entry will be done at lower of initial fair value or present value of minimum lease payment from the standpoint of lessee, whichever is lower. Then I say sir, what is MLP? So we went to MLP. So MLP means what? Total lease payment over lease term plus GRB in respect of lessee. What is GRB in respect of lessee? Residual value guaranteed by lessee or on behalf of lessee. Then I say sir, what is total lease payment? So we are discussing this total lease payment now. Correct. So lease payment comprise minimum payment payable over lease term and the payment required to exercise this purchase option in the lessee if the lessee has an option to purchase the asset at a price which is expected to be sufficiently lower than the fair value of the date when the option become exercisable correct means point number two of that classification we have done means there may be some purchase option price ignore that one second ek bar ignore karo this means can is lease payment will include what minimum amount payable means agreed agreed can is agreed lease payment this will be agreed lease payment correct so can is a lease payment is nothing but agreed lease payment whatever is given the contract whatever is given the contract in the contract 1 lakh 50 1 lakh 50 1 lakh 50 was given so that become lease payment but following payment made by lessee to lesser is not included in lease payment there is some payment which is paid by lessee to as per agreement only but will not be a part of lease payment first payment is contingent rent what is the meaning of contingent rent? Any rent which is payable on happening or non happening of uncertain future event. What happened? Just write one. Contingent rent means what? I will just try to understand this lease payment is for the use of the asset. For the use means can I say lease payment should include only payment which is made for the use of the asset. If you are paying anything not because of the use of the asset, should not be included. What happened with me when I started this coaching uh, classes for the first time? So that time funds was limited. So I have taken a very small classroom of 25 students. 25 students means that will also come. I was not knowing. The 25 students will also not come. I don't know. Though. Correct now. So I have taken a very small classroom and the market rent that time was 10,000. Market rent. Correct now. So we have done agreement and we started. I started teaching. First batch, three students came, then increase, 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 dhere, dhere. So after five, six batch, students started coming. Means that is after one and a half year. After one and a half year of teaching, students started coming. Then it was more than 25. Means one batch, it was overcrowded. Ho gaya. Correct now. But I have a limited step, so I need to close the booking. But 25, so I will not take 25. I am Indian now. I have taken 35. Bolna yes or no? Capacity was 25, but bad job. Hai. Correct na. I want we want maximum money na. So the best size was 35, but what was the capacity? 25. This information went to what? Honor and honor become greedy. Achha, 35. Next time agreement he has made, he said market rent is 10,000 plus I will take additional. 200 for each student. Can I say he become greedy? Understood now. If the best size exceed 20, if the best size exceed 20, what he said? 35, I, the capacity was not there, but I was allowing 35 students, so he become greedy. He started taking some money out of my income that is known as contingent rent. The so contingent rent is for the use of the asset or is it is for, for other purpose other than the use of asset now market rent was 10,000 I was paying that 
means anything which you are paying over and above that that is actually not for the use of the asset and therefore that is not a part of lease payment so this type of payment will be charged to pl as an expense as and when they are incurred but will not be included as a part of lease payment understood correct so contingent rent means what contingent rent are the lease payment based on a factor other than passage of time that is percentage sales amount of usage price etc 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 means simple word anything paid over and above market rent become contingent rent if it is based on some factor correct yes sir then any cost for services for example the lesser may provide any services for example maintenance services security services etc so that will be extra amount paid but that is not for the use of the asset so that is not a part of lease payment that will be charged to pl as an expense as and when they are incurred correct for example the third taxes to be paid and reimbursed to the lesser sometimes for example property tax property tax is paid by the owner but owner will recover from lessee so that is not for the use of the asset that is for the ownership that is for the ownership now nah? are you getting so that should be if that tax is paid or reimbursed to the lesser that is not included in lease payment that will be charged to pl as an expense as and when they are incurred so all payment agreed are not lease payment so these are some example which are not a part of lease payment this much you understood one second come one second come to this journal entry now you will say but what is the first journal entry lease asset to lease liability at what amount at what amount lower of fair value of lease asset or present value of minimum lease payment from the standpoint of lessee correct what is mlp that is the full form what is minimum lease payment total lease payment over lease term plus grb in respect of lessee what is grb in respect of lessee residual value guaranteed by lessee or on behalf of lessee what is lease payment any amount agreed to be paid by lessee to lesser but it will not include contingent rent cost of services and taxes paid or reimbursed to lesser understood kuch hua kya na present value of minimum lease payment should be calculated using interest rate implicit in the lease and that will be given the question interest rate was given so we can calculate present value yes sir then next point for initial direct cost of finance lease means it might happen there are some initial direct cost incurred by lessee for obtaining that lease correct now some initial direct cost incurred so that will be capitalized to the asset that will be capitalized to the asset what journal entry will do lease asset account debit to bank so any initial direct cost for that particular lease will be capitalized to the cost price of asset will do lease asset account debit to bank but this normally they don't ask this point in exam for payment of lease rent on due date means for payment of lease payment so i have given one compound journal entry yahan par but in in solution we have done separate journal entry compound journal entry we can do lease liability account debit finance charges account debit to what bank but i have given two journal entry first finance charges account debit to lease liability and then lease liability account debit to bank but we can do this journal entry also correct yes sir the last the pre for contingent rent cost of services and taxes these are recognized as an expense as and when they are incurred charge to pl charge to pl for charging depreciation what journal entry depreciation account debit to accumulated depreciation but they have given one point if ownership is transferred at the end of lease term then depreciation will be calculated based on useful life if ownership is transferred at the end of lease term but if ownership is not transferred at the end of lease term then depreciation will be calculated based on lease term or useful life which ever is lower understood this point lease term or useful life which ever is lower just try to understand i have taken one asset for 5 year even though economic life is 10 year so i will use the asset for 5 year 
Correct. For me, useful has become what? Five year. So depreciation should be charged for the least time only. But if you can use the asset only for four year, then then four year. So least term or useful life, whichever is lower. But if ownership is transferred at the end of lease term, then it will be based on useful life only. It will be based on useful life. So this is the point they have given. You can read by your own. But the general entry is depreciation to accumulated depreciation. Let's see over. Lesser after break. Okay. Can we start once again, everyone? Yes, sir. Now, before break, we completed accounting treatment in the books of Lessee for for finance lease. Okay. Now, finance lease. So, Lessee, we have understood. We'll take some more question. But before that, let us come to accounting treatment in the books of Lessee. Read down. This was point number. Which point number? Point number. Write down here for treatment refer book refer book. Okay, so that you can refer book. For the treatment, then come to point number five. Accounting treatment for finance lease. Books of lesser, correct. Now, of course, can I say in the books of lesser, the asset will be derecognized. The asset will be derecognized, correct. Understood. But the accounting treatment will be de will depend upon where this lesser is a manufacturer or is a non-manufacturer. Means here the lesser can be manufacturer, manufacturer or dealer. Correct. Or he can be non-manufacturer or dealer. Non-manufacturer dealer. Means it can be a financing company, just like we have done in NBFC, correct? Now so it can be a financing company, or he can be a manufacturer. So accounting treatment based on whether he is a manufacturer or he is a non-manufacturer, correct? Means can I say if he is a manufacturer, then we should recognize revenue. We should recognize revenue, correct? And if he is a non-manufacturer, so can you say it will be sale of asset? It will be considered as sale of asset. When I am saying revenue, revenue means sale of inventory. Sale of what? Inventory. I hope you are understanding what I am saying. Correct? Understood? Correct. So it will be based on the status of lesser. So just write down. Point number one. On inception of lease, on inception of lease, what general entry will be done? Point number A if lesser is a manufacturer. Is a manufacturer or dealer? So general entry will be simple. Debtor account debit to sales. So here instead of debtor, we write down lease receivable. Write down lease receivable. Correct now. Lease receivable account debit to sales. 
revenue understood and this jana entry will be done with the amount of net investment now what is net investment that we need to understand net investment in lease the term is net investment lease i said now in this chapter we have understood as per higher purchase so i am just teaching you this chapter from technical terms point of view already we have done in the books of lessee minimum lease payment grv these are technical terms now we are coming in the books of lesser so this jana entry will be done with what amount with the amount of net investment now what is net investment i need to explain correct understood and can i say can i say one more jana entry will be done because once you recognize revenue inventory will be recognized as an expense correct so what jana entry will do cost of sales cost of sales will be recognized to what inventory inventory will become expense inventory or purchase account normally we open purchase account na so the purchase account will be transferred to pl as an expense but purchase is nothing but inventory purchase is nothing but inventory this is with what with carrying amount of with carrying amount of inventory sold inventory sold have you understood this point correct it means can i say if he is a manufacturer so automatically profit will be calculated in sopl by sale minus cost of sales so automatically profit will be calculated in statement of pl automatically profit will be calculated in statement of pl now point number 2 if lesser is what non manufacturer non manufacturer or dealer means is a financing company etc then of course can i say first they will purchase the asset and then that asset will be given on lease so that asset is not an inventory it is just like a sale of asset jana entry what jana entry will do lease receivable lease receivable account debit to asset correct na lease receivable account debit to asset this lease receivable with the amount of net investment now what is net investment i need to explain correct and asset with the carrying amount of asset carrying amount of asset can you see any difference in this jana entry will be gain or loss so difference will be gain or loss on sale gain or loss on sale correct i think jana entry you have understood jana entry you have understood in case of higher purchase in the books of higher vendor you have done first jana entry means you have done jana entry uh, higher purchaser account debit to sales means you have assumed that that higher vendor is a manufacturer or dealer in that chapter in that chapter understood correct now only now our concentration will be what what is net investment what is net investment so net investment is nothing but what present value of gross investment present value of gross investment the one doubt will come sir what is gross investment correct understood one thing is clear that gross investment is future value and net investment is present value correct now so because you are calculating present value of gross investment so gross is inclusive of interest gross means inclusive of interest and net means exclusive of interest the so present value is always exclusive of interest correct understood so sir what is gross investment that we need to understand the so, gross investment 
क्रॉस इन्वेस्टमेंट इज इक्वल टू वाट कैन से इट इज मिनिमम लीज पेमेंट फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ लेसर मिनिमम लीज पेमेंट ना फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ लेसर मिनिमम लीज पेमेंट फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ लेसर दे यू हैव द मिनिमम लीज पेमेंट फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ लेसी मींस लेसर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एंड लेसी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू मे बी डिफरेंट करेक्ट प्लस व्हाट प्लस व्हाट यूजीआरबी यूजीआरबी मींस व्हाट अनगारंटेड रेसिड वैल्यू प्लस अनगारंटेड रेसिड वैल्यू इफ यू वांट टू राइट डाउन राइट डाउन इट इज नथिंग बट अनगारंटेड अनगारंटेड residual value unguaranteed residual value correct understood so now we need to understand what is mlp what is ugrb so mlp from the point of view of lesser is equal to lease payment lease payment over lease term over lease term लीज पेमेंट ओवर लीज टर्म मीन्स एग्रीड लीज पेमेंट करेक्ट ना एज पर एग्रीमेंट बोलो या सुनो प्लस वाट प्लस वाट जी आर बी इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ वाट लेसर इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ लेसर देर यू हैव डन लीज पेमेंट ओवर लीज टर्म प्लस जीआरबी इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ लेसी ये इट इज जीआरबी इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ लेसर अब फ्रॉम एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वट एवर क्वेश्चन दे हैव गिवन बोथ जीआरबी आर सेम बट प्रैक्टिकली इट कैन बी डिफरेंट ऑल्सो प्रैक्टिकली इट कैन बी डिफरेंट आर यू एबल टू एंड फॉर्मुला रिमेन सेम ओनली लीज पेमेंट ऑफ लीज टर्म प्लस जीआरबी इन रेस्पेक्ट लेसर इट कम्स नाउ वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ जीआरबी इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ लेसर इट मीन्स वाट residual value residual value guaranteed by residual value guaranteed by pata by whom by lessee or on behalf of behalf of what लेसी मीन्स आई दर लेसी विल गिव गारंटी और ऑन बिहा ऑफ लेसी सम अदर रिलेटेड पर्सन विल गिव गारंटी बट कैन से एनी अदर थर्ड पार्टी कैन ऑल्सो गिव गारंटी मीन्स लेसर तो कैन रिसीव गारंटी फ्रॉम एनी पर्सन ना अर्गिंग मीन्स लेसी कैन गिव गारंटी और ऑन बिहा ऑफ लेसी सम रिलेटेड पर्सन कैन गिव गारंटी और एनी अदर थर्ड पार्टी can give guarantee that i will purchase the asset and the end of lease term don't worry correct na so or given by miss residue value residue value guaranteed by third party third party bole ya suno pata which will be taken higher or lower higher only because can lesser is interested with higher amount higher guaranteed amount so from lesser point of view From lesser point of view, it will be higher of these two, higher of these two. Correct. But normally, from examination point of view, they not they don't give this amount. So, can you say GRB in respect of lessee, in respect lesser, will become same from examination point of view if they have not given guaranteed given guarantee given by third party. Are you able to understand? But if guarantee is given by third party, is suppose ten thousand, it is given eight thousand. So for lessee accounting, you have consider eight, but for lesser accounting, you will consider ten thousand. Understood? I hope you have understood this point. Correct? This have you understood? Yes, sir. We have understood. Correct? Yes, sir. Now MLP from the point of lesser, you understood? GRB in respect of lesser, you have understood? Now what? UGRB. So UGRB means what? Unguaranteed residual value. So can you say it will be equal to expected residual value of lesser minus guarantee received? That become unguaranteed amount. Suppose suppose lesser is expecting ten thousand, but we receive guarantee of only eight thousand. So what is unguaranteed? Unguaranteed is two thousand. So can you say it will become expected? 
एक्सपेक्टेड रेसिडल वैल्यू माइनस वाट गारंटेड रेसिडल वैल्यू इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ लेसर इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ लेसर अंडरस्टूड बोलो दिस मच एनी डाउट हैव यू अंडरस्टूड Have you understood this much? Any doubt? Have you understood? Tell me. What will be Jana entry? Jana entry will be lease receivable account debit to sales and lease receivable account debit to asset. The difference will be transferred to gain and loss. We are here to understand what will be the amount of lease receivable. The amount of lease receivable will be equal to Net investment. Net investment is equal to present value of gross investment. Gross investment is equal to MLP from the point of view of lesser plus UGRV. What is MLP from the point of lesser? Total lease payment. Total lease payment over total lease payment over lease term plus GRV in respect of GRV in respect of lesser. What is UGRV? Expected residual value plus Minus GRB means just try to understand. Can I say in this way, everyone? The gross investment is equal to is equal to MLP from the point of lesser plus UGRB, and MLP is nothing but MLP is nothing but lease payment plus GRB plus UGRB, and this is nothing but Lease payment plus ERB. Bolo. Plus ERB. Have you understood? But then also don't use this formula in exam. Use this formula in exam. Huh? Always. Always use this formula. MLP plus use ERB. Don't say LP plus ERB. Correct. So this is only to explain you. But can you say gross investment is equal to MLP from the point of view of lesser plus UGRB. UGRB means what? Unguaranteed residual value. Have you understood? Correct. Any doubt? Now, if you understood this, so all questions you can do because in exam they will ask this much only. They will not go beyond this. From examination point of view, let's just write down. This is first general entry you have understood on inception of lease. On inception lease, write down point number two. Point number two for for receive top lease payment on due date. Correct now. On due date, so what general entry will be done? Bank account debit. Bank account debit. To can is a finance income. To finance income. And to is receivable. Lease receivable. Now, understood this much? Yes. Does this general entry have you understood? Correct. Then, just write down one note. Present value of present value of gross investment. Is calculated by applying interest rate implicit on lease. Interest rate implicit on lease. 
the present present value of gross investment will be calculated by applying interest rate implicit on lease so it means we need to understand how to calculate interest rate implicit on lease correct right on. interest rate implicit on lease interest rate implicit on lease is the discount rate at which is the discount rate at which what at which at which what hello at which present value of gross investment present value of gross investment now you know what is present value of gross investment means present value of mlp and present value of unguaranteed residual value correct the present value of gross investment is equal to what is equal to initial fair value of leased asset initial fair value of leased asset it means you need to calculate interest rate implicit on lease by applying the concept of irr you know how to calculate irr can you see if gross investment is given and initial fair value is given you can calculate irr so at which point of means at which interest rate present value of gross investment will be equal to fair value of leased asset that interest rate will become interest rate implicit on lease and that will become discount rate that will become discount rate have you understood this point bolo correct any doubt let me take one question to understand this first question question number 1 what do you understand by the term interest rate implicit on lease right now only i have given interest rate implicit on lease is the discount rate at which present value of gross investment present value of gross investment means what present value of mlp from the standpoint of your lesser plus present value of unguaranteed residual value is equal to initial fair value of leased asset let's see what the answer has been given correct as per as 19 interest rate implicit in the lease is the discount rate at which at which the means the discount rate that causes the aggregate present value of minimum lease payment under a finance lease from the standpoint of lesser and any unguaranteed residual value to be equal to fair value of leased asset understood correct then what they have given check karenge they have given annual lease rent 80000 at the end of each year lease period 5 year GRB forty thousand, UGRB twenty four thousand, fair value at the inception lease three lakh twenty thousand. Discount rate for the first five year is at a rate of ten percent, at a rate of fourteen percent. This question I was asking exam, but can you, this is FM question? Correct now FM question, but can be asked in accounts also. You will do, I will do. Right on question number one, calculation of. interest rate implicit on lease correct read on year end how many year end 1 2 3 4 5 then we read on gross investment gross investment na First year how much? Eighty thousand, eighty thousand, eighty thousand, eighty thousand, eighty thousand. Then at the end of five year, there will be GRB also. How much GRB? GRB will be how much? And UGRB how much? 
20 so can you say at the end of 5 years this 3 amount will come then first let us calculate present value at a rate of 10 percent then calculate present value at a rate of 14 percent because they have given and you they have given present value factor for this so we will take this only don't take any other interest rate however you can take any interest rate also you can take 15 percent you can take 12 percent also correct but will not take because they have given this so can you give me present value first no just give me present value calculate and give total total i don't have time total this to calculation you can do factor is given do it Oh. Have you understood what I have done this? This you have understood now? How much? 3,42,945 5 14 percent how much 3 lakh 7 thousand 76 and what is the fair value 3 lakh it is coming between these two so we can take 10 percent and 14 percent have a given that will come between only correct understood so but the, what will be the interest rate you can apply one formula you will take higher rate higher is what for you can start with lower rate better start from lower rate 10 percent higher rate than minus lower rate than plus so 10 percent plus 3 lakh 42,945 minus what 3 lakh 20,000 this formula you know now divided by what 3,42,945 minus 3,7,776 into into 4 percent can I see if you forgot this formula refer FM faculty I will not explain if you forgot refer FM subject okay chalega bata so can you give me what is the interest rate How much? Bolo. Twelve point six one percent. So this become answer. Correct. So there are actually four or five questions which they normally ask. First question we have done for Lessi. Either they will ask that question or they will ask this question. Two questions we have done. Three question more, the chapter is over. But we need to cover entire point. Therefore, I will teach you. But two question have you understood? Very simple. Means this is FM only. I am doing a revision of FM. Correct. So from exam point to be super simple chapter if you revise and go dot to dot question will come you need to just write down calculate it got it and if you forgot grb ugrb then you will do some mistake so just revise before exam 
Can we take one more question? Yes, yes sir. The second type of question. Question number three. S Square Private Limited has taken machinery on lease from SK Limited. The information is as under lease term 4 year, fair value on inception 20 lakh, lease rent itna, GRB itna, expected residual itna. So, what is UGRB? 3,75 minus. 3,75 minus 1,25, how much? 2,50,000 Implicit interest rate means 15% given, thank you very much Discount rate also given, but we can calculate But one thing, if they have given these, 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 these Can you use 3 decimal? Means they have given 4 decimal, na? Now can you use 3 decimal? Can you use 2 decimal? Can you use 6 decimal? Can you use unlimited decimal? No if they have given this, use this, even though it is wrong. Even though it is wrong. And if you use some other, and they will 100% deduct marks. Because you are not respecting their information. So they will not respect to you. Huh? So please, normally I have seen student, even though given, they will maja aata hai, they will calculate. Uh, first of all, they will do direct calculation. Correct? Uh, if the, even though you are not doing direct, you will take 3 decimal. So normally your FM teacher might have said 3 or 4. Either take 3 decimal or 4. Normally we should take 4 if question is silent. But you can take 3 also. If question is silent, you can take 3 decimal, you can take 4 decimal, whatever you have taken, write down. But if question is provided, use that decimal. In FM also, huh? correct. Understood. So you now we can do it. What day marks? Calculate the value of lease liability as per AS 19. We can do lease liability means in the books of lessee. In the books of lessee, but all. question number. So they have asked you to calculate value of value of lease liability. Lease liability means in the books of lessee. Means whether you will consider UGRB. No. You will not consider UGRB in the books of lessee. UGRB will come only in the books of lesser. Understood? But it will be lower of? It will be lower now. Lower of what? Point number A. Initial fair value. Pull not A. Of asset, how much given? 20. 20 lakh. And what? What of it? Present value of minimum lease payment from the standpoint of view of lessee. This will be equal to what? Lease payment, how much given? How much given? 6 lakh. 25,000. Can you give me annuity factor? Some total of all factors? Or you can do in table also. Huh? But I say can you give me annuity factor? 2 point? No, don't use calculator. Use the information given. Why? How much? 855. हो गया 8550 ओके प्लस व्हाट व्हाट इज यूजीआरबी विल यू टेक यूजीआरबी तो आई एम जस्ट आस्किंग रे व्हाट इज जीआरबी 1 लाख पता विल यू टेक यूजीआरबी what is the fourth year? Na? Four year? Na? How much? Zero point five seven one eight. You have calculator? Calculate. Eight 
एटीन लैख फिफ्टी फाइव थाउजेंड तो कह रहे बिकॉज ऑफ यू जी आर बी इट कैन बी लोअर देन दिस बिकॉज कह रहे इफ इट इज यू जी आर बी ऑल्सो तो नॉर्मली प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ ग्रॉस इन्वेस्टमेंट विल बी मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम विल बी इक्वल टू फेयर वैल्यू अलग्रिंग तो इट कैन बी दिस एम एल पी मीन्स प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ एम एल पी कैन बी लोअर ऑफ दिस एंड देर फॉर दे है लोअर अंडरस्टूड अंडरस्टूड वाइट इज लोअर तो आईदर फेयर वैल्यू और प्रेजेंट वैल्यू विच एवर इज लोअर तो दे आर फोर वैल्यू ऑफ लीज लाइबिलिटी विल बी इक्वल टू एटीन लैख फिफ्टी फाइव इस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन वेरी सिंपल चलेगा क्वेश्चन फोर दिस सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन विच दे मे आस्क थर्ड टाइप प्रकाश लिमिटेड लीज द मशीन टू बादल लिमिटेड ऑन द फॉलोइंग टर्म्स यू नो बादल यू नो प्रकाश Yes, sir. Fair value machine is forty-eight lakh. Lease term five year. Lease rent up per annum eight. GRB one point six. Expected residual value three. So what is UGRB? One point four zero. Internal rate of return given fifteen percent. Discount rate once again given. Thank you very much. Asset and unearned finance income. Unearned finance income. What is unearned finance income? One second. Finance income means from the point of view of lesser. So one thing is clear from the point of view of lesser. So what will be unearned finance income? The finance income which is not yet earned. Finance income which is not yet earned. So what will be unearned finance income? How to calculate unearned finance income? Means they have asked you to calculate unearned finance income. Means total interest income. So what will be total interest income? Lease price. What is lease price? Means can I say gross investment minus net investment? ऐसे बोलना future value minus present value. You are FM student ना? So if you are FM student, say future value minus present value. Because in CA final, inter accounting will be discounting. This is the start of CA final chapter and end of CA inter. Means CA final once you enter now, you will see everything we are discounting. Correct. In CA final, accounting is going to become discounting, and therefore discounting is very important concept. Are we getting? Correct. So in CA final, when will come, your most of the accounting is going to change. Concept remains same, but the approach will be different. Approach will be different. So always I say this AS nineteen is end of the enter, but this chapter, this uh, this type of concept will become a start of CA final. Understood? Like a darani rao, motivate kar rao. Understood? So if you have understood this, so you will understand CA final also. Normally, from my point of view, AS nineteen should not be given in CA inter. But given, you are understanding also. I mean, AS twenty two from my point of view should not be given in CA inter. But when I will teach, you will understand that also. So it means you can understand anything. And I always say CA inter and CA final are same. Student remain same. The level of understanding remain same. The Dif difference is that you are in CA inter, they are in CA final. They need to write one exam. You write down two exam. The difference is, I think I simply goli maro. Correct. Got it? What I am saying? So, fada fad pass karo. Pass C A inter. Come to C A final. Do article C. Ban jao C A. Correct. Understood. Correct. One thing is, one thing is very good that one thing I just want to appreciate. Appreciate that. What I want to appreciate that. whatever you have said today to ca foundation student correct na i will say not all 
but 70% is correct. And if you apply 50% of that, you will become CA. But you don't apply. You don't apply, that also I know. So one thing is clear that when you say something to others, na, you become Jnani. You become Jnani. But when it is to apply to yourself, you become a Jnani. Same thing with me also. It is not. We all are same. Only there is a difference of age. Understood, na? Believe me, sometimes I also become very, all moments will come in our life. Sometimes we'll go to depression. Seven days, eight days, it happens with my life also. Seven days, eight days, we are not able to work out. We'll go into depression. Then suddenly, we'll try to motivate ourselves. Because we know how to motivate ourselves. Understood. Sometimes it happens. The work is not as whatever we require. We are not able to perform as what we are, what we have expected. It happens with everyone. So what I want to say, I am very much impressed or I am very much happy that whatever you have said today, that is correct only. But try to apply that. Try to apply. If you started applying that now, then maja aata hai. Correct? Normally what happens, ki we listen. Correct? And we forward it. They say, what happened? Normally, in your WhatsApp group, message will come, we read it, we will forward it, we will not apply it. Understood, na? What happened? Just try it on. Same thing, you receive that whatever the words is not your words. I don't know whether it is your words or whatever. But whatever you have said, you are forwarding. But whether you are applying, Understand what I am saying? Whether you are applying that, if you started applying that, then CA is not complicated. CA is not complicated. Don't forward. Some portion you should retain also. You should retain. Understood? Correct. So I am happy whatever you have said. Okay. Try to apply that. Okay. So unearned finance income is what? Future value minus what? Present value means gross investment minus? Net investment. Gross investment means what? Future value. Net investment means what? Now you know what is gross investment. You know what is net investment. Let us do it. So can we do it? So we are doing question number 4. Calculation of Calculation of Gross investment and net investment year end one, two, three, four, five. Right. Gross investment. It will include lease payment. Can you give me lease payment? What is given? How much lakhs every year? 8 lakh. So it is 8 lakh. 8 lakh. 8 lakh. 8 lakh. Last year it will be 8 lakh. Or you can write down in this way also. This total become how much? You can write on this way also, better presentation. How much? 40 lakh, na? So this become ease payment. Then plus GRB. GRB how much? This is GRB also at the end of 5th year. So GRB how much? 1,60,000. So this become MLP. Correct now. How much? 41 lakh 60,000. Then at the end of 5 years, you will add what? UGRB how much? 1 lakh 40,000. It become how much? 43 lakh. This become what? Gross investment. Understood. 
करेक्ट ना समिया दिस इज जी आर बी दिस इज यू जी आर बी हैव अंडरस्टूड बेटर प्रेजेंटेशन चलेगा देन यू विल कैलकुलेट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू फैक्टर एट वाट रेट फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑलरेडी गिवन यू कैन राइट डाउन देन यू कैलकुलेट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू यू कैन यू गिव मी दिस देन दिस देन दिस प्रेजेंट वैल्यू means this is what total then this total then this total फर्स्ट वन ट्वेंटी सिक्स एटी टू थाउजेंड देन करेक्ट ट्वेंटी सिक्स लैक एटी वन थाउजेंड सेवन सिक्सटी यू हैव टेकन द फैक्टर गिवन ना एटी वन थाउजेंड सेवन सिक्सटी देन जी आर बी इज वॉट सेवेंटी नाइन फाइव फिफ्टी टू टोटल ट्वेंटी सेवन लैख Three hundred twelve. Then sixty-nine thousand six zero eight. Total twenty-eight lakh thirty thousand nine twenty. Is it correct? Correct only. Understood. So can you see this become gross investment? This become net investment. So therefore, on earned finance income, don't write down this in exam. Write down full. On earned finance income will be equal to gross investment minus net investment. So gross investment forty three lakh minus what? Twenty eight lakh thirty thousand nine twenty. So, what is the unearned finance income? Forty-one lakh, fourteen lakh, fourteen lakh sixty-nine thousand. Zero zero. But this is finance income for how many year? Five year. So, will be amortizing five year. Understood. Will be amortized in five years. How you will amortize? Divide by what? No lie. Amortization means SL method always. Huh? Amortization always SLM. Maza aata. Divide by five. We just need to calculate finance income on. What opening balance outstanding? Nah, we same thing. Whatever we have done for finance charges, apply that statement. If they have not asked, your solution is over, huh? Solution is over. But suppose they ask what? Suppose point number two. Calculate what? Finance income of every year. Suppose. Are you getting? Finance income of each year. 
so what you will do the here and 1 2 3 4 5 what is opening receivable or means Madam full opening receivable there we have written opening liability here opening receivable will be what net investment means this amount 28 lakh 30,000, 920, correct now, nah? then interest at what rate, 15%, then these payment, then closing receivable, now we will calculate what, interest can you calculate, 28 lakh 30,000, 920 into 15%, how much, 4 lakh 24,638, minus what, what is the lease payment, 8 lakh. Have you understood? So, what amount is coming? It is 24 lakh 55,558. Then 24 lakh 55,558. This you can complete now. It becomes 3 lakh 68,334. Then 8 lakh. How much? Twenty lakh twenty three thousand eight ninety two. Twenty lakh twenty three thousand eight ninety two. Then what? Fifteen percent. Three lakh three thousand five eight four. It is eight lakh. How much? Fifteen lakh twenty seven thousand four seventy six. Fifteen lakh twenty seven thousand four seventy six. Two lakh twenty nine thousand one twenty one. One second eight lakh. Nine lakh fifty six five five ninety seven. Now balancing figure. The balancing figure will be this eight lakh. And what is GRB plus UGRB total? That you write down in closing balance. Okay. So this is what is balancing figure coming. One lakh forty three thousand and the total of these will be total this now check karo. fourteen lakh sixty nine thousand zero eighty check karo. fourteen lakh sixty nine thousand zero eighty this we are doing correct only have you understood? That is how to amortize. This we are amortizing in how many years? Five years. By applying rate of interest. Understood? This also understood. Means if they ask Jana entry, so let us do that also for practice. Suppose they ask Jana entry in the books of We are doing year one. First Jana entry will be what? Lease receivable. Account debit to. If nothing is given, assume what? Non manufacturer asset. So lease receivable, how much? 28 lakh 30,000. 920 na? to asset whether the carrying amount of asset given they have not given na? fair value given is fair value
So ignore, we can't do the journal entry because this is not given. Okay. Correct. Carrying amount is not given. Correct. If given, then we can do it. Correct. Then the second journal entry will what? The bank account, how much you have received at year end? You receive 8 lakh to finance income how much? First year and the balance will be what? 2 is receivable how much? 3,75,000 362 understood simple correct then this journal entry will be repeated normally in this chapter they ask first year journal entry in this chapter they will ask first year journal entry because second year third year journal entry remain same this also done hello then so accounting treatment in the books of lesser also done everyone so we have understood what you can see we have understood what lease payment Lease payment we understood. Minimum lease payment, if you see from the point of lesser, minimum lease payment from the point lessee we have done is lease payment over lease term plus GRB in respect of GRB in respect of lessee. Now it becomes total lease payment over lease term plus GRB in respect of lesser, and that is the residual value guaranteed by lessee or beyond of lessee. Or by any independent third party who are financially capable. Understood? Means that is not required. Third party who are financially capable means any anyone has given guarantee, he must be financially capable. Nah? If you will give guarantee, then you are financially capable because you are chartered accountant. But any engineer student, if you are giving guarantee, doubt aa jayega. Understood? Yes, sir. Then unguaranteed residual value is the amount by which residual value of asset exceed guaranteed residual value then interest rate implicit in the lease that also we have understood is a discount rate at inception of the lease that causes the aggregate present value of minimum lease payment from the standpoint of view of lesser plus any unguaranteed residual value accruing to the lesser to be equal to the what fair value of Leased asset. That only I have given shortcut. Present value of gross investment must be equal to fair value. Correct. Then we have done books of lessee. Now books of lesser. I hope you have understood this also. For recognition lease at inception lease, if lesser is a manufacturer dealer, what general entry is receivable to sales net investment? If lesser is a not a manufacturer dealer, lease receivable to asset net investment book value. Any difference will be recognized in as gain or loss on sale of asset net investment is equal to gross investment minus unearned finance income correct gross investment is equal to mlp from the standpoint of view of lesser plus ugrb unearned finance income is equal to gross investment minus present value of gross investment thus net investment is equal to present value of gross investment kya bolta hai everything is same only na the present value of minimum lease payment should be calculated by using interest rate interest rate implicit in the, sorry interest rate implicit in the lease so can you see interest rate implicit in the lease is calculated from lesser point of view because that uses the concept of ugrb so it is not calculated from lessee point of view so you can see what is given in the books of lessee ki the present value of minimum lease payment should be calculated by using interest rate implicit in lease but if it cannot be determined use lessee incremental borrowing rate means what they said for lessee also use the same interest rate but that interest rate is calculated by whom lesser from the point of lesser now it might happen lessee is not able to determine that then use lessee incremental borrowing rate not understood 
वन सेकेंड द इंटरेस्ट रेट इम्प्लीसिट ऑन लीज इज कैलकुलेटेड फ्रॉम हुज पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू लेस सर नो आई एम लेस सी तो आई एम डूइंग अकाउंटिंग इन माई बुक्स तो इट माइट एपन आई डोंट नो वट इज यू जी आर बी यू जी आर बी आई डोंट नो ना तो कैन आई कैलकुलेट दैट रेट नो इट माइट एपन इट इज गिवन इन एग्रीमेंट इफ गिवन इन एग्रीमेंट थैंक यू वेरी मच बट इफ नॉट गिवन इन एग्रीमेंट कैन आई कैलकुलेट दैट नो तो इन दैट केस वट ए एस नाइनटीन से इज दैट इफ इंटरेस्ट रेट इम्प्लीस लीज इज नॉट कैलकुलेटेड बाई लेसी यूज लेसी इंक्रीमेंटल बोरिंग रेट मीन्स इन द बुक्स ऑफ लेसर यूज वॉट इंटरेस्ट रेट इम्प्लीसिट इन लीज बट इन द बुक्स ऑफ लेसी आई दर यूज वॉट इंटरेस्ट रेट इम्प्लीसिट इन लीज गिव एन द क्वेश्चन इफ नॉट गिवन दैन यूज वॉट यूज वॉट लेसी इंक्रीमेंटल बोरिंग रेट वट इज इंक्रीमेंटल बोरिंग रेट इफ यू आर टेकिंग एन लोन वट इज द रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट यूनिट टू पे फॉर इंक्रीमेंटल बोरिंग रेट मीन्स इफ यू आर टेकिंग एनी एडिशनल लोन इफ यू आर टेकिंग एनी एडिशनल लोन फ्रॉम द मार्केट हाउ मच इंटरेस्ट यूनिट टू पे यू नो इफ यू हैव मोर लोन द रिस्क विल बी हायर रिस्क विल बी हायर द इंटरेस्ट विल बी ऑल्सो हायर करेक्ट दिस पॉइंट यू नो इन एफ एम You say suppose this is one company debt is zero. This is a company debt is hundred crore. But now, in which company interest rate will be higher? Second one because risk is higher. So bank will charge higher return. Higher the risk, higher the return. F M बोलते हैं ना? Higher the risk, higher the return. I hope you are understanding. Chhod. In accounting not required. Correct. This you can ignore. Then, for receipt of lease rent on due date, bank account debit to lease receivable, correct. And for to finance income, any difference for any contingent rent, cost of service and taxes. So, can you say this will be recognized as an income when it is earned? It is earned, correct. This also they do not ask in exam C A inter me they don't ask. I mean C A final also they don't ask. Sure though. Correct. This also we have understood. Now come to what operating lease. Now operating lease. So till now they have not asked any question from this chapter. I should leave it. Or do it. Now operating lease is simple. Now you have understood that in case of operating lease, asset will not be derecognized in the books of yes sir. Lesser, correct. Means can I say because risk and reward is not transferred, so lesser will not derecognize de that asset, and lessee will not recognize the asset. Means it will be the asset of which which entity lesser. So just write down for operating lease. What need to be done? Books of lessee. Books of lesser. Asset. Even on lease. Assets. Even on lease, the will not be recognized. Correct, na? Can I say will be recognized? And can you say if it will be recognized, then apply AS ten on that understood? Got it? E the appreciation.
can I say will not be provided will not be provided in the books of Desi can I say will be provided as per AS 10 point number C lease payment it is lease payment will be recognized as what will be recognized as expense over what over lease term on what slm basis understood means will do total lease payment divided by lease term and on slm basis it will be recognized correct Correct. On SLM basis, unless other method is more appropriate. Understood this point? I mean, to this point means recognize as an expense over lease term on SLM basis. But if there is any other method which is more appropriate than SLM, then apply that method. Means as per the information given, the question if question is silent SLM, but if they apply specify any other method, apply that method. What is this? I will explain. And here will be recognized as what. Income over lease term on SLM basis unless other method. is more appropriate have you understood so only in exam the question if they ask they will ask for lease payment only however till now they have not asked let me take one question so that we can understand Question number 5. Output from a machine is taken on a 3 year operating lease are estimated as 10,000 units in year 1, 20,000 units in year 2 and 50,000 units in year 3. The agreed annual lease payment are itna 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 respectively give accounting treatment in the books of lessee as per AS 19. Correct? Understood. So, what they have given? We are doing question number 5. So, they have given year end 1, 2, 3. They have given output. Output how much given? 10,000. Hmm. It is year 1, 10,000. Year 10,000 is what year 1 then 20,000 in year 2 20,000 year 2 and year 3 how much correct and what is the total lease payment total lease payment this plus this plus this how much means this total 45 plus 50 plus 25 
so this will be amortized either on what slm basis unless some appropriate method is given so can you see in this case unit method is given production unit method that is more appropriate so this will be this will be amortized in this ratio in this ratio i hope you are understanding correct so this become our total 80000 so can you allocate in this ratio first is 15000 30000 70000 75 correct so can you see this become lease expense this is lease expense na but how much payment payment will be as per agreement first year payment is how much 25000 second year payment is how much 45000 and then 50000 this is payment so can you see we pay as per agreement but we recognize expense as per as payment is done as per agreement but recognition of income and expense based on as to so, batao we are doing jana entry in the books of let's see year end one what jana entry what is my lease expense lease expense account debit how much bolo 15000 but payment how much 25000 it means can i say there is some amount payable there is some amount payable na so we can call it what sorry there is some prepaid my mistake there is there is some prepaid expense or lease expense how much 10000 so how much will be transfer to pl 15000 will be transfer to pl so this will be transfer to first year pl then year end to one second lease expense how much transfer to pl how much but how much payment So once again, there is prepaid. So how much prepaid expense? It is fifteen thousand. So total prepaid become how much? Twenty five thousand. Last year it will be automatically adjusted. These expense how much? Transfer to PL seventy. Five thousand, but how much payment we have done now? So you can see the difference is what, and automatically that prepaid expense will be adjusted. Correct? Have you understood the accounting? Accounting, you understood? It means if suppose the output was not given, then you have used what SLM total divided by three, then that would become what lease expense. Chalega? Got it? Same thing we'll do in the books of lesser. In lesser it will be lease income. Then we'll do bank account debit lease income. The difference will be what either pre received or what the receivable. Understood? Correct. You can do it. Chances are rare. For this type of questions, अच्छा instead of prepaid ना you can also use this account lease equalization account. If you want to use, you can use this account also because in suggested solution they have used this account. So you can also use the lease equalization account. चलेगा? Okay. One more question has been given that you can do by your own. 
सिक्स नंबर यू कैन डू बाय यूर ओन करेक्ट तो इंटायर पॉइंट डन ओनली वन पॉइंट लेफ्ट फॉर दिस वॉट टॉपिक this as as 19 let us do that also can we do right now chalo we'll do tomorrow only one topic is left sale and lease back transaction sale and lease back is thoda sa interesting I mean, right now if i will say you will not be able to understand anything theek hai na what will happen i will teach you will leave in exam nothing will be what effective correct so better i will do tomorrow you listen carefully even though you just revise and go now you will be able to write that is so simple but you need to first understand if you do not understand of course you will leave this chapter only but can i say whatever we have done till whatever we are very simple you should not leave this chapter four or five questions are there acha one question will you try by your own सिक्स वाला सिक्स तो इज वेरी सिंपल यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट दैट क्वेश्चन वन मिनट वन क्वेश्चन आई हैव टेकन फ्रॉम फाइनल सिलेबस आई डोंट नो वेदर आई हैव गिवन और नॉट लेट मी चेक वन सा दिस आल्सो यू कैन गिव बट दिस इज वेरी सिंपल सिमिलर क्वेश्चन वी हैव डन हा नाइन वी हैव डन This also is very simple. Question eleven also. This also simple. I think I have not taken. Ah, this fourteen. Fourteen I have taken from final syllabus. Correct. Fourteen I have taken from final. So once you try, tomorrow we will do it. Okay. 14 i have taken from final syllabus normally sometime what happen because now it has been deleted from final syllabus so such type of question can be asked in ta enter chalega okay so tomorrow will like tomorrow will complete what as 22 also so how many as after that will be left four done five done seven done nine done 14 done is amalgamation done 17 left now 18 left 17 is very simple 18 is also simple then 24 left 26 oh my 4 as will be left 22 do will 22 will do tomorrow only 22 will do tomorrow tomorrow will try to complete 22 and one more as kuch ek as karna padega okay okay thank you very much we'll meet tomorrow till then bye bye take care enjoy your remaining day Very good morning, everyone. How are you all? Last class we completed AS twenty. We started AS nineteen. I have asked you to do one question. You have done question number fourteen. Have you understood? No, sir. So we will do that. So question fourteen. Equipment limited having a useful life of five year. Is lease for three year, correct? Both the cost and fair value of equipment are six lakh. Means cost and fair value are same. The amount will be paid in three equal installment at the termination of lease and at the termination of lease, lesser will get back the equipment. Means ownership is not transferred. And you can see five year, three year. So can is it three year divided by five? How much? Three by five. Hmm. So it is not seventy five percent. I have said from examination point of view, if lease terms covers seventy five percent of economic life, then it will finance lease. It is not covering seventy five percent, so it is not a finance lease. Means from that point is it is not understood whether it, whether it is a finance lease or it is not a finance lease. And lesser will not get the ownership also. The UGRB is given sixty thousand. The IRA is given ten percent. The present value of annuity factor is given. 2.4868. The present value at the end of third year is given 0.7513. Eight reason, eight with reason whether the lease constitute finance lease and also compute the unearned finance income. 
Just try to understand one thing. If they have asked you to calculate unearned finance income, or if they have given GRB, use GRB, or if they have given IRR, it means it is a finance lease. But you need to prove. You need to prove. So can you say point number one? Lessee will not get the ownership. Point number two: there is no purchase option. Point number three: lease term does not cover major part of economic life. And it is not of any specialized nature. So, out of five conditions, four conditions is not satisfied. So, the last condition I said, whenever one, two, three, four not satisfied, always apply that mathematical formula. What was the formula that on inception of lease, the present value of minimum lease payment substantially cover the initial fair value of leased asset? You remember? Correct now. So, that you need to calculate how you have calculated. That is given the solution now. You calculated. You calculated 90%. But in this question, one point is that they have not given what? Annual lease payment. They have not given annual lease payment. It means first we need to calculate annual lease payment. You can see they have not given annual lease payment. They have said the amount will be paid in three equal installments, but they have not given annual lease payment. So first we need to calculate annual lease payment. Right we are doing question number 14. Point number A. Calculation of what? Calculation of annual fees payment. Correct. We will say let annual fees. Payment be what? X. Now we all know that that present value of gross investment must be equal to fair value. Present value of gross investment must be equal to fair value. Correct. What is the present value of gross investment? It means present value of what? MLP from the point of view of what? Lesser plus present value of UGRB. Remember, present value of UGRB must be equal to fair value. Correct. Can I say present value of MLP from lesser is nothing but present value of total lease payment plus what present value of GRB plus present value of UGRB is equal to what fair value? So can I say because we have considered annual lease payment BX? We will say x multiplied by annuity factor that they have given 2.4868 plus GRB is not given. We will assume nil because GRB there is there may be what GRB no guarantee given. So GRB is nil, but UGRB have they, they have given how much? So 60,000 multiplied by 0 0.7.513 and a fair value they have given how much? 6 lakh. Now we can apply this equation. So this will be what? Can I say this will be equal to 2.4868x plus what? 60,000 multiplied by 0.7513 is equal to what? 4 lakh. 45,078 is equal to 6 lakh. So you can say the x is equal to what? 6 lakh minus 45078 is equal to it becomes 5 lakh 54,922 divided by what? 2.4868. So what is this? what is x coming? How much 2 lakh? 1 47 understood you can calculate
understood have you understood i said now i see a final question i don't know whether it will be asked or not but it was a very popular question in ca final now as19 has been shifted to ca inter so this question can be asked correct so on that assumption we are doing but now you have understood now now we will find out nature of lease nature of lease so we need to apply what that on as per as19 as per as19 if on inception of lease inception of lease what present value of minimum lease payment correct cover what substantially substantially the initial fair value of leased asset then these will be classified as these will be classified as finance lease correct adam in the given case what is the present value of minimum lease payment minimum lease payment means this will be what already we calculated what lease payment 2,23,147 so 2,23,147 multiplied by what 2.468 plus GRB is nil I am just writing plus nil so this will be equal to what 5,54,921 or 2 add on 2 correct and what is the fair value of leased asset fair value of leased asset is equal to what 6 lakh so this by this is how much means present value of MLP divided by fair value of leased asset is equal to how much means 92 point 92.4 percent so it is more than 90 percent therefore substantially cover and therefore it will be classified as what finance lease understood Correct. Follow. Go. Have you understood? Dekho. Since present value of minimum lease payment is ninety-two point four zero percent of fair value of leased asset. Therefore, and therefore, the given lease will be classified as Have you understood this point? Correct. Now, last point what they have asked unearned finance income. So, that is very easy. Unearned finance income. In exam item full, unearned finance income is equal to gross investment minus net investment. Gross investment will be what? Can I say it will be 2 lakh? How much? 2 lakh? 23,000 into 3 plus 60,000. This become future value. Minus can I say net investment will be present value and present value will be equal to 6 lakh. Already, if you want to calculate, you can calculate, but present value will be 6 lakh only. So, without this bracket, one is how much 7 lakh? 
सेवन लैख ट्वेंटी नाइन फोर फोर्टी वन माइनस वाट सिक्स लैख हैव यू अंडरस्टूड इट बिकम वन लैख हैव यू अंडरस्टूड दिस पॉइंट इजी फाइनल लेवल क्वेश्चन बट नॉट कॉम्प्लिकेट ना नॉट कॉम्प्लिकेट व्हाट आई वांट टू से वो था सेम You can understand entire final topic if I will teach. Understood? Means immediately after C A enter, you will come to C A final, and we will teach that only, na? So you have that level to understand. Believe me, if you come to C A final, you will understand everything. Even though you don't pass C A enter, but allow nahi karenge. Will not allow you. Difference is that only. So from understanding point of it, or I am saying it might happen also you are not able to pass C A enter, but you can pass C A final. Sometimes it happens means there is one subject which you are not able to pass C A enter, but you, you are good student. So that subject you need to find out. Ki which subject can destroy you? That subject you need to find out. normally what happen we like the subject we start doing that subject only we ignore the subject which you don't like just like friends we ignore the worst friend we only talk with what good friends and we we'll try to ignore what bad friends and what will happen distance will be more correct na so every friends are goods only start talking to that will become good friend if you start talk talking with them correct na any subject you need to just find out out of eight subject which is the subject which you are not liking start giving more importance to that subject correct it can be any subject because that subject will destroy you so one subject may destroy you correct and this is for example what i used to think that i am because that time information technology now it become eis so information technology i have but if i will fail i will fail in that subject because i have not taken coaching and believe me i don't used to understand anything about information technology means i have never touch only laptop at that time there was no laptop with us na that time no laptop how can we understand the technology by our own who level we know what they teach in computer correct na so keyboard was also a new term for me and that memory flash memory virtual memory to odi aata tha yeah that will virtual that will become virtual only so that technical words we will not be able to understand and how much i will see dictionary but then also i school 72 in it understood it means i started giving more importance correct na so that you need to understand you need to also find out which subject may destroy you start giving more importance because if you score 39 in that one second six Even though just try it once, if you score seventy, 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 thirty-nine, six months to get it, na? So you need to understand every subject. You need to score forty, to buy at least. That should be your criteria. Okay, understood. This also you have understood. Now let us come to one last topic of this chapter. However, from my point of view, once again, questions should not come from that topic, but they are marks in exam, therefore important. Correct, na? So the topic is sale and leaseback. Sale and leaseback. Understood? What I am saying, from my point of view, questions should not come, but they are asking at which level? C A inter level. Na C A inter level, they are marks question from this topic. Understood? Sale and lease back because I see a thing that you can understand anything. So let us understand sale and lease back from a topic. I hope you have understood. If there is one person seller and there is one person buyer, correct? Seller and buyer. So seller of what asset? So it means it has one asset. It has one asset. Like for example, it has plant and machinery. Suppose he has a plant and machinery, correct? Whose book value is equal to what? Forty lakh. And the fair value is equal to what? Fifty lakh. 
so can you say it means he is a businessman manufacturer he is not the trader of this plant and machinery he is using plant and machinery in factory so let us assume he is manufacturer he is manufacturer but he will not sell plant and machinery na he will not sell plant and machinery but he is need of what funds he don't have what funds to operate this plant and machinery he require funds he require working capital to operate what factory but he does not have what funds so he went to bank he went to bank for loan bank says that will not give loan jo karna kar le understood na are getting because bank will give loan only when you give some security but he don't require security because security is what something what you have a security but can you see the condition is not good the condition is not good na so if you are your financial condition is not good the bank will not give loan even though you are giving security so what this person will say hey, you don't give i you don't give me loan based on security but what i will do i will sell the asset to you means ownership will be transferred ownership will be transferred means can i say he will sell the asset he will sell the asset and ownership will be transferred ownership will be transferred and he will ask that what of course this is what this is a person who is a financier who is a financier so he will what he will do with this plant damage nothing so the same asset he will lease back the same asset will be lease back means there are two transactions sale and lease back means seller will become lessy and buyer will become lesser buyer will become lesser now just try to understand this lease transaction can be what finance lease or operating lease depending upon the circumstances means the accounting treatment of finance lease and operating lease already we have done that is not going to change understood so why we are doing this topic because sale entry also we know let's see what jana entry manufacturer what jana entry seller and buyer will do okay seller will pass one jana entry bank account bank account and suppose the same asset has been sold at rupees 50 lakh because the fair value was 50 lakh it can be less it can be more also so let us assume at fair value it was sold correct to plant a machinery how much to plant a machinery how much 40 lakh and there will be a what there will be what a gain and the gain will be transferred to pl as per as 10 as per as 10 Understood? Can you say what jana entry? What jana entry? Buyer will do. They will pass one jana entry plant and machinery account debit to bank. Plant and machinery account debit to bank, and it will be fifty lakh, fifty lakh. Understood? Understood? I hope this in this no doubt. Then sir, why we are doing this topic here? Understood? There is something. So, hey, correct. Now, the same as it lease back. Let us assume it is finance lease. Finance lease. So, can you see it is just like a loan transaction that you have received a loan of fifty lakh, correct? And now, same as it is given back. The same as it is given back. Are we able to understand? So, can you see this fifty lakh will be divided into what? The lease term. Suppose the useful life is ten year. Let us assume useful life is ten year. So can you see this asset will be given back for ten year only for the entire economic life? Therefore, it will be finance lease. Are we able to understand? So can you see this fifty lakh will be divided into what ten part? It will be what five lakh each, and on five lakh we calculate interest. On five lakh we will calculate interest. we can calculate interest if given if the rate of interest is given but can i say this 5 lakh plus interest will become lease payment 5 lakh plus interest will become lease payment my question to you a present value of lease payment will be equal to what 5 lakh plus interest will be lease payment means 5 lakh plus interest 5 lakh plus interest 5 lakh plus interest 5 lakh plus interest for how many year 
10 years. That become lease payment payable at the end of each year. My question to you, present value of that lease payment will be equal to what? Present value of that lease payment will be equal to what? There are 5 lakh into 10, na? Into 10, who will say? 50 lakh. Are you saying? Yes, so 5 lakh plus interest for how many years? 10 years, na? So what is the present value of lease payment? Will it be equal to what? Fair value only? Light or as a dimag? Become CA final? I am giving importance to you. I am giving importance to you. Believe me, the same thing I teach at CA inter level. Who be as a dekte muje? Correct. So you all are same. But when I am discussing some higher level topic to you, so it means I am giving respect to you. Bole yes or no? And if I don't do means I am not respecting you. I am thinking that you are you don't we, you will not be able to understand. And therefore I will not teach. But I am giving importance to you na. So I am respecting your knowledge na. Are bol na re. I am respecting your ability. So you should become happy na. You should become happy. So think like chartered accountant. Think like CA. Because you are CA. You are going to become CA. So have motivation. Have motivation. Because after this I will teach AS22. Okay na. So there are two ways of teaching. Either I will concentrate only those points which can be asked in exam. And I will say come to CA final. We will do detail. Or I will explain everything in CA internally so that in CA final you are not in trouble. Correct now. Understood. Believe me, AS4 we have done. I teach in CA final. But they don't answer that only. Whatever we have done in CA inter, same thing I will teach in CA final, but they will be like this. What is the use of coming in CA final? Are you getting what I am saying? Correct now. There is no use of coming in CA final now. Are you saying? Okay, I asked you that one day I will call you in consolidation. Are you saying? I forgot consolidation over. Then you would have understood that you both are saying. And believe me, you would have been more interactive in that class. You would have been more interactive in that consolidation class. Ah, yes, I have confidence in you. Correct now, I missed that point. Understand what I am saying? Chalo, we missed that topic. Chalo, hai, okay. But what I want to say, ki, for as a higher level topic we are doing, please apply your mind. One second. Correct? Otherwise, I don't, if I will write, you will not understand anything. Okay? One second. So, what I am saying, 50 lakh divided by 10, 5 lakh, in that 5 lakh interest will be added, that will become lease payment for 10 years. Correct. So what I am asking, present value of lease payment will be equal to what? 50 lakh. So, but in finance lease, what will be Jana entry in the books of lessee? What Jana entry? Plant a mercenary account debit to? Plant a mercenary account debit to? Lease liability? At what amount? At lower of? Hmm, at lower of present value of MLP and fair value whichever is what is fair value what is present value so what is the amount 50 lakh understood correct have you understood and in this books margin entry will do bata these receivable account debit to what plant a mercenary plant a mercenary will come at what carrying amount 50 lakh and lease receivable is present value of gross investment can I say in this case there is no GRB no UGRB no GRB no UGRB so it will be present value of lease payment only means 50 lakh 50 lakh there is no gain or loss there is no gain or loss understood have you understood yes sir means if you see this two Jana entry what actually happened let's see this is the books of seller this is the books of buyer this is the books of lessee, this is the books of lesser. And we are doing, when it is a finance lease, then what adjustment entry is required in sale and lease bag. So you can see this is kata kata. And this become lease receivable to what bank? Means loan account debit bank. Loan has been given. So can you see correct general entry? You can see loan has been recorded. Loan has been given, na? So loan has been recorded in the books of 
बायर इन द बुक्स ऑफ लेसर इन द बुक्स ऑफ फाइनेंसर एस एन एसिट एट द अमाउंट गिवन वट इज द अमाउंट गिवन फिफ्टी लैक थैंक यू वेरी मच नो एडजस्टमेंट रिक्वायर्ड ए एस नाइनटी से इज इन द बुक्स ऑफ बायर इन द बुक्स ऑफ लेसर नो एडजस्टमेंट रिक्वायर्ड बट इफ यू सी सेलर सेम एसेट इज सोल्ड एंड द सेम एसेट कम बैक अगेन तो वे द गेन और लॉस बी ट्रांसफर टू पी एल मीन दे इज नो सेल ओनली शुड बी रिकोगनाइज दिस गेन और लॉस नो एंड दे फॉर एस नाइनटीन केम इन टू एक्ट एस नाइनटीन में रुको 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 एस नाइनटीन से इज दिस इज ओके बट दे इज अ डाउट अबाउट दिस तो डोंट अप्लाई एस टेन डोंट अप्लाई एस टेन वेन दे इज अ सेल एंड लीज बैक Only sale apply AS 10, but in this case we can't apply AS 10. So what AS 19 says? He AS 19 says that for gain or loss on sale of asset, AS 10 will not be applied. AS 19 will be applied, and AS 19 says that this gain or loss will not be transferred to PL immediately. It will be deferred. It will be deferred. Understood? It will deferred and it will be amortized to PL. In the ratio of depreciation during the useful life of that of that asset, means it will be transferred to PL, but during the useful life of asset in the ratio of depreciation. This is given by AS nineteen. Have you understood? Why? Because can I say this is not immediate loss. There is no sale only. There is no sale only. So it will be deferred, and this deferred loss or gain. Will be amortized to PL during useful life of asset in the ratio of depreciation when the lease is finance lease. Now, of course, operating lease means there is some other concept. But have you understood in case of finance lease? Have you understood? So, in this sale and leaseback transaction, what we are doing? We are doing accounting treatment of gain and loss on sale of asset only. The other transaction means lease transaction recorded as it is. Whatever we have done in AS nineteen means there is no changes in this, na? There is no changes in this. Only we are doing what? This gain or loss? How to account that we are understanding? That we are understanding. Have you understood this much? Sir. Accounting treatment of gain. On loss, on sale of asset, due to what? Due to sale and lease back transactions. But the in whose books? In the books of seller or lessee. Topic: Have you understood? Topic: Now it will depend upon whether it is operating or because if operating or finance, na if lease is classified as Finance lease. Okay, sir. देखो. Any gain or loss on sale of asset should not be. recognized in pl immediately understood can such gain or loss should be deferred
should be deferred and amortize over can i don't lease term amortize over lease term in the ratio of the appreciation understood can we take one question then over lease term and useful life will be same only because it will be given for entire useful life correct now so write down lease term only correct okay this you have let us take one question to understand this part I have taken this question from other sources. This is, this question has not been given in ICS study material. In ICS study material, question is given for operating lease. And operating lease question have been asked in exam. So if they can ask operating lease, then they can ask what? Finance lease also. And therefore, I have taken one question from some other source. Chalega? Yes, sir. So on 1st Jan 2001, entity sales a machine with a carrying amount of 90,000 to an independent third party for rupees 1 lakh. 20,000. The fair value of the machine? As part of arrangement, the seller enter into 3 year finance lease arrangement to the lease the same machine back from the buyer in accordance with the lease 44066 is payable in arrear. In arrear means at the end of the year. In arrear means at the end of the each year. On 31st December of each year of the lease term. On 31st Jan 2001, the remaining, the remaining economic life They have given on 31st. On 31st Jan 2001, the remaining economic life of the machine was estimated as 3 years with nil residual value. Correct? The interest rate implicit in the lease is 5% per year. Give accounting treatment with reference to AS19. Understood? Let us do. So, we are doing question number 10. So one thing is clear that in the question only it is given it is a finance lease, correct? In the question it is given it is a finance lease, correct? Write down. General entry will do. So what is the date of sale? 1-1-2001. Bank account debit how much? What is the sale price? 1,20,000. They have sold machinery. Two machinery. What is the carrying amount? Ninety thousand. So how much loss? So this loss, sorry, there is a gain. This gain will be deferred gain. So I don't deferred gain. Deferred gain is how much? Thirty thousand. Understood. Then on the same date, it was taken. On lease, so what general entry will do? Machinery account debit. Machinery account debit to what? Fees liability. Fees liability. And what is the lease payment? We need to find out. Write down. In this, write down. Value of asset will be equal to what? Value of asset and liability will be equal to what? Will be lower of lower of point number A fair value. How much fair value given? One lakh twenty thousand. And B is what? Present value of minimum lease payment from the standpoint of Let's see. So they have given lease payment how much? Forty-four thousand. Forty-four thousand zero double six. Can you give me annuity factor at a rate of five percent for three years?
2.7231 it is coming how much approximately it will be 1 lakh 20 thousand check karo approximately it will be same only correct approximately it is same so 1 lakh 20 thousand so can this jana entry be done at 1 lakh 20 thousand only same concept I have given. Understood. One lakh twenty thousand. Then on thirty first, twelve, two thousand one. Will pass Jana entry for what? Fees payment. What Jana entry? Fees liability. Account debit. Finance charges account debit. Correct now. Finance charges account debit to bank. So how much paid? Forty four thousand zero double six. Interest will be what? So interest will be calculated on one lakh twenty thousand into what? Five percent. How much? The so difference will reduce lease liability. So lease liability will be reduced by 38,066. This journal entry you have understood. Then we need to also charge depreciation. So depreciation will be transferred to PL. Depreciation account debit. to machinery correct so it is nil residual value they have said so one lakh twenty thousand divided by what three how much forty thousand so can you say forty thousand for how many year three years is forty 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 so ratio become one is to one is to one so in this ratio deferred loss will be amortized to pl so what is the next channel entry what general entry will do? Prof, sorry, gain, eh, na? So PL, sorry, deferred gain account debit to PL. Correct, na? Deferred gain account debit to PL. It is thirty thousand. Divide by what? Why? 2 1 by 3. That is 10,000. Done. Super easy now. Whether complicate. Then you can do this channel entry for what? Next year also. Simple. Any doubt? No doubt. Any complication, you only say. These whatever we have done, chalo, we have done higher level discussion, but I don't think so. It is complicated once you have done FM. Uh, before FM, if I will teach, it will be complicated. Then IRR concept, present value concept, detail me jana parta. Correct? Okay. Understood. Now, this was point number. No, no. Point number one, very good. Point number two will be what? If lease is classified as point number two, write down. If lease is classified as operating lease. Now, oh. just try to understand. In this case. The, in case of lease by asset is not coming back so sale done then lease back now so in case of operating lease back the asset is not coming back means asset will be not one second recognized in the books of seller means can I say it is an actual sale if actual sales then gain or loss to be transferred to PL immediately correct follow yes or no but there is some situation that we need to understand right on Case one. Case one. So if 
सेल प्राइस इज इक्वल टू फेयर वैल्यू मीन्स सेल प्राइस एंड फेयर वैल्यू आर सेम मीन्स कैन से सेल हैज बीन एंड फेयर वैल्यू नो एडजस्टमेंट गेन और लॉस विल बी ट्रांसफर टू पियर नो गेन विल बी देयर गेन और लॉस विल बी बेस्ड ऑन कैरिंग अमाउंट Just try to understand. Sale has been done at current fair value. So, if sale has been done at current fair value, so there is no adjustment. No adjustment means entire gain or loss will be transferred to PL immediately. PL immediately. So, write down. Write down. Gain or loss on sale of asset will be recognized. MPL immediately. Case one, you understood. Case one, you understood. Case two. If sale price is more than fair value, if sale price is more than fair value, what they want to say? Just try to understand. Means. If suppose sale price and fair value, fair value is fifty lakh, but sale price is what sixty lakh. Whether it is practically possible? How? Oh, means I have an asset of fair value fifty lakh. Will you take at sixty lakh? Will you give me? What we are doing? Sale and lease back. First, this sale has been done by whom? Who is in need of money? Huh? He is not businessman. He is not trading that goods. Correct na? Economics me kya pahunch gaya? Understood. Then also just try to understand. If you are saying demand increases, the fair value, fair value is also increasing, and then you will sell at fair value only. Miss sale should not. But just try to understand what I am saying. If you are saying miss, you are wrong. You are not saying correct. If you are saying demand increases, so initially the fair value was ten. So now fair value become twenty. So can you recover 25 year? No. If demand increases, so its fair value will increase, na? So if fair value is 20, can you recover 25? No. I am saying that. Okay, right now, what is the fair value? Now, can you sell at 60? That I am saying. So whatever you have said, that is not correct. Right now, at present demand condition, what is the fair value? Fifty. Can you sell at sixty? No, no one will say. We suppose just try to understand. I am in need of money. I am need of money. I went came to you, sir. Ji, sir. Ji, sir. Ji. I have an asset of rupees what? Fifty lakh. Will you give me a loan of sixty lakh? You will say no. Are you bolna rahe? You will say no. But when? Because you are a financier. You will not say no. Because your dhanda is what? To give loan. Hey, brother, you feel say no, then you are not a financier only. Means just try to understand. I came to you. I said I have an asset of rupees fifty lakh. Will you give me sixty lakh? You will say yes. But you will say yes. You will say yes. But you will do some adjustment. You will not give me anything free of cost, na? So what adjustment you will do? Brother? But. Think and say. Bakwas cheez mat bolo. Come to this. You are a financier. You and me are there. I and you. And if I have a guarantor, just then, so I am not in. No one will give guarantee for me until there is some relationship, ha? Huh? Are you getting what I am saying? So there is no guarantor. Nothing is there. I am not. Don't create any other story here. Then, sir. Then, so you will say, yeah, this, 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 this is creating other story, na? No? I am saying, I came to you. I am an asset worth rupees, but I am need of what? Means I require six lakh only. Without six lakh, I can't start my business. Quite possible, I don't have any other asset also. Will you say no? You will not say no because you are financier. So if you will say yes, what adjustment you will do for recovering that extra? Because you have given me extra ten lakh, na? So what do you do? 
you will charge extra what interest but it is operating lease huh? you are in finance lease interest come in operating lease what come lease it is what rent na you will charge rent but you will charge higher rent or lower rent higher rent than market rent means can i say this 10 lakh will be compensated by higher lease payment higher lease payment understood so what as 19 says that this 10 lakh difference will be deferred means any gain or loss to the extent of 10 lakh will be deferred and that deferred gain will be will be amortized during the lease term in the ratio of what lease payment in the ratio of what lease payment understood bolo yes or no i think you have understood now what i, I what i want to say just write down what they have said everyone in this case they have heard gain will be there and deferred gain will be equal to what sale price minus fair value sale price minus fair value understood ekko such deferred gain will be amortized to pl over lease term in the ratio of what in the ratio of lease payment correct understood this is point number point number a point number b write down gain or loss transfer to pl will be equal to fair value minus what book value gain or loss transfer to pl immediately have you understood this point means sales to be done at fair value so if you compare fair value and book value that gain or loss will be transferred to pl immediately means if i take one example example correct if sale price is equal to 150000 fair value is equal to 1 lakh and book value is equal to 90000 right for the word journal entry bank account debit how much 1 lakh 50000 to asset how much 90000 to deferred gain how much 50000 correct and to gain transfer to pl how much are you able to understand this point so this will be amortized to pl over the lease term in the ratio of lease payment understood i hope you have understood the journal entry also simple na any doubt let on case number 3 if sale price is less than what fair value reverse situation reverse situation 
रुक जा रुक जा अभी बात करेक्ट तो इफ आई से सेल प्राइस एंड फेयर वैल्यू फेयर वैल्यू इज वाट फोर्टी लैक एंड सेल प्राइस वाट थर्टी लैक वन सेकेंड लेट सी वेदर दिस सिचुएशन इज प्रैक्टिकली पॉसिबल और नॉट टू सिचुएशन में अराइज वन इज फ्रॉम माई पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वन इज फ्रॉम योर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वन इज फ्रॉम सेलर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वन इज फ्रॉम पायर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू फर्स्ट पॉइंट एवरी वन सपोज आई हैव ए फेयर वैल्यू ऑफ वाट फोर्टी लैक आई एम एन एस एड विद ए फेयर वैल्यू फोर्टी लैक आई रिक्वायर फोर्टी लैक करेक्ट एंड आई मीन फाइनेंशियल डिफिकल्टी यू नो दिस पॉइंट पता यू एक्सप्लाइट और नॉट In India, always exploitation is with whom who are at financial difficulty. You can exploit only to those person who are at financial difficulty. Can I say any person who are financially strong? We cannot exploit them. For example, you purchase vegetable from what? From many big stores also. That retail stores, big retail store vegetables you are purchasing, you will not ask any discount. You will not ask a single discount, but go to what the street market, street vendor, go to them. You start with discount only, and it might happen they have written fixed price also. Then also you start bargaining because you know they are financially weak. Because of that reason, you are you are exploiting them. And bull are they? Correct now. Believe me, normally right now what happened? COVID nineteen happened. After COVID-19, we start doing online shopping. So you know that coconut water is also is online shopping. So in our home nowadays, after COVID-19, what I have seen that trend has been changed. I normally don't do this type of activities, but I can't stop this thing because it become what now trend. So the coconut water, same thing they will purchase from my my family will purchase from the market at rupees sixty from this. Online market, same coconut water. I'll go to street vendor. They will say forty rupees, and we'll start what? Are as it is now that starting from twenty, and then eventually negotiate thirty. Understood? I have not understood why. Then I understood what accounting, financial difficulty. Correct? Bol nahi hai sunu. Same thing. Same. So this online shopping, so 90% is street market only. But now they have adopted what they become big businessmen. So there we are not asking any discount. They will give discount after earning 100% profit. Correct? Correct. So now one thing, one request. Whenever you go to street vendor, don't ask discount and ask discount from Reliance Trend, Reliance Store, because they are what these people exploit them. Correct? Now. So please don't ask any discount. Street vendor, we should not ask. And normally they don't ask uh, more than fair value. They ask fair value only because they know that there is a lot of competition. They ask higher amount, you will not come. So why we are asking discount? Simple na. Correct. We should not ask discount. But I hope you have understood. If you know my financial difficulty, you will try to exploit or not. I have an asset worth rupees forty lakh. I need forty lakh, but will you give me forty lakh? You will say thirty lakh, and I need to agree because I don't have any other financial. I'm need of money. So can is this is what exploitation. So in this case, can is the lease payment is not adjusted. Lease payment is not adjusted. Bol na yes or no? Lease payment is not adjusted in this case. So in this case, can is it become actual sale and gain or loss will be transferred to PL immediately. Understood. But second situation. Again, I am seller. I have an asset of about forty lakh. Correct now, but I need thirty lakh. Correct. I need thirty lakh. Well, you will be agreed or not? Yes, but I will say no. I will say do some adjustment lease payment because I have given an asset of what forty lakh, but I am receiving thirty lakh. I said lower lease payment. Yes, Bolle yes or no? Yes, are you getting what I am saying? If you are not able to exploit me, if you are not able to exploit me, are you bolna re? Yes. Correct. Two situation may arise in this case. Two situation may arise in this case. You understand? Final level. Maja aar hai. 
इस मजा एल गिव इन सी ए फाइनल कम टू सी ए फाइनल क्लास पार्ट सी ए फाइनल एफ आर इज सो इंटरेस्टिंग एफ आर मीज फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग द नेम ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट इज फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग यू स्टार्ट यू स्टार्ट लविंग वर्ड सी ए प्रोफेशन आपको लग रहा होगा दिस हैबी टॉपिक की कहाँ से कहाँ पहुंच गए मीन दिस इज एक्चुअली वर्ड सी ए वी आर नॉट मेड फॉर डेबिट क्रेडिट वी आर नॉट मेड फॉर जर्नल लेजर ट्रायल बैलेंस एंड बैलेंस इड पीयर वी नेवर प्रीपेयर बैलेंस इड पीयर वी वाट प्रेजेंट फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट फॉर द यूजर सो दैट कैन दे कैन अंडरस्टैंड दे कैन गेट रियलाइबल इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम दैन करेक्ट इट इज इंटायरली बेस्ड ऑन सब्सटेंस ओवर फॉर्म means we don't give importance to legal document whatever has been written in contract par ke fik do we apply what substance in accounting and this entire accounting is based on substance understood entry of ca final level i said with as 90 will enter into what ca final level understood correct have you understood maza to aaya to can i say in this case there will be two situation correct let's write down पॉइंट नंबर ए इफ देर इज प्रॉफिट मीन्स सेल प्राइस माइनस बुक वैल्यू या सेल प्राइस इज मोर देन बुक वैल्यू देन दे इज ए प्रॉफिट सच प्रॉफिट विल बी रिकॉग्नाइज इमीडिएटली If there is a loss, means sale price is less than book value. Then down. If loss is not compensated. by future fees payment understood if there is no adjustment if there is no adjustment then what will do this loss will be transferred to pl immediately or deferred immediately very good is understood loss will be recognized immediately in pl if loss is compensated Future lease payment. Then down. First, we'll calculate deferred loss. Will be equal to fair value minus sale price. Which will be amortized. over what in the ratio of in the ratio of lease payment point number b balance loss balance loss 
विल बी रिकॉग्नाइज इमीडिएटली immediately understood have you understood this point let us see what question has been given then this chapter is completed can we take one question let us take this question Question was asked in exam. X Limited sold JCB machine having WDB book value 50 lakh to Y Limited for 60 lakh. This become sale price. This become carrying amount. And the same JCB and the same JCB machine was leased back to Y Limited to X Limited. The lease is operating lease. Comment according to relevant accounting standard. If sale price is equal to fair value, but what do you do? Recognize immediately. Given when sale price 60 lakh is equal to fair value, X Limited should recognize the profit of 10 lakh. Profit of 10 lakh means what? Profit of 10 lakh means sale price minus book value. Sale price minus book value 10 lakh in his books immediately. Then, then fair value is 50 lakh and sale price is 45 lakh. So in this sale price is less than fair value. So that what you do? Sale price is less than fair value. But what do you do? This is this is case two, case three. Case three. First, find out whether there is a profit or loss. So the profit or loss. Hai. So sale price is how much? Sale price is forty five lakh. Book book value fifty lakh. The so loss is how much? Five lakh. So when there is then there is a loss. So there can be two situation. If the loss is compensated by future lease payment, then recognize. Now, when loss is not compensated by future lease payment, then recognize immediately. When loss is compensated by future lease payment, find out deferred loss, and deferred loss will be equal to what? Deferred loss will be equal to what? Sale value minus sale value minus selling price. Fair value. What is the fair value in this case? Fifty lakh, and what is sale price? Forty-five lakh. Correct. Under so to five lakh will be what deferred loss that will be deferred amortized over lease term in the ratio of lease payment. Let's see what answer has been given. When the fair value is fifty lakh and sale price is forty-five lakh, the loss of five lakh to be recognized immediately in the books provided loss is not compensated by future lease payment. They have given the Means they have given this much answer only. Means they have taken my assumption that it is not compensated by future lease payment. But they have written provided loss is not compensated. So you can write down if loss is compensated by future lease payment. Calculate deferred loss. Deferred loss will be equal to this, and that will be amortized over lease payment. That you can do. Correct. Yes, sir. Third case. Fair value is fifty five lakh and sale price. So this is case number two. So in this case, deferred gain will be. Deferred means deferred gain will be calculated and deferred and will be amortized in the ratio of this payment. So when fair value is itna, sale price itna, profit of five lakh. Profit of five lakh means what? The difference between so, means first so, deferred profit will be how much? This minus this will be deferred profit. So you can seven lakh will be amortized and deferred over this period. And the sale price means fair value minus book value. Fair value is what fifty five. Book value is fifty. That profit will recognize immediately. Understood. This also understood. Then fair value is forty five lakh. Sale price is forty eight lakh. This also same. Same only, na? Sale price is more than what? Fair value. Same thing. Why check? Karo. I think same thing is given. Same only, but in this case loss will come. Correct. And there is a deferred profit. Understood. Loss means loss will be equal to what? Book value minus fair value. So what was the book value? Fifty lakh. So loss is what? Five lakh. So the five lakh will be recognized immediately. And deferred will be what? This three lakh will be deferred. This three lakh will be what? Should be amortized and deferred over this period. Five marks question. Yeah, four marks question.
you can do it but revise and go otherwise though you can't do it so this chapter if you revise before exam you can do it you can attempt it and you can do it correctly also because same question will come similar type of question will come balance question i hope you can do it by your own there are many questions given but based on present value etc this chapter is completed from my